my lovely, lovely imps, today we are going to be reacting to a video that was put out recently by Vosh reacting to a video that was recently put out by Shoe on Head. And if you're new to my channel, you might not know why this is relevant to me. But the reason why is that uh, after Shoe on Head intentionally started a massive fraudulent conspiracy theory on the internet uh, that uh, fed directly into the narrative of the worst people you can possibly imagine. And I mean, it's bad. I did two videos on it. Um, Shuan had then made a response video in which she accused me of being a useful idiot for pills. <laughs> now, that is a disgusting and offensive thing to say to me. It has genuinely it has genuinely pissed me off since the moment it was uttered from Shuan Head's uh, a shitty fucking microphone. Wait, I guess I should probably say from Shuan Head's shitty mouth, but that just sounds really disgusting. But whatever, it is disgusting. Uh, I talk about this portion extensively in my previous video, which you can find on my channel, which will be linked down below when this video comes out. Um, however, I wanted to see what other people including Vosh, had to say about it. Now, I have already seen this Vosh video. This is not going to be a fresh react, so, you know, don't expect that type of react. There's a reason for that. Uh, I, I watched it because it was actually really important to me. As it turns out, having someone label you as a profile defender and also sending their fans to go call you a profile for literal weeks, it's still happening right now. Today, I had people in my uh, comments telling me that I deserve to die, telling people that I, uh, in fact, uh, I literally had someone today say that they were constantly watching me. And by that I mean they were they were claiming they are literally stalking me. Now obviously that's not true, and that would be very foolish of them because I'm armed to the goddamn teeth. Um, so you can see my Instagram if you don't believe me. Um, that would be a very foolish thing indeed, but it's nonetheless incredibly taxing and also stressful. Uh, I fucking hate child abusers. I don't think you understand how fucking devoted I am to fighting against those people. I explain uh, to great degree in my previous videos where my stance is on that, that I have taken in my life, I have been confronted with child abuse firsthand. And I have had to deal with that myself. Not on the internet, not writing a post about it. I have had to confront that shit myself. Okay? So this is an issue that's very important to me and I do not take being slandered lightly. I have been very angry about this and I am happy to see that some of, uh, that some of my allies and friends online have also taken an independent look at this video and come away with the idea that it was not very good. Uh, a lot of people have been saying shit about me. Uh, a lot of people have been making explicit death threats to me. A lot of people have been explicitly calling me a profile. And worst of all, Shoe on Head's video went out to, at this point, nearly a million people. Nearly a million people were told an abject lie about my position. And that's really frustrating. Just so you get where I'm at, I want you all to take a moment, okay? Take a moment and close your eyes. Most of you are not public figures. Most of you are uh, just the, the everyday good people of the planet Earth. Uh, being a, a public figure is a wild thing. I don't know, I don't even, I can't even tell you how I feel about it because my feelings are so complicated about it. However, I want you just to take a moment and I want you to imagine that you wake up one morning and a million people in the world are, are, are convinced, or let's say not all one million. Let's say that a couple hundred thousand people are convinced that you, somebody who obviously stands against pedophilia, obviously stands harshly against child abuse, that people are convinced that you are a, that you are a defender of pedophilia, that you are a defender of child abusers. I just want you to think about what that might be like for you, because that's my reality, thanks to shoe on head. That's my reality, thanks to, as I like to call her, blood on hands. Now, I don't know. Uh, I've, I'm a small channel. I got 20,000 people or so who follow my channel. 
I got a little more if you consider my total mo uh, social media impact, but that's more people than I think have ever actually cumulatively seen my show. That's a lot of people who've been told an abject lie with no evidence. Literally just, I'm just going to make a libelous claim against you. It's a pretty fucking frustrating, pretty fucking hurtful, and pretty fucking stressful thing to go through. Now you understand why it's relevant for me to check out some of these uh, other reactions to this, which is what we're gonna be doing right now. Uh, we're gonna be watching a fellow content creator who I quite like, is a personal friend of mine, uh, Vosh. We're going to be watching Vosh's video reacting to this, and we're gonna have an interesting time sorting it out and seeing what he has to say. So let me just get this up and we'll get right into it. I believe the video is called, hold on a second here. Yes, why does this keep happening to shoe on head? Yeah, I'm quite looking. So uh, by the way, this is a bit of a long video. So you all are very lucky in that tonight you get to spend a whole bunch of time with yours truly. It's gonna be quite great. Here we go again. That's motherfucking right, here we go again. I am gonna fucking pound this shit until my reputation is fixed. And it sucks because I don't know if my reputation will ever be fixed. Well, it will someday. And you all know the truth. You all saw my shit. You all saw the video that I put together. You all saw the research that I did specifically addressing child abuse, which shoe on head for the record, I read this last time. You can go watch the video if you want to see the full statement. What Shoe on Head did is the literal thing that every single major uh, anti-child abuse and anti-human trafficking organization in the world, every single major one, denounces the type of behavior that Shoe on Head does. Denounces the exact thing that Shoe on Head did. Just so we're clear, if you don't believe me, go check out my last video. I go over the entire paperwork okay all right everybody let's do this let's get this thing up on here real quick so uh without any further ado let's let's fucking react shall we shall we let's do it let's hear what Vosh literally has to say. i think the most moral thing that you can do with the balenciaga situation is for the entire world to do this at balenciaga no far-right moral panic no like insane this means that the QAnon is real actually I, I, this is what I want. I think this is literally like the morally correct way to handle it. I like, j l j yes. If you find something weird, you are totally entitled to go, that's a little weird. And then you should say, maybe I should look a little deeper with a critical mind. But that is not, that is not what happened. That is not what happened at all. Is because that's what sussy means. Yeah, you go, hey. Balenciaga, and if you if you want to like force them to make a corporate apology or whatever, f it, do it. I love corporate. Wait, are you asking me if I can raise one eyebrow? Yes, I can. Corporate apologies, you know. Uh, however, a far right moral panic happened. It's it's still happening, uh, and, and and ignoring that and pretending that this is just some like lefties defending Balenciaga shit is is highly irresponsible. This is a disgusting video. Now that's a little bit of a spoiler, saying outright, but I appreciate that. I do appreciate that uh, that 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 the uh, Vosh's editor. I don't know. I think Vosh has two editors, right? You can correct me uh, if I'm wrong, but I think Vosh has two editors. Whichever editor did this, smart move on putting that denouncement at the beginning. I gotta say, Ryan did this one. All right, cool. Anyway, let's continue. If there's one thing that I hate more than anything else, okay, I really hate feeling like I'm beholden. Yeah, we got Jazz Dog. Jazz Dog, our shorts editor? Holy fuck. The people. It's why I don't like We have like so the many talented editors. It's crazy. Bosch spam post or whatever. It actually irritates me because I feel like, you know, it's my stream. I kind of like the freedom it gives me. I don't really like scheduling. I just like doing whatever I want. I'm very selfish in that respect. Earlier, my man, Zan, who never misses, by the way, posted True. a video call uh i just gotta say zan has been so fucking on point with this uh uh and when zan puts out his reaction to this we'll probably react to that as well because uh like i said 
I uh, I got a I got an uphill battle in front of me to try and clear my name of the literal heinous allegations that have been that have been thrown against me. So hope you're ready. Not my fault. I didn't I didn't fucking smear my own reputation. Let's continue. Well, destroying Shuen Head's life healed response to me. Basically, there's some drama. Oh, it's already yeah, out. Okay. Shu blocked Zan. Zan called out Shu over a thing. I forget all the details. Uh, yeah. Okay. So now we're gonna look at the video. All right, let's do it. What? DM? Yes, that's right. Oh, DM also did a video, right? Which released earlier. That's, that's me. right. Uh, Demon Mama also never misses, except for whenever she and I have a disagreement, in which case she misses. Shoe on head fans won't watch this, which um, maybe at least one did. You can hope. What did you fucking say? What the? What the fuck did you just say? Oh, yeah. A three hour long video. Okay, so we have, so I, I chafed at the 28 minute long video of, 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 of shoes, but we have a two and three hour video respectively. Uh, that's good. Um, yeah, uh, okay. People, people joking bridge burnt straight up though. By the way, I just want to say the fact you all, every every member, like, okay, specifically members of uh, of both communities, you all should know if the bridge hasn't been burnt between me and Vosh at this point, given the all out brawls that we have had in the past, uh, you should know that that is a sturdy as fuck bridge. See, our bridge is made with like fucking uh, top notch steel top-notch titanium this ain't no fucking wooden bridge okay vosh and i have fucking duked it out and that bridge ain't going fucking nowhere all right straight up yeah we, we went shooting the other day together and had a fucking great time it was sick as fuck you're not burning that, that bridge ain't gonna burn easy maybe if vosh decides to become like an a, a, like an anti-trans or oh i know the one thing that could burn the bridge if if Vosh started being anti xenogender or something like that, that might burn the bridge. But to be honest, I'm gonna be completely 100% real with you. Vosh has always been not just good, but very good to my critters. So I gotta say, that's I appreciate that a lot. That's no risk of that right now. Let's continue. All right, sure. Okay. Zan is probably right. When will we get a shooting stream? Sooner than you think. But she was, but I, legitimately, I can't think. I can't even think of that many. T I can't think of any time that Zan's missed. Does Zan miss? I don't think Zan misses. You know, the point is, because I, I don't think I've ever had a public disagreement with Zan except over Minecraft. DM and I was over that pharmaceuticals. I don't even remember. I have such a bad memory. Uh, okay, you can all. Yeah, we had a disagreement about the uh, about the supply chains discourse. Who cares? literally didn't even matter it was a nothing discourse and whatever we just we just fought with each other whatever tell i'm thrilled to be here right let's go you can just oh yeah okay so anyway uh the um if you'd ever watched a drama mama you would know how in-depth dm's takedowns are well judging by the length of the video i, I would assume fucking so. true <sighs> okay fucking true Okay, so basically, Shu did something, and that means I have to talk about it, because everyone holds me to account for everything she's ever done. I don't know why this keeps happening. All right. Shu video. Well, let's do it. Let's find out. Today we are going... Oh my god, it's, it's Shu, but it's actually... Berman, you're person. amazing. That's crazy. Hello, everyone. Today we are going to be talking about the creepy Balenciaga photo shoot you may have heard of, how I helped accidentally kick off Balenciaga Gate, the bizarre defenses of the photo shoot, and how I lost friends over it. No, I'm not joking. This is going to be a wild one. So get comfy, get cozy, I made you some hot chocolate. Look, it's got marshmallows in it. I don't like marshmallows. Uh, I, I know, I know. I'm not gonna do, I promise, I'll be less of a pause Andrea, but hearing that again, Knowing, knowing where this video goes and hearing that fucking marshmallow intro again makes me want to crack my teeth. It's like, oh my god, my jaw just clenches in fury. Fuck. That was already a big L from Shu. I like hot chocolate, but not marshmallows. 
Based opinion, by the way, marshmallows so degrade for those of you who hot don't chocolate. Know, because I sure as hell did not before all of this. Balenciaga is a high-end fashion clothing brand that sells ugly shit like this for thousands of dollars. I personally you, do not buy Balenciaga clothing. I am not a filthy capitalist. I buy my clothes on Amazon, like a good socialist. Anyway, the company is currently under fire for their new holiday collection photo shoot. And when you see these photos, you will probably understand why. One was a little girl on a couch with a very worried, sad look on her face, surrounded by alcohol and holding a teddy bear, a teddy bear that was wearing a full BDSM harness. There was other pictures of the girl laying- Okay, I, I have to structure this properly just so we all know where we're coming from. Alcohol? Yeah, aren't there like wine glasses down here? This is a flask. That's not BDSM. Okay, I'm just going to ignore chat. Let's ignore chat. That's fine. It says H2O. A wise it's choice. a hip flask that says H2O. Do you get it? Like, do you get... <sighs> No, ignore chat. Okay. Ignore chat. Yeah, ignore we're just it. going to ignore chat on this. Okay, I do think the Balenciaga images are weird. That is a BDSM harness. Uh, harness. I don't care if you're aware of some, like, esoteric other explanation. We're talking about what, like, the public perceives it as. There's always another way you can interpret basically anything. That's a BDSM harness. This is alcohol. Oh, no, okay, I have to do it. Harnesses were... A harness was originally invented for animals. It, harnesses were originally invented for animals. That's where they came from. The reason why it's a BDSM thing is because it you put an animal harness on a human and it... Okay, no, I have to let go. I have to let go. I have to let go of it. I have to let go. It's a minor point. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Coated. These are literally wine and champagne glasses. If you disagree, you're stupid, and I'm sorry. Um, that right there is like a hip flash. I'm not stupid! Um, it's kind of weird. I don't think it's QAnon, pedo, gate red pill whatever but yeah it's kind of weird i've said this a million times let's go on a full bdsm harness there was other pictures of the girl laying on the couch as well as another shot of another said little girl on the bed surrounded by balenciaga items chains and a whole ass leash a little weird a little sussy like the pictures just gave you bad vibes that was the point of those photos um vosh it's at its most edgy there's nothing pedo shut up and listen to what i say i didn't say it was pedo they're meant to be sussy. The point of these photo shoots are to make people uncomfortable. That's the whole point. Um, Balenciaga, like a lot of corporate brands, uh, do shock marketing. They try to incite, you know. Oh, thank um, you, Punky Gal. And thank you, Actual as, Jake. Uh, as a branding exercise. This happens literally all the time. Uh, yes, this is that's a very true, sensitive that's time to be doing that with anything that even remotely resembles like child material. Um, it's as simple as that. But anyway, to make things even worse, right on their homepage, right next to that photo shoot, was a photo of a purse on a desk. Seems normal, right? But the only visible paper sticking out from under the purse, the only piece of paper with any text on it, conveniently right there, was a court case related to child pornography. I am going to react to this one thing real quick. I actually made a mistake in my video, which I, since I watched back my video, I caught a mistake I made, which is... Actually, I didn't call her on the fact that it is not the only piece of paper visible in the photo. In fact, there are five to six other readable pieces of paper visible in the photo, and she just blatantly lies and says it's the only visible piece of paper. It's not. I know. I didn't even I didn't even catch her on that. There were so many lies in Shuan Head's video that I didn't even catch her on that. I think, if I remember correctly, I think Vosh catches catches her on it, and I didn't. Creepy. Coincidentally, two days before this all hit the internet- That was a separate photo shoot, but it was there. Balenciaga left Twitter. Not only did they delete their Twitter account, but they deleted every single photo off of- Oh yeah, here's Doe right here, look at this. There's Doe in Vosh's chat saying, there's like eight pieces of text. See, Doe caught it, but I didn't. Stupid, I'm such an idiot. I'm such a fool. How could I have been so stupid? Of their Instagram page. Why are you running? Why are you running? So I actually found all of this out because I saw a TikTok on my Twitter. So I heard that apparently Balenciaga frequently does uh, Instagram purges. I don't know if they frequently leave Twitter, but I think they do the yeah, Instagram purges. I don't know if that's related necessarily to this. Um... Okay. Oh, God. Please chat. Please chat. Chat. If you can just that's true. hold that's your shit together. At times. By the end of this, we will all be happier if you can just calm down. Yeah, chat is being very annoying here, but uh, actually, uh, they 
Balenciaga actually released a statement as to why they deleted their Twitter before Shoe on Head actually uh, started this whole nonsense. They didn't even, the, the conspiracy theory hadn't even started. Um, they, they, uh, they deleted it because they were mad at Elon Musk, which is hilarious. But whatever, let's continue. And not inject your opinions into this and let me do this. Please, stop, okay? The thing that happens every time is you guys get riled up to attack Shu, so you make bad criticisms, and that shit sets me off. I don't like seeing people do that with Nazis, let alone Shu, somebody that I'm actually on good terms with. Okay, so if you if you if you d d despise me being on good terms with Shu, if you if you want to see that come to an end, then it's in your best interest to shut up and let me offer the criticisms. Okay, because I can do it better than you can. Okay, that was an that was a that was that was a chat getting blown the fuck out there. Literally, if you shut up, this will go better for you. And sometimes, you know, you know, it, it's weird because there's this dichotomy where chat is there to not shut up. The whole point of chat is to never shut up. But at the same time, if sh if chat could shut up for just a minute, sometimes it would go better. Twitter timeline by the streamer Brittany Venti, and she was talking about this. And I couldn't believe it, so I went to Balenciaga's website and I saw a TikTok on my Twitter timeline by the streamer Brittany Venti. Nazi. Not just streamer, Nazi. Or at the very least, white nationalist fascist. Just, yeah. Kind, kind of important to pull that through, I think. And she was Thank you, Vosh. And I Thank couldn't you. believe it, so. Super fucking important detail that she left out. Super fucking important detail that she left out and Vosh called her on. Based. So I went to Balenciaga's website and lo and behold, it was real. The creepy photo shoots, the CP document, everything was right there. So I made my own tweet about it and this tweet winded up absolutely popping off. Uh, Flashy Job asks, do you think that Chu is going to go schizoid mode on Vosh soon? He didn't go too hard on her lies, but at least he's gone hard on the more blatant shit. No, I think he did go hard on her lies, actually, in my opinion. I don't think it will be anytime soon. I think Shu has realized, uh, has realized that this particular discourse is beginning to sour for her. Uh, Shu likes to do little drive-bys. Shu likes to drop some nonsense, get some people hurt promote the right and then run away. I think what will happen though, is that next year there's going to be, she's gonna do this again. As we're gonna see, as we saw in her video, she said she'll do it again. And next year when she does it, she's going to try and set it up such that, uh, such that it hurts Vosh. That's my genuine opinion. I personally think, this is my personal opinion. I think Shoe on Head uh, deeply, deeply uh, underappreciates her friendship with Vosh. Now, I don't know much about their private friendship, but all I can say is that um, Shu on head at the end of her video saying, I didn't do anything wrong. Fuck you. I'm going to do it again. Uh, that shit is a, uh, that shit is a, is a pretty big fuck you to anybody who's ever tried to like help her avoid the severe negative consequences of her actions. Anybody who's tried to help her understand why she fucked up, people like Vosh, for example, I think that's a pretty giant fuck you to pe to friends that have, have actually looked out for her. And so I don't think she'll do it right now. I don't think she's just gonna make like a video going crazy mode on, on, uh, on Vosh, but I think that she'll try and set up the next one such that it will uh, be hurtful for people like she did with me, where if you respond to her insane lies, then she'll slander you. Yeah. Did she officially fly too close to the sun? Uh, no. I don't think I don't I don't think uh, in this atmosphere that she flew too close to the sun outside of like leftists all leftists in the entire planet no longer having any trust in shoe on head whatsoever I will say she's destroyed her credibility on the left completely and utterly destroyed um, as for like legal repercussions I think she's gonna get worse until it really hurts and I think what's gonna end up happening is that she will fly too close to the Sun and she'll get the Alex Jones treatment and then then it's gonna be rough because uh, Alex Jones has been around for 30 years maybe about about 30 years he's been running his show alex jones has allies all over the place shoe on head 
does not have so many allies. Allies, And remember, Alex Jones got fucking clapped. Despite all of his connections, despite all of his friends and allies, he got clapped. That guy's going to be in debt for the rest of his life. Yeah, anyway, let's continue. Off. I had no idea the entire internet started talking about it because once a tweet of mine starts to blow up, I just mute it and just move on with my day. My tweet was all over mainstream media. New York Post even called me a, quote, eagle-eyed social media watchdog. Yeah. Okay. This spiraled completely out of control. People were burning their Balenciaga items. There is just no PR team that is going to get them out of this one. Making rap songs against Balenciaga. Okay. Even vandalizing Balenciaga stores. Also, just so everyone knows, I am not suicidal. Just in case news comes out that I was found with three designer bullets in the back of my head. I don't think Brittany Venti is either, so if either of us... <laughs> we do not have information that will lead to the arrest of Hillary Clinton. The okay, okay, I'm- okay, I'm just gonna get right to this. Okay, let- alright. You guys know how in the past I've talked about how there's a difference between people's political opinions and, um, and, and the actual outcomes of the stuff that they say and produce? Here's the issue, okay? In terms of Shu's political opinions, she is a Bernie Sanders supporter through and through. Trust me, I have known her longer and closer as a friend than you guys have. She is authentically and sincerely, as a person to her heart, pro-trans, pro-gay, pro... You know, not a communist or whatever, but it authentically, like, ideologically aligned with Bernie Sanders and, I guess, the general movement that, that he inspired. Like, you, you can fit her in that category. That is the case. However, that is not... Uh, that, you know, a person's positions are not a full reflection of the actual outcome that they have as a, um, uh, as a public figure. So here's the thing that I'm going to do, okay? I'm going to talk about all the ways in which this video and her behavior embolden the far right, even if those aren't her intentions or positions. It is going to take a while. That is what we're going to do. I've said this before with other people, right? There are other people whose positions and behavior don't align. Destiny pals around with neo-Nazis and has a community that basically just, like, coddles them and rehabilitates them, but as an actual, like, in terms of his opinions, like, he would align with, like, a probably left of center on, on most things that he actually believes. Um, it's, it's about people's... Be small note. Just a small note here. Destiny was recently on a <laughs> PragerU... A PragerU panel! <laughs> anyway, let's continue behavior right like whether you say he was being honest or not uh sargon of akkad uh would say that he is um uh like a liberal progressive women's rights whatever while doing the whole gamergate thing like what people what pe what people actually believe now sargon's an idiot and also very disingenuous and some say there were things wrong with destiny too but what we're really talking about here aren't people's positions this is one of the reasons why it really frustrates me when people in my community are like wrong on this, you know? Um, I'm gonna reveal some shit that, okay, the tea is hot. I'm gonna reveal shit you guys have never heard anywhere else. The secret relationship oh, between shit. me and Shu, okay? For years, Shu and I have been good friends. She's always been really nice to me, even back when I was a really small content creator. In a totally non-transactional way, uh, without any like benefit to her, like at all, really. Um, she's just been really like, nice which i've always respected because this is all this has always been like a pretty hostile space for me like you guys understand you you know i make very few friends out here a lot of people have accused me of being like too charitable to shoe as a product of us being friends i don't apologize for being friends to her because with her behavior to me she has certainly earned that because she's always been really good like just to talk to and like like reliable like you know i don't know it's just it's just a friend it's a, a thing D being a friend but i think there is some legitimacy to the idea that my like being friends with her has even if like my position is oh yeah you can dislike shu if you want like i definitely treat her differently than other people you know so okay we'll get to it like i said I feel like Vosh is being pretty honest and straightforward here. And also, I wanted to speak to one thing uh, in support of what he's saying here, which is this: I, which is what he said about uh, about like having friendships that are non-transactional. That shit is actually—it's really fucking weird. 
and most people don't understand this about being a public figure or being a content creator or whatever you want to say, generally just public figures in general, you get a lot of people who will, uh, you get a lot of people who hate you irrationally, but you also get a lot of people who simply want to leech clout off of you or they want to leech off your success or they want to, and it is, if you are not careful, it's incredibly easy to become in, very jaded unhealthily jaded about that type of shit because the truth is that it's not everyone but there are people like that there are a lot of people who are basically looking for some sort of transactional relationship where they do something nice to you and there's an unspoken implication that you're supposed to do something nice back for them and obviously it's a general rule of socializing that if somebody treats you well, you treat them back. If somebody does something for you, you, you know, you, you, you reply in kind. But what I'm talking about is uh, specifically that transactional, the use of the word transactional there, I think is really good because there are a lot of people like that. There are a lot of people who get totally lost in the, in the, the grind of, of content creation, the grind of being a, a public figure. And they, they start to see relationships as uh, connect as 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 strings as that they can pull. Hey, here's a thing that I can get a favor I can pull, <laughs> and it's very unhealthy. And it, it you get paranoid about it sometimes. Um, and I can imagine this is especially true for someone who's like Vosh, who's way bigger than I am. Uh, you know, I can imagine there's a ton of people who have mistreated him like that or who have uh, attempted to basically uh, uh, engage in a friendship uh, that wasn't as as honest or truthful as it should be. And it really, it really fucking sucks. Yeah, it happened, yeah, yeah, Retcon mentions even small Twitch streamers get like this. It happened even when I had just a modicum of success on my channel. Obviously now, my channel is doing great. My channel is exploding, which is amazing. And I have a lot in store for you all, but, even when I was a small channel, there were people who, uh, who it's, it feels gross. It feels hurtful, um, especially if you fall for it, which it's really hard not to. Like I said, without becoming jaded, it can be really hard to feel like you can trust anybody when you know at every moment that somebody wants to get some, that somebody could be wanting to get something from you. I know I'm not explaining this perfectly well, but I just wanted to, I wanted to communicate to chat and to all of you who are watching this and hearing that, that it's a real thing. I'm not even as big as Vosh and uh, that's something I have experienced and it's emotionally, it fucks with your brain. It completely fucks with your brain. Um, and if, if you're not careful, if you don't, if you're not super introspective about it or if you don't uh, take time to think about it and to process it and to challenge your own emotions about it, it can easily get out of hand to the point where you no longer trust anybody. And that's not healthy. You cannot live like that. You can't live in a constant state of paranoia and you shouldn't. Vermin, Vermin says, uh, yeah, like they could leak your messages at any point just to get some dumb, some dumb clout. That shit makes me anxious. Yeah, um, I mean, I had a minor version of this happen recently where like I was talking about, uh, uh, about another streamer and I, I admittedly, I, I was like, slightly incorrect in how I recounted events that transpired in DMs. I didn't leak DMs or anything like that. Um, and then they ended up leaking DMs and it's kind of sucked. Uh, but I couldn't get too mad about it because technically there was a couple, like I was, I was technically incorrect. Basically I had made a claim like, um, I made a claim like, oh, I, 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 uh, I said there was like two sentences back and forth. In reality, it was like, we went back and forth for like two paragraphs instead of two sentences. It was still not that big of a difference, but my I misrecollected it, and uh, then I ended up getting my DMs leaked. Now, thankfully, I don't really do a whole lot of clandestine shit in DMs. I tend to be pretty cognizant, but what I'm trying to illustrate here is the fact that even people who you have an established relationship with, sometimes things go sour, and if they're pissed off, they can do shit like that, and it's, it fucks with, again, it fucks with your head. It's really fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, all right, let's continue. I don't want to get too distracted by this. Let's continue. Well, you guys have to be on your best behavior, all right? Because 
like here's a here's here's a thing, right? Here we go with Vosh acting like Shu doesn't know exactly what she's doing, just patronizing us from decoy tricks in chat. Okay, you have never left your house. Don't even let's not even talk about uh not knowing Shu. You know, you've never spoken to another human. Okay, you're an experiment. All right, you're living in a computer simulation. You have no idea. For God's sake, please. Let me handle this, I swear, because you people are so f***ing horny to jump down my throat that every argument here turns into one between me and chat. Because you know I want to argue with you guys, right? I f***ing love arguing with you people. I see a bad take in chat and I jump on that shit. Don't give me any bait. Just let me do this. Starting right away. So, right off the bat, we've got a couple of issues in terms of, again, not position-wise, but in terms of, like, what the outcome of this rhetoric and behavior is, emboldening the right. Not to, like, leaving aside the fact that her initial characterization of people's response to Balenciaga left out the fact that it was the far right who jumped in it, not people. Leaving aside the fact she didn't mention that Britney is a Nazi. This is relevant info. You know, moral panic. True. It is extremely relevant info. As it turns out, uh, saying that a content creator who is an avowed Nazi, just saying that they're a content creator, the person who actually created the conspiracy theory that you ended up popularized, that's a huge omission. Vosh is, like I said, 100% on point in calling this out. Uh, coming from like the far right are different from just, oh, people are concerned about. It is a critical distinction, you know? And then she, then she jumps into this, oh, ha ha, if I get assassinated, Again, this isn't about positions. Nothing she's saying here is explicitly far right, or even, by the way, explicitly incorrect. I've made jokes about, uh, you know, oh, bullet in the back of my head, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Like Gayfesh says, it would be like calling Fuentes a cozy streamer because he streams on his own website. Exact, literally perfect. Literally Never. perfect. But as we're going to see, there's kind of a pattern of like, I don't think she's far right, but holy shit, does she go out of her way to not make them angry with her? You know, but we'll get to it. The best part about this though has to be I was fact-checked by Twitter and this is what they said. Although Shu often makes comments to cause amusement or laughter, this is an authentic Balenciaga marketing photograph. It contains an excerpt from the US Supreme Court opinion in United States vs. Williams, which upheld a part of federal child pornography law. I've never seen one of these fact-checker things just be like, fact-check true. I that was pretty funny. I know Shu likes to get a little silly, but I call this out in my video. I wish Vosh would have brought it up. It does not agree with her. It's all that it says is that it, it only confirms that the photo is real. It doesn't actually confirm that what she said about the photo was correct. In fact, the second portion of that does not agree with her. The second portion reveals that the ruling is different than how she characterized it. I, that was the one thing I wish that he would have called out here. Because um, that's a pretty big detail. She like is par parroting this as if it's a win. It's not a win. It was not a win for her. Uh, isn't the reader's context thing not the same as a fact check? Yes, the reader's context thing is crowdsourced, and the system by which it, it is crowdsourced is very imperfect. Very imperfect. But that, let's not get too distracted on that. I would have liked it if he had called that out, but it's not a big deal. Shu literally has the DreamWorks smile right now. <laughs> oh no, you're right! Oh, uh, absolute zero. I promise you, I agree with you on that. We'll get to that. We just got to get through this. And I, I want to make sure that I uh, add my little comments here because that's what a react is for, right? You're watching me react because you want to hear what I have to add. But she's actually serious this time. I also love that she says Shu. Like Twitter and I are just on a first name basis now. Now you're probably asking Shu. Your first name isn't Shu. I didn't catch this the first time either. And this is another thing that I missed on. Her first name isn't fucking Shu. It, so when she says on a first name basis that it's not true, it, it just made me laugh. I was like, wait, what? Yeah, Miss Onhead? Is Onhead her, her digital last name? It just made no sense. 
Anyway, Why let's would continue. Why a high-end fashion brand pull this, like, where's Waldo shit? Well, there are a few theories. The most obvious one is to just look edgy and subversive. Nothing like a good old controversy to get eyes on your brand. So if this was some kind of pathetic attempt at an attention grab, they sure got attention and much more. I wouldn't put it past corpos to do some weird attention whoring like this, and I definitely wouldn't put it past the fashion industry. The other theory is that this is just a little wink, a little nod to the other freaks in the industry. Think the Wilhelm scream, but for like little St. James tourists. Finally, Balenciaga, the brand itself, came out and apologized. Uh, yep, we're gonna be filing under, uh, this under, uh, on head, comma, shoe. <laughs> exactly, Kit Redgrave. It, fucking exactly. We sincerely apologize for any offense our holiday campaign may have caused. Our plush bear bags should have not been featured with children in this campaign. We have immediately removed the campaign from all platforms. We apologize for displaying unsettling documents in our campaign. We take this matter very seriously and are taking legal action against the parties responsible for creating this. Killjoy 40k says, I feel like the way Shu uses the word corpo, it's kind of like how people say they. Yeah, I agree set and including unapproved items for our spring campaign photo shoot. You might notice that in this um, post from Balenciaga, they seem to be referring to the bit that had the Supreme Court. Communism is good says on is her middle name, you fool. So it would just be Mrs. Head. <laughs> oh no. Court case document that referred to the child pornography case. They don't seem to be referring to the kids with the teddy bears because mm. again, to me, the, the Supreme Court case purse on desk thing was a lot worse than the kids with the teddy bears thing. I, I, I understand the goal of the original two, um, the kids with the teddy bears, was to make them, um, make people uncomfortable. Like, the point is to, to sow discomfort. Um, the problem is, is that, like, the document on the desk doesn't sow discomfort. It's just if you notice it, it's a CP reference. You know what I mean? Like, the, there isn't really an emotional context. Again, very, very minor critique here. Okay, <sighs> calling it a CP reference, whatever. Now, nah, whatever. I'm letting it go. To whatever. having that Supreme Court document on the desk. There's not really, like, an artistic license. There's not really, like, an ulterior reasoning or motivation outside of just if you notice it, it's like, oh, so that's what that is. It doesn't, it doesn't produce any artistic... I'll read what he's reading. Thank you very, very much for the $1.50 uh, super super chat. Thank you so very much. Deeply, deeply appreciate that. Thank you. Stick value. Thank you, Goddess Transcript. Um, so, so to me, that seems like the thing that they're more, um, more jumping on. Now, Balenciaga did initially say that they'll be pursuing uh, legal action against the photographer, but since then, they've actually revoked that. They've actually said they're not doing that because the photographer was not the person who chose the sets. It was somebody at Balenciaga. We strongly condemn abuse of children. Oh yeah, this is a part where I can actually add something interesting. So the artist who did this, um, the artist who did this photo shoot um, is actually a, uh, a, a pretty famous artist. The, ph the photographer, uh, I think he, he did a thing called Toy Stories, I think, or something. Yeah, I think it's called Toy Stories. Uh, yes. Uh, the, the guy who made it uh, had done a series previously that was his own project. So he made like a photo book. You know how photographers will put together like a, a book of themed photos. And it was a story. It was like they were just photos of various kids with the toys that those kids play with. And it was meant to, to be just an artistic musing on the, di I don't know, on, I don't know the whole thing because I've never read the book, but it's basically an art project that talks about kids and their toys. There's nothing, no connection to Balenciaga, no child exploitation going on with that. He's just a photographer. Then Balenciaga commissioned him. They basically said, hey, you should come work on our project. And he said, okay. And then they designed, based on his previous work, they designed the photo shoot. So it was super confusing, once again proving that this entire thing, there was no actual research that went into this fucking conspiracy theory. There was um, no effort to actually figure out what actually happened. The photographer was famous for his work with children in the past. And they brought him on because they liked his, his work, which was famous like he made a lot of money off of these books because they were you know ostensibly very good photos um 
Yeah, so that's just a little extra detail. Nothing to do with Pixar, no. Uh, you can actually look them up online. You can look up the artist. I think their name is uh, Gabriel Gallimberti, I think. Um, anyway. Yeah, so they had a whole, he had done a whole bunch, uh, but but he didn't actually design this one. He, he just was, Balenciaga set designers were inspired by his previous unconnected work and were like, oh, we want to do something like what you did before. Anyway, let's continue. I just wanted to, I just wanted to put that out there since this is what is, this is what has come out since the time that I made my video, since the time that, sh like, this is all newer developments. So anyway. Can you imagine finally getting like big work as a photographer and this happens? That's what I brought up in my in my original video was I was talking about how like if you just got the, if you were the photographer who did this, you're just working on set and like you're just doing you're working with the team that you're working with and there's no, no like children are being harmed and then one day you just find out that everyone is screaming for your head and that they're that buildings are being defaced calling you a pedophile for something that like that just doesn't make any sense to you? It's 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 absurd. Yeah, it would be fucking terrible. But you know, like I said, we're in for we're in we're in for the fucking uh, moral panic. Exactly, we're in for the fucking moral panic. Children in any form, we stand for children's safety and well-being. With Balenciaga facing a firestorm over a series of disturbing new ads, all eyes and ears were on their highest-profile partner for comment. Kim finally released a statement on. Wait, don't we. Would I get DM? Would I get DMs here for TMZ? Pause. No DMs here, you know. Sunday, Bye. calling herself disgusted and outraged. Meanwhile, Vosh, you're unironically insane. If you sincerely think the court doc was nothing but an unfortunate coincidence, literally just public. Fortnite says, uh, the people who are pushing this thing keep saying that that Balenciaga and the artist deserve it because they should have been able to tell it was pedophilic. Like, I'm sorry, but that is such an absurd position. If you are, if you're famous for if you are famous for a series of photographs that is a kid sitting with toys, with the toys that they play with, and you are doing an art project like that that has literally no pedophilic elements at all. You can go look at the original photos. They're very, they're just photo, they're just art photos of a kid with the toys. It, anyway, if you get approached by a big brand, like we wanna do a themed one around our products, and, and you just do the job, what are you supposed to pick up on? Like, are you supposed to be sitting there going like, oh yeah, uh, uh, this bear is weird to me? You might, you might do that, but why, but like, if the child, if you're there on the photo shoot and no children are being harmed and there's nothing that to you is creepy in any way, like, how are you supposed, it's just ridiculous. It's just a ridiculous conspiracy brain position. Yeah, n normal people aren't constantly pedo hunting. Inkfrog says, I actually looked up the Toy Story's photos and they're actually really charming. Yeah, like I said, this guy, the guy who did this art uh, got a lot, like got like a lot of critical, critically positive reviews. Like the Toy Story's thing is like, was his first big work. That's why Balenciaga reached out to him. Sure, maybe you could argue that Balenciaga made some de decisions with their set design, with their, de with their design that was not, the wasn't as good as the stuff he did before, but I think it's absurd. Again, this whole thing is absurd. Anyway, let's continue. Domain text. Ah, yes, the 10 to 12 public domain texts out there, of which one just happens to be about child pornography. Just a very normal, normal thing for people to randomly print documents to use in a high-profile photo shoot and publicly display them uh, without actually checking any of the words or content. I often do this. When, I, when I'm taking photos for a multi-billion dollar fashion brand, I'm always just hitting random. I'm feeling lucky on the document prints um, and just throwing that out there, you know? This is something I often do. Calm down. Yeah, this particular part is... Um... This particular part is, is another area where I, I, I diverge from Vosh's take. Um... Not that I think he's doing a bad job here, it's just that if you actually look at the document, um, if you were just printing out legal documents, nothing in there, nothing in the actual excerpt says anything about child porn. Um, you actually have to go and like look, search the, the, 
you have to go and search the actual case and find out what the case was about. And I believe it's completely plausible that somebody would have looked at that and said, yeah, this references some random Supreme Court case and never known what the Supreme Court case was about. You know, it's just it's just it's one of those things where there's a lot of implication and inference, and I don't think it's fair to do the inference. Let's continue. Her ex-husband, Kanye West, after going on Infowars and saying, quote, there are a lot of things I love about- The case was an anti-abuse ruling. Why is anyone making that a big deal? Oh, holy shit. Oh no, my god. don't listen to chat. Oh don't my listen god, to chat. Don't do it. Me, oh me god, reading uh, Mein Kampf on the bus and uh, shaking my head enthusiastically to, um, to show everyone I disapprove of what's written in it, you know? Re every, every time I turn the page, I go, mm-mm. Well, uh, yeah, just holy shit. Just... <sighs> about Hitler. Hey. Ran defense for Balenciaga. And now all of a sudden, everyone is so outraged and focused on Balenciaga, but then we're still aborting our kids. We're still fornicating. But, oh, we don't, we don't wear Balenciaga now. Y shut the hell up. So fellow paranoid schizophrenics started digging and found more creepy things in the photos from Balenciaga. And this has spiraled into a much bigger conspiracy. This is the thing with conspiracies, though. They're always rabbit holes. When there's so many things that are unexplained about the world and people just kind of feel helpless and powerless, people understandably start to look for answers elsewhere. And a lot of people took this Balenciaga thing as just kind of the rich and powerful doing what they do in secret now out in the open. Not people, the far right. I don't understand this framing. I don't get it. You don't, you don't have to be like a sociologist reading out like the participation in this moral panic to understand this is a far right thing. People broadly may be upset with Balenciaga, but there is undeniably a far right character to the way this conspiracy has taken shape. Like, overwhelmingly so. The framing here makes it seem as though it's a totally bipartisan framing when she went over like, a MAGA rap about Balenciaga, and the initial yep. info came from um, Brittany Venti, you know? Now again, the reason why this bothers me is that the far right has run with this as a, like, QAnon, blood libel, liberal elite, queer, pedophile conspiracy thing. That's the, the, the line they're running with. Now I know that as the video goes on, she'll address this, and I'll wait for that to go over all of it. You know, we'll see if this gets on 10 16 2022 kanye posted some nonsense with the caption i haven't got supermodel pussy in over a month please send help <laughs> but he complains about people still fornicating yeah uh uh k k fucking yay is off the yay is just in a totally different reality there is no consistency remember when he was talking about how porn and fornication is bad but then he kept making jokes on alex jones show about how he wants to fuck um Ari Emanuel's wife. Remember how he kept doing that? And then Alex Jones was like, are you saying you want to fuck his wife? And he was like, no, no, I'm not saying that. But it was very obvious that he was saying that. Like the dude's just like, whew, yay is, yay is out there. Yeah. Contextualized later because it well might be. I'm just saying like at the moment, that's the feeling that I'm getting from this. Do I think this is some kind of Pizzagate thing where Balenciaga is like hiding children in their basement? Do I think they are literally trying? Well, it's worth noting that the Pizzagate thing was also a made up far right. Okay, here's the, here's the yay. Here's the yay one. As to Adidas, you can start to make new designs for footwear, blah, blah, blah. You own the Yeezy name and all that. Kanye West, I haven't got supermodel pussy in over a month. Please send, send help. Oh my God. Oh. No, wait. No, it's from, it's from one of, it's from a family member. No, it can't be. Is Quinn Emanuel? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. It's getting even worse. Oh no. It's getting worse for Ye. Oh. Stevie Blunder says, I'm with Demon Mama, though. If Shu wants to catch a predator, there are agencies that you could report to instead of doing actual damage with her preferred approach. True! Thank you very much, and you are 100% based on this. That is, that is the thing. There are literally entire orgs that are designed to looking into this stuff that you could spend your time working with. That Shu could spend her time working with, but she doesn't. Let's continue. Like, the way she framed that made it like the Pizzagate thing was proved or something, but it, 
it was also an insane far right moral panic that emboldened QAnon types. Also trafficking true. children. I don't think that. I don't know that. I've never claimed to know that. What I do know is that this is a huge f up from a billion dollar company. And when a billion dollar company f up, who better to come to their defense than the progressive left? Can we stop pretending Shu is an ally yet? Right off. This framing is f Shu. Shu. Shu, you know goddamn well that a solid half of the political powers that be in this country are on a full on, like, the entirety of progressive queer culture is about pedophilia bent. The idea that thinking you're emboldening them when you are is defending Balenciaga is just insane. That is absolutely not the case. This is not about protecting Balenciaga. It's about protecting queer people from the framing that right-wingers immediately ran with that you didn't, for some reason, shut down in this tweet thread. Yep, this is the part, this is the point that Vosh absolutely destroys on. And we're gonna see that Vosh hammers on this fact throughout this video, and I think it's really good and worth paying attention to. Because he points out the fact that the entire framing of this video is completely fucked from the get-go. Which is true. It is. It's incredibly manipulative. And there's another part uh, that... Uh, I think that Vosh, we'll, we'll get there, but I, but there's a part that Vosh brings great attention to specifically how much, how dishonest Shu's framing is and how much it actually manipulates the people who are, who are learning this from her end of things. Shu on head belongs in a prison cell for hate speech. Shu herself is basically a terrorist enabler at this point. You might notice that these messages that she's going through have nothing to do with defending Balenciaga as a company. Pre-watcher, hey, I, it's, I admitted that this is a that this is a seg this is a react that I pre-watched. To be fair, in my defense, this is this when this video came out, it was pretty fucking important for me to find out uh, if other people were gonna agree with my position or if I was gonna be uh, uh, if I was gonna end up standing on my own against six hundred thousand shoe fans who are convinced that I'm a pedophile defender with no evidence. So yes. True. I did pre-watch this time. You'll have to forgive me. You are a Nazi. Shu is literally just a Nazi. Yeah, um, Shu is a Nazi. Shu on head is a fascist and a danger to our community. This is your daily reminder that Shu on head is a Nazi. I'm sick of Shu on head. She needs to go. No more. I think that if a button to deplatform her existed, we should push it this instant. Do you think reporting her vids would do anything? Hate speech and all? How about we mass report her- I do- I do want to point out, by the way, that once you're a reasonably large content creator, you can construct the image of a mass cancellation campaign um, by, like, screenshotting tweets and YouTube comments pretty easily. Like, I, for, of someone of my size, like, I could do this with literally thousands of comments that have just been made in the past week or so. Um, yeah, it's really funny because in my video, I went and when she did this, I just countered by showing the tweets that were sent by her fans to me. And while she's complaining about, like, three tweets that go way across the line, like people being like, she should be destroyed and all this shit. I had dozens of people accusing me of fucking literal crimes. Of, I had, I had a, a full fucking fistful of people making explicit death threats at me. Puerto Rican musician says, your name is getting out there, Demon Mama. My anarchist friends actually know who you were. A year ago, none of my friends knew about you. Proud of the work you've done to create this community. I'm only gonna get better. You hear, can you fucking hear the signal? You can. Let's do this. Thank you. I could make a, I could make hours long video if I wanted to edit all that shit together, which I don't, but you all know, I mean, you've seen those comments and tweets. Twitter, fuck Shu, this crosses a line. Shu is a cum dump enabler for fascist violence. <laughs> Who'd expected anything else from a Nazi bimbo hag? She's fundamentally- You guys are very sexist about her. You got, okay. I'm, 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 here we go. Here's my enlightened centrist kicker, okay? You guys are very f weird about Shu. Every time she comes up, people get really sexist about her. Like, in this chat, in the Reddit, it's extremely weird. It, it like, legitimately, like, it's actually f weird. It would be... Nazi bimbo hag is a very funny tagline. Yeah, it's true. I can call Shu a Nazi bimbo hag. No, I didn't, though. I, it's funny, because I was probably Shu's most vocal critic, me and Zan, and neither of us 
leaned in on the sexism stuff. It's it's random commenters that do that. I did, admittedly, I did call Shoe on Head a bitch a few times, but I also use bitch all the time, and I also refer to myself as a bitch, so I feel like it's a little bit more forgiving. Anyway, let's continue. Be like, if there was like a like black progressive who like held a lot of water. You Jeremy Landry, right, I appreciate and I that. I kept seeing you guys say like weird shit about black. Like it's really weird, okay? Finally, the enemy and should always be treated as such. People like Shu and Matt Walsh are the types of people I believe committing acts of violence against is morally justified. Now I just need to make this clear that this is in no way a I just hate how you coddle her on stream. Well shit, dude, that doesn't justify being sexist. Calm the f down. That's on you representation of the entire left online most of the people who okay. follow me are left-wing and they agreed that yeah this photo shoot was really weird the people who are mad about this are from a pretty small bubble but nevertheless lo and behold i was apparently cancelled now i use the term i know once again i it's for some strange reason she was not mentioning the far right here at all those people were calling her out because her tweet got picked up by far right twitter um and a ton of far right people were in the comments agreeing with it and immediately running with their own conspiracism. Like, is she not going to say, you know, hey, the reason they were mad is because I, I ended up emboldening the far right in an ongoing, like, conspiracy theory against queer people. Because that- It's so funny that the tweet, the, the, the tweet that she goes the, 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 like, the second hardest on, she obviously goes the hardest on my video segment, which, Interestingly, she chooses a part that has nothing to do with my actual argument. Well, it has a tiny bit to do with my actual argument. We'll get there. But uh, she jumped on Zan, and Zan's tweet was a quote tweet of a of of a of a a fascist literally talking about uh, LGBT people needing to be killed because they're demons. That was what Zan was quote tweeting. How could he quote tweet it? If it didn't exist, bef it's it drives me crazy. His tweet, that fucking psychopath's tweet, who, by the way, once again, let me just remind you, is a mutual of shoe on head. I believe Vosh does get into this. But that tweet had thousands of likes and retweets before Zan reacted to it. And yet Shu tries to make it out like Zan invented the LGBT a harassment angle when in truth her own followers were doing it long before any of the left started to react to it that was one of the first major replies to her to her fucking post yeah how how can he quote tweet how can he quote tweet it's a clever turn of hand yeah that's one of the reasons why in my video i got so mad and was yelling at shoe fans and one of the reasons why i titled my video shoe fans won't watch this is because Shu's video is so deeply manipulative. It's so disgustingly manipulative. I can't even believe that people can watch it and not feel offended that they're being treated like they're that stupid. Let's continue. That's an objectively correct framing of the situation. Even if she didn't mean to or intend to or state anything objectively incorrect, she did embolden the far-right conspiracy. If that's not mentioned, cancelled sort of sarcastically because I really wasn't cancelled. It's kind of impossible to cancel me in general because I have four different fan bases and they all hate each other and me. And a lot of you guys watching this probably didn't even know all of this happened, but it was just very weird and I need to talk about this. She went head on her way to once again use her massive platform to provide the neo-Nazis. Yeah, here it is. Here's the one. This is the one I was just talking about. This is the one that she freaks the fuck out of. And if you notice, it's a quote tweet. It's a quote tweet from five hours earlier. This screenshot the it, it's literally in the screenshot. The actual truth of the situation is sitting right fucking there. The quote tweet is from fucking, is of a tweet that occurred five hours prior. It's very obvious that it was the right that was linking this shit to gay people, that was linking it to the groomer panic. Oh God. Or they can use to justify the murder of gay people, but this time the day after another anti-gay terror attack. See, that that's true. Absolute Zero said she done you and she done you and Zan so dirty It's actually disgusting how she tries to shield herself with we used to be friends I was never friends with shoe on head and to my knowledge her friendship with Zan was shaky at best Shoe on head is just playing as a professional victim, but we're gonna see all of that also great to see you and Mary Ipmus 85 d2d Derek Let's continue That's a true that's from Xanderhal by the way 
That's a true tweet. Shu, you could, I know you'll never discuss this with me because you don't like direct confrontation, but if you discuss this with me, you would lose. And you are losing right now to me saying this because I'm objectively right. He was right. There's, there's, there's no way about it. You may think there are like mitigating circumstances. Ah, yes. And the quote tweet, the tweet he's referring to down here was Pedro L. Gonzalez saying, we are up against demons, the groomer problem is real. It's not a dumb culture war issue. These people want to their kids in one way or another and they think it's funny. That there is, by the way, like, uh, <laughs> like, like I've said uh, many, many times in this whole thing, that, that tweet is so obvious. What it's saying, it is, it is, it is like a burning sun. Unfucking believable. Person down there is flat out just saying all queer people, all progressives, are part of a child conspiracy. Right there. Pedro's a friend of shoes. Yeah, I don't wanna I don't wanna follow police or anything, but I bet you if I go to their Twitter, followed by Yeah, shoe. Um Damn! What a fucking move! Hell yeah, Vosh! Fucking call that shit out! A fucking mutual! Shoot. She was bragged about giving him- By the way, Discord and Vol with the five gifted tier two subs. Holy shit! Thank you so very much! Thank you so very much! Discordant Vol for supporting the show. All of your support is greatly helpful. I have a lot of people to buy Christmas presents for. I am planning a lot of stuff for the coming year, so thank you all for supporting me. Deeply appreciate it. Thank you so much. That's so generous. Let's continue. Talking points for Tucker Carlson. Shoot. It, okay. I'm willing to give leeway here on account of familiarity, but a total unwillingness to acknowledge why the left is freaking out here is essentially just um, collaboration with the far right, regardless of what your actual specific positions are. Shu, Shu operates on the poly- Yeah, exactly. Vadim is in chat, and uh, we covered this on my original video, but as Vadim correctly brings up, it's actually much worse. They're not just mutuals. They're on a first name basis. Uh, and also, if you, if you go and- Vadim has a public thread all about this with the screenshots. I don't know if Shu has actually deleted them or not, but uh, I went and saw them myself, and you can see screenshots of them in Vadim's thread. Shu literally fed Pedro Gonzalez lines, which were then taken to Tucker Carlson's show. Tucker Carlson's show, of course, being one of the most popular, if not the most popular right-wing show in the world. Wild. Yeah, Pedro goes on Fox frequently. Politics of like, the people who are criticizing me are the ones I will react to. It, 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 like, and I, to an extent, everyone does this, of course. This is- Jeremy Landry with the two bucks, helping to buy a sick present. Thank you so much, Jeremy Landry. Deep, deeply appreciate it. Seriously, thank you. Just a shoe thing. But like, do we not see the broader problem here? Vadim goes into the details of how they know each other. Vadim, I don't know how much I can trust Vadim's perspective on shoe. Didn't, wasn't he weird before? Maybe he wasn't. I don't know. I'll look at this later. I'm sorry. Where are the gays? My post had absolutely nothing to do with LGBT people. The Balenciaga thing in general had nothing. Vadim says, <laughs> uh, "What I think, what I think, Vosh is referencing here. I think Vosh is referencing the fact that Vadim has a history of calling out shoe on heads bullshit." I would not, personally, I would not categorize Vadim as being weird about shoe on head. Uh, I would categorize it very differently. But maybe Vosh is misremembering something here. After all, Vosh does say that he has a terrible memory constantly, so maybe he was just misremembering. <sighs> ...to do with LGBT people. Then, then why? Where people you- Oh, Kiwi, Kiwi TP with the tier two sub. Thank you so much. Uh, you rock, says Kiwi. Thank you. I deeply appreciate that. Thank you so much. Let's continue. Follow talking about it. Chew, don't play dumb. It's not about what you say. The other thing in general had nothing to do with LGBT people. Where did this come from? This guy took a- The far right. Are you Are you really going to pretend Zan was the one who made up? The, the LGBT comparison?
like like Zan just produced that out of thin like like he he just yeah not only did yeah yeah no 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 it's definitely Zan oops Zan not only he definitely created it he also he was he was quote tweeting himself you might have thought that he was quote tweeting Pedro Gonzalez but no 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 I assure you Zan is on a next level he was playing 9D chess you see Pedro Gonzalez is actually a sock puppet account of Xander Hall that he made years ago befriended Shu with went on Tucker Carlson he hired an actor to go on Tucker Carlson pretending to be Pedro Gonzalez, who all along had secretly been made up by Xander Hall. This is true, and you should not question this narrative at all. Like I said, it is true. Don't ask any questions, and if you ask any questions, what's wrong with you? How deep does the lore go? Oh, I just smacked my own piano. I'm gonna have to adjust this thing a little bit, because I keep bumping it. It was Xan all along. Just constructed that? Random response to my tweet and implied I was responsible for someone else's opinion and therefore fueling hate Nimbus 171. Thank you so much for the incredibly generous $20 super chat. Thank you very very much deeply appreciate the infamous cheer Crimes against gay people yeah. with LGBT people. Where did this come from? This guy took a random response to my tweet that That's an oomph issue. I know you have a lot of oomphies, but come on Money followers. Mutual. A hundred thousand. This mutual. Not even a oomphy. A mutual. A moot. Person's been on Tucker Carlson. Not really a rando. And implied I was responsible for someone else's opinion, and therefore fueling hate crimes against gay people. Yes. That. Correct. Yes, this is how information works. If if you if you if you popularize an idea or promote it or or broadcast it okay I, I i don't i'm not going to even entertain this this is stupid shu are you playing dumb here you know perfectly goddamn well how this works the far right latched onto your tweets and immediately turned it into into fuel for the fire of the anti-queer like pedo eileen eileen newfer says what the fuck is an oomphy oomphy refer is a is a sh is a slang term that means one of my followers. So an oomphy is somebody who follows you on social media. Uh, and, it, you know, it's like, it's a slang term. A moot, M-O-O-T, or a mutual, is somebody who follows you and you follow them back. It's Zoomer speak, but now you know. Let's, uh, let me rewind a second so we don't interrupt Vosh's rant, even though we already did. Let's, let's Okay, listen. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to even entertain this. This is f***ing stupid. Shu, are you playing dumb here? You know perfectly goddamn well how this works. The far right latched onto your tweets and immediately turned it into, into fuel for the fire of the anti-queer, like, pedo groomer bullshit that they're doing. Why are you pretending you don't understand this? Why are you, why are you pretending this association was made by Zan? I'm just confused how Balenciaga posting an ad of kids holding stuffed animals in fetish gear turned into LGBT groomer discourse. Did I miss something? Look at the quote tweets and replies to her tweet thread from her followers. I have half a million followers on Twitter. I have over a million subscribers. No, no, f no, f this dude. No, absolutely f this. Stop. Stop. We are- Bless you, Vosh. Bless you for calling her on this bullshit. Bless you. May the- may the- may the seven hells bless you. Are way the f too close to death camps to be pulling this I'm not responsible for my followers behavior shit. This isn't about being responsible for your followers. This is in an era where the entire far right has completely thrown their weight behind the queer groomer conspiracy. You posting something that, again, the post itself in a vacuum, I don't think was wrong. Balenciaga did do sussy shit. I don't think the post in a vacuum was wrong or harmful. But then... Unfortunately, we, you know, life is complicated. The far right rolls with it and turns it into this, you know, the fuel for the conspiracy. And then to not only address or condemn that immediately in that thread, I, I like, I don't know how Shu could have seen the tens or hundreds of thousands of far right people clearly making this about queer people and not thrown up. Seer, Seer of Heroes says he isn't going easy on her. I'm a bit surprised. Uh, I think. I think a lot of people were a bit surprised by the fact that he went so, he went hard, but I assure you, if you're a bit surprised now, you're going to be very surprised by the end of this.
So let's keep watching. Up in her mouth. I have no idea how she can look at that. But she does spend like an awful lot of time like habitually communicating with far right people. So I don't know if she it's just true. like pretends. That's true. She happen, fucking does. She ignores it. I don't. I, I don't know if it's because she's locked in like the trad wife block now. I mean, by by being by, I hope she understands there are literally laws being passed right now by the people who are agreeing with her that would make talking about her sexuality illegal. Um, in school up to eighteen. Like, I, it's this. This isn't an environment where you can just throw shit out there. Um, and 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 not like. And, and just like absolve yourself of the of the consequences of any responsibility. It's not. That's not. That's not like a like a, 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 a an opinion either. Um, this isn't like a light disagreement. On YouTube, Doctor Jordan B. Peterson says solidarity with all trans people. Thank you very much, Doctor Jordan B. Peterson. I uh, didn't expect your support this impmas, but thank you and merry impmas to you. I am not the record wrangler. There were a few people, not that many, who took my tweet and ran with their own narrative of it. I cannot control the opinion. What? Why is she not calling out the far right? Some people who took their own direction? What the f do you mean? It was a huge wave of majority far right people. Why aren't you mentioning the direction they took it in? Like, see... Posting the Balenciaga shit and not following it up with a condemnation of the far right attention, that to me, this can be like irresponsibility. The framing in this video feels like malice. Opinions of other people. I agree, by the way. I think this is, I think this part right here in the video is where Vosh starts to realize just how bad this video actually is. Because keep in mind, as far as I, as far as I know, Vosh had not seen basically anything except for like secondhand reports about this video. Um, and uh, I think this is the part where he starts to realize just how bad this video actually gets. Because it's really bad. This video is a fucking atrocity. And a lot of these people aren't even in my audience. They're just random fucking people on Twitter who found my tweet because it went viral. Shoot. That this isn't content creator drama. Shoo! I know you're- Berman confirms this was a second hand and a couple of tweets. He had not pre-watched it and comments on his surprise at the end. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Okay, there we have confirmation. Yep. Listening to me, either right now or in the future- Thank you, Berman. This isn't content creator drama. We're not just YouTubers. We have public audiences. There are outcomes to our behavior. The words we speak resonate with huge numbers of people. This is not, oh, my, my, they, my, I've got so many followers. I don't even, this is like Weimar Republic, like, uh, uh, like signal boosting a giant story about like some Christian kid getting hurt. And then instantly the Nazi media takes it and starts talking about Jews. And later when the left is like, yo, shoot, what, what the f you're like, um, whoa, the left's trying to cancel me for calling out this murder and dismemberment of this one Christian kid. Some people might have taken it in some other direction. I don't know. But, like, it's not, like, th this is, this is a deliberately bad faith framing of the situation. You, if this it was is. meant to be good faith, why are you not pointing out the reasons they're upset? That is how a public forum works. If someone is egregiously being homophobic or harassing people in my replies, I'll just block them. There's nothing else I can do. What do you want me to do? Publicly in that tweet thread, call out the far- Aska, thank you so much for the tier one sub. Merry impmas to you, you badass demon and all the imps. Merry impmas to you as well, and thank you very much. Right for what they're doing, and in your subsequent video, acknowledge the actual harm that was done. That's it. That's all you have to do. You, you're not just a random forum poster. You can just condemn it with the same platform that you used to spread it to begin with. About the opinions of other people. Why don't you focus on what I said and did? Is it because- No. Shoot. I know you know this. We are too close. This is not about you. Get over yourself this is not some oh hysterical left freaked out over my it's not this isn't it's it's not your personal content or branding 
you understand. I know you know this because you're f***ing taking selfies with Blake Masters. I know you know what the far right are like. I know you know they exist. You're not in a bubble. You interact with more people across the political spectrum than almost anyone. More than anyone else I know. You know what's going on right now. You, you cannot just be the oops tee -hee arbiter of far-right politics. The least you could do is, in this video, explain why the left is angry. Like, if you... Excellent point. She doesn't even make an attempt to, and I'm sure he's going to discover this because he's not even halfway through the video yet. Uh, and, and if I remember correctly from having pre-watched this, I'm pretty sure he discovers this. Uh, it's... It's one thing that I'm going to say right now. One thing that I'm going to say right now is it's great. It's great seeing chat go, oh, my God. It, it's great witnessing the, the, those of you who haven't seen Vosh's reaction yet, because I know that there's a portion of my audience that doesn't that doesn't also follow Vosh. Actually, there's a pretty big portion that doesn't follow Vosh. Uh, but it's great seeing you all understand why I'm reacting to this right now, because it felt good for me. Uh, to, to hear Vosh call out Shu. Because honestly, like I said, and like I'll say again, I'm sure before this is over, this video really was a fucking travesty. Yeah, it's fucking cathartic, exactly. All right, I'm gonna press play and I'm gonna hit the restroom real quick. I'll be right back, keep watching. Could say, hey, and I understand why lefties are freaking out because the far right bit, immediately launched off with this tweet. And again, there's still some stuff in the video to go and we'll get to that. But... I do think even if it's presented later, you need to front load that shit. But we'll see. Because I said and did nothing wrong. I mean this with the most respect possible. Posting this a day after a homophobic terror attack that happened because the trans drag groomer scare comes off in very bad taste. I think choosing to bring this to light right after the shooting is phenomenally poor taste. She went ahead throwing queers under the bus right after a mass shooting to cater to her homophobic audience. There was a mass shooting in a gay club in Colorado a few days before this Balenciaga thing broke. And because there was a shooting at a gay nightclub, I can't talk about pedophilia. Holy shit, Shu, you f***ing retard. Listen, you either are or you pretend. If you sincerely think that's what's happening here, do I even need to expend energy, like, explaining the problem here? Shu, you are so attached to your infantile free speech extremist bullshit, where the greatest crime in the universe is criticizing you and the things you say, that you're incapable of understanding or at least acknowledging the broader context of what's going on here. It was not you talking about pedophilia. It was a far-right moral panic that you contributed to. Listen, it happens. Last year, during uh, the, the, the yearly, the annual drag pride show, queen, pride, kink at pride discourse, I said some stuff that I later came to regret. I think that there were some issues I was reactionary on, and I did contribute to some reactionary tendencies. You know what? That shit happens. That's fine. The difference is, I didn't then spend the rest of my life pretending that everyone who had a problem with me only did so because they hate my free speech, and because they're all, like, pro-pedophilia, or whatever the f framing we're going for here. The people who took issue with my behavior back then did so because my framing was such that I enabled a narrative of irresponsible child predation at, uh, uh Pride, which isn't a thing that happens. It's not a thing that happens. There's no statistical evidence to indicate this is any more a problem than children being predated on in any other, like, public event. I mean, that stuff happens. Oh. Okay, I, I gotta go back then. Hold on. I, I didn't know that was this part. All right, I'm gonna play it again. You all can suck it. I'm gonna re- I'm gonna- I'm gonna go back. I'll- I'll redo it. Worshipper of the Olympian says, why does Vosh associate- associate himself with Shu? Uh, he said it earlier in the video because Shu has always been very nice to him and also has been a good friend to him. And I very much sympathize with that position. Uh, I said this earlier, but I'll say it again since you donated to ask the question, um, which I appreciate very, very much, Worshipper of the Olympians. Uh, it's really hard to feel safe with friends when you're a public figure because a lot of friends uh, aren't really your friend. And it really sucks. Uh, and if you find somebody who is genuinely friendly to you and does not seem to be involved in trying to sort of get something from you, uh, the word Vosh used was uh, people who are not transactional, which is actually, it, it's a really hard thing to get sometimes. And I think a lot of people who aren't content creators can't possibly know that, especially 
Just It's just something that you can't know unless you've been there. And I didn't even know that before I got to this position. So, yeah. A vermin says he also has called her out privately many times. Since he considers a friend, he tends to take care of it offline like a normal person with an actual friend. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, let me listen to this again that I missed while I was in the bathroom. But that shit happens. That listen, acknowledging the broader context of what's going on here. It was not you talking about pedophilia. It was a far-right moral panic that you contributed to. Listen, it happens. Last year, during uh, the, the, the yearly, the annual drag pride show, queen, pride, kink at pride discourse, I said some stuff that I later came to regret. I think that there were some issues I was reactionary on, and I did contribute to some reactionary tendencies. You know what? That shit happens. That's fine. The difference is I didn't then spend the rest of my life pretending that everyone who had a problem with me only did so because they hate my free speech and because they're all like pro pedophilia or whatever the framing we're going for here. Fucking based. Much respect. You know, there's a saying that, uh, there's a saying, I don't remember, I think it's a business thing. I think it's like a business truism that says that, uh, sometimes messing up, uh, and making it right actually can be better than never messing up at all because it proves that you actually know how to handle when you're wrong. And to me, this is one of those moments, mad respect and whatever. A mistake is a mistake. Thank you for owning it. Deeply appreciate that. Seriously. Based as fuck. The people who took issue with my behavior back then did so because my framing was such that I enabled a narrative of irresponsible child predation at... Uh Ryoma says, people wanted me to burn the bridge over that. I don't burn bridges easily. Again, I said this, that Vosh and I especially seem to have a very strong bridge uh, because we've endured some pretty fucking like This is an example of it, the out and out fights that we've had. Our bridge is, uh, is but I also don't burn bridges easily. Uh, certain people who uh, burned bridges with me uh, <laughs> wanted to say that I'm like known for being a bridge burner, but the truth is that uh, I'm very reluctant to do that. And in basically every public conflict that I've had, with very few exceptions, I have made uh, great efforts to not burn bridges. Uh, so yeah, um, it would have been foolish to do so. And I don't regret, wait, hold on. I don't regret not burning the bridge. Is that right? I am happy I didn't burn the bridge. Grime Dango, wonderful to see you. Merry Impmas. Let's continue. Uh, uh, pride, which isn't a thing that happens. It's not a thing that happens. There's no statistical evidence to indicate this is any more a problem than children being Poetic Poser says, literally burnt the bridge with Chud. Oh, Chud, okay, S slash S. Yeah, I tried not to burn the bridge with Chud. Uh, it didn't really, it burned a little bit, but I would say it was a very weak burn. Uh, I don't really have a whole lot of like bad feelings towards Chud logic. I just think that our channels have gone in very different directions and some of his decisions I think are bad, but I wouldn't consider it like, I don't have like a whole bunch of personal animosity towards Chud. Let's continue. ...dated on in any other like public event. I mean, that stuff happens everywhere, of course, but it's not a disproportionate problem. It's not a pride problem. Kinkit pride isn't a problem. I mean, Maybe there are some people being extra wacky, but again, you can apply that to literally any situation. So that's not really like a specific fair criticism, but I didn't then go on to pretend like, you know, oh yeah, this is some like, uh, some like coordinated left effort to cancel me because they hated how I called out pedophilia. Cause that's not what you're doing here. True, you didn't do that. Again, based of Vosh, extremely based of Vosh, being able to, uh, being able to have a conflict, reflect on it, and grow. Also, uh, I know I, I've been on this for a little bit, but I gotta say, um, for those of you who are like, you know, longtime streamer fans, you guys who, who watch all kinds of streamers, the streamer super fans, that right there, the ability to bounce back from a mistake is one of the signs of who, in my opinion, of who is actually going to be able to make it long-term as a, as a streamer, as an artist. Um, 
you if you stagnate, if you're unable to take feedback, it indicates that you are probably going to stagnate artistically as well. Shu, if you actually get, let's be real, Shu, if you gave a f about pedophilia, then you would go to any one of the innumerable websites that talk about the actual ways in which you can help mitigate child sexual abuse and help victims of child sex trafficking. And none of them are fueling, fueling yeah, far right conspiracies like the f Wayfair cabinet, Pizzagate, uh, Balenciaga shit. None of this helps anyone. It doesn't. You're not going to fix anything. None of this changes. None of this solves anything. No children are being saved. The best thing that you can do is promote, hey, child sex education. One of the number one things shown to actually reduce child sexual abuse. And by the way, something opposed by all the people who freaked out over the tweet you posted. You created and contributed to an element of a moral panic led by people who are looking for ways to mathematically worsen child sexual abuse. Yep, 100%. But do you talk about this? You, if you don't think that people like Pedro Gonzalez are... are uh... What do you think? I, I just, just out of curiosity, what do you think that a a far right, uh, a, a a far right fascist, arguably pushing into Nazi territory? What do you think their opinions are on, uh, you know, child liberation? What do you think their opinions are about, uh, you know, whether or not a child should be able to say, "Hey, my family, my father is abusing me." I have a feeling that they're gonna side with the father. Kind of like they always have. Kind of like, well, you know, all of history under hyper-conservative rule, under hyper-Christian rule, always favors the parents and the father, even when they're literally abusing children. Yeah, they, they far writers literally believe that parents own their children. These people... People like Matt Walsh, who jumped onto the Bat Balenciaga, we have watched Matt Walsh on this channel. There are clips that Matt Walsh have has gotten mad at from my video talking about Matt Walsh, in which Matt Walsh admits that he believes that the father should have ultimate ownership over his children and that the father should be willing to violate the consent of his children. That is fucking off the rails. That's who's being emboldened by shit like this. No. Instead, you pretend that leftists who are concerned with a far-right moral panic are actually going after you because you had the audacity to... go after pedophilia? Come on. What? To ship host the LGBT community on f***ing Trans Day of Remembrance is so disrespectful, I don't even know what to say. Same vibe as criticizing veterans on Veterans Day. Let me get this straight. Criticizing a fashion brand for pedo-baiting on Trans Day of Remembrance is the same as criticizing veterans on Veterans Day? It's not. That was a dumb comparison. Um, so I'll just leave that one aside. Bro, you don't even need the far right at this point. You're doing their- Ah, now the far right is mentioned, 11 minutes in. Job for them. What the f***? Even if I saw it from their perspective, like even- People bringing up the Trans Day of Remembrance thing are doing so, in my opinion, in good faith. It is very interesting the timing at which Shu on Head decides to promote these things. For example, it's, isn't it curious that Shu on Head does one of these moral panic things every single Pride Month? Isn't it kind of odd? Isn't it weird that Shu on Head chose less than a week after a mass shooting at a gay bar, a hate-motivated mass shooting at a gay bar, to promote a, uh, a, a groomer panic, knowing full well how the right was going to take that? And then, of course, the worst part of all, seeing the far right take it that way and saying nothing, nothing. A shooting she never talked about. Instead, instead of doing a video calling out the literal murder of innocent queer people, which the murder of innocent queer people by someone who was influenced by the groomer panic shit that her fans are promoting all over the place, she does another video promoting groomer panic shit. Anyway, let's continue. And if I removed my brain and replaced it with a little toy monkey with symbols or whatever they have going on up there, even if I saw it from their point of view, if the issue they have with all of this is that I shouldn't be talking about this. Shu, this is like just, this is such, 
This is such a standard response, isn't it? That when some like somebody does something wrong or says something stupid or it gets blown out into the wrong way or whatever, and then like in response to my attempted cancellation, they want to silence me. They don't want me to talk. It's just a very it's just like the it's just like the standard thing that comes out, you know? At a time where gay groomer rhetoric is popular, why aren't they met at Balenciaga for doing an ad like this at the time the gay groomer thing is popular? Even if we were to accept that these two things are equivalent and that, uh, you know, for some reason they should criticize, like they can't criticize you because they have to criticize Balenciaga, the critical difference here is that Balenciaga is a, uh, fa a multi-billion dollar fashion company who already did the press release. The attention was Miss given Galloway. to it by you. The far-right framing was given to it by you. You are someone who can be reached and talked to. In terms of getting angry at stuff online, attacking Balenciaga would be like getting mad at the state of Iran. As opposed to, say, a far-right commenter in the United States who said that the woman who got beaten to death by the moral police officer deserved it because she was a slut. The, the level of proximity dictates the likelihood of actually going at people. And this is a bullshit deflection as well, because you could run this with anything. Oh, why are you getting mad at me for promoting this bill? I'm not the one who wrote it. Why aren't you getting mad at Senator so-and-so? And then, oh, why are you mad at deflection. Senator so-and-so? It was actually the party whip and strategist who came up with the idea of promoting this, this strategy. Why aren't you going after them? You can always pass the buck. At the end of the day, you still made a mistake and you're continuing to make it in this video. This video is worse than what you did on Twitter. True, it's it just, fucking It's is. not a valid deflection. Especially since, again, like, going after Balenciaga in this respect does not, like, protect children in any fashion whatsoever. What? That was one of the points that I was making in my initial video, was, uh, was me bringing up the fact that, um, no children were harmed. Shoe on Head has turned this into a giant protect the children thing, but there were no children harmed in the photo shoot. There's, there's... None of the people involved, none of the children, none of the parents, none of the artists have come forward. There was no children actually harmed. She's not, she's not doing anything. There's no actual, it's literally just a conspiracy. She's just calling out weird vibes. It's fucking off the rails. Why aren't they directing their anger at the brand? Why are they shooting the messenger? The worst part about this is that this tweet came from a YouTuber who I've been friends with for years. Why is this person who I thought was my friend doing this unhinged Stretch Armstrong reach? Goff. I like how in this picture you clip out the friend and oomphy of yours who's been on Tucker Carlson mm -hmm. who was directly linking it to queer people. Call How that is it a shit reach out. when True. he's just pointing out the response of hundreds of thousands of people who jumped on to the tweets that you made? And how is this? Th this this is such a fake weaponization of friendship here. You blocked Zan, not the other way around. You might block me after this. And yeah, Zan has been getting death threats from far right people for days now, um, who have been saying, you know, you're not safe. Don't go. You want to know what's fucking crazy? Here's another little bit. You want to know what's fucking insane? I got death threats because I commented on Zan's video. That's how absurd the, uh, the, 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 the discourse, if we can call it discourse, the screeching and the reeing and the gnashing of teeth, um, that, that's how bad it was. That my comment on Zan's video had people threatening me and calling me a pedophile and saying I was going to get the wall. It's just... That, it's that off the rails. I'll read what he's reading. What's her actual accusation other than ick? Well, that's the interesting thing. In my video, I go over the fact, I, I note, make a note in my video every time she changes the accusation. She doesn't actually have a specific allegation. She switches all over the place. She says, oh, it's, uh, it's icky vibes, it's weird, and then she says it's pedo shit, then she says it's pedophile shit, then she says it's a pedophile conspiracy, then she says it's weird vibes again, then she says it's sussy wussy. She's just all over the place, very weaselly, very manipulative. Go outside at night, you're a pedophile, blah, blah. All he did was point out that a ton of far-right people jumped on this. DM2. Um, 
as a way of promoting the anti-queer conspiracy and that you have enabled that and done nothing to mitigate that whatsoever, which is completely literally this tweet is completely no, She has literally done nothing to, uh, to, to stop it. She hasn't made a single tweet telling people to stop being so fucking crazy. She hasn't made a single statement asking her right-wing psychopath fans to shut the fuck up. She hasn't told people to stop posting literal memes about killing gay people. You can go to this post right now and you can go see, just like we did live, all of the garbage, heinous hate speech that is flooding the comments and she hasn't done fucking shit about it. Based on Vosh for calling this out. Completely correct. To imply I am responsible for the murder of LGBT people. This isn't how you would treat a friend. This isn't criticism. This isn't a joke. This is disgusting. It's it's not a joke. It is criticism. Um, and yeah. Shoot, you don't have to do anything yourself to contribute to the harm of queer people. At all. You you realize that, right? Like but she if, did. if you go if if you go back, um, into the, the, the any pre-genocide period, any point in time in any country, in any culture, with any group of people, before a historical genocide takes place, there are plenty of people who, without directly promoting any of the beliefs or institutions that were involved in the coming genocide, nonetheless enabled it by promoting adjacent ideas. We see this all the time with the centrists, uh, with the enlightened skeptics, with the libertarians, who ostensibly, nominally, don't agree with the ideologies that they bolster, but nonetheless end up doing the same thing. Think of, for example, uh, Bill Barr, right? Um, that's the name, right? Bill, Bill Barr? He's the guy I'm thinking of, right? He's the guy who has the talk show. He did the thing. Yeah. Bill Maher. No, not Bill Burr. Bill Maher. I was in between those two. Bill Maher. Um, Mayor? Is it Mayor? Why would you not type it phonetically? Maher? Mar? It's Mar? Okay, thank you. I don't know why a bunch of people started spamming Mayher. Yeah, Whatever. Mar. Anyway, Bill Mar. Um, yeah, Bill Mar is a great example to bring up here. Vosh is very on point to bring up an example of Bill Mar. Bill Mar is not, you know, a far right guy, according to him and some other people. However, he has talked about um, trans people as a social contagion on his show. Um, he's talked about how uh, Gen Z has so many queer people in it that if you keep by the current rate of growth, eventually all humans are going to be queer or whatever. Uh, he's talking about it like it's a social contagion. Now, Bill Maher may not personally want to do a trans genocide. I don't think that he does. However, he is spreading the social contagion rhetoric, which is exactly what people who want to kill trans people believe. Bill Maher may not personally believe in the trans death camps or whatever, but by promoting the ideology that leads to it, he's nonetheless complicit, and the blood would be on his hands if anything like that were to happen. He may be indignant about that, and you know what? People like that tend to take it to their f grave. People like Bill Maher go their entire lives without ever acknowledging what they've done. Sometimes. Sometimes that this is This happens true. all the time. Nobody wants to take responsibility for the outcomes of their behavior, but the world is built on the outcomes of people's behavior, and a lot of that behavior is not deliberate. The world is entirely built in it. Disgusting. I just don't understand, like, if you had a problem, why didn't you come to me in private? Why did you have to make it into some public sideshow, lit epic dunk, for the world to see? Maybe this is karma, because I- I don't- it, it, You did something publicly, he responded publicly. At least she can't say that about me, because uh, I certainly talked to her about this. I dropped friends over politics before, because honestly, I can't find any other explanation for this. But this wasn't even political. Like, None at all. Like, I couldn't think of an optically worse thing to drop someone over. Like, I know you used to be right-wing. Contribution to a far-right moral panic is actually a pretty legitimate reason to be upset with somebody. Based. Fucking based. I thought DM, uh, I thought Zan DM her and didn't respond. Nazis and their audience with fodder they can use to justify the murder of gay people, but this time the day after. Oh yeah, I know, I know that. Um, I, oh, yeah. I thought this would be evidence that. Oh, thank you, Cozy Rosie. Personally, I can't relate, but not everything related to pedophilia has to do with gay people. Well, shoo.
If only there wasn't an entire half of the political wing of this country that believes that the two are inimicably intertwined. Who all just... <sighs> Did she keep that tweet up? She might have deleted it by now, but I want everyone to fully understand that there is no ambiguity when it comes to the reception the Balenciaga tweet got. Um, it is not... Oh yeah, here it is, from November 20th. 128,000 likes, 11.2 thousand quote tweets. If you go through all this, and I'm not the best one to like scroll through all of it, because I, I'm, I'm friends with progressives, so they're going to show up at the top. There is an overwhelming, like, far-right... In fact, I don't know if I can think of a popular far-right pundit who did not respond to this. Um, overwhelmingly, in, in line with a... Um, with, with, with the, like, it's part of, like, the queer um, pedophilia stuff. Um, I mean, shit, it got retweeted by libs of TikTok. The, uh, oh yeah, thing. I completely forgot about that. This shit did get retweeted by libs of TikTok. Isn't that fucking incredible? Libs of TikTok, the account that is is a literal harassment driver. It is an it ex, libs of TikTok exists for no other reason except to drive hate, it's drive hate and harassment at LGBT people. That is all that Libs of TikTok does. Libs of TikTok was responsible for a wave of fucking violence, uh, of violent threats and bomb threats at a children's hospital. That's what L Libs of TikTok's biggest accomplishment has ever been. And Libs of TikTok jumped on this shit and Shu said nothing. There's Cernovich, Liz Wheeler in the comments. Jackson Hinkle, who's a Nazi. I wish there was a way to um, sort replies to a tweet by likes. I don't know why there isn't. Twitter sucks. Maybe Elon Musk taking over it is a good thing. Because, like, it's so shit anyway. There are actually so many services on Twitter that... Wait, is that true? I don't even remember the exact dates now. Brain Screams says Shu lied about her post being a week later when it was not even 24 hours after the shooting. Wait, is that actually true? Hold on, let me double check that. Let's see. Curious. Let's double check. I can't I can't remember all the dates off my off hand like that. I was being charitable earlier. Let me see here real quick. It was, her tweet came out on the 21st and the shooting was on, oh my God, you're right. It was on the night of the 20th. It was on the, or sorry, the night of the 19th. It was after midnight. So it ticked over to the 20th. It was less than, her tweet was less than 24 hours after the shooting. Holy fucking shit. I was being charitable. It literally the next day. Holy fucking shit. It's amazing they don't exist. Shu needs to stop with the conspiracy posting. Ah yes, the conspiracy. The conspiracy that the fashion industry is f***ed up and weird. The conspiracy that the powerful elites are abusing children. It, Shu, it is conspiracy posting. You can defend it on those grounds. Um, but it is conspiracy posting. Like, the implication of your posts were 100% that this is some kind of, like... Do you notice how she did that there? The conspiracy that the... the she, she, she included both the, the Mott and the Bailey there. How, how curious. It's like a, it's like a pre-crafted thing. Oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say the defensible thing, that the fashion industry is weird, and then I'm gonna, then I'm gonna set up, just retreat immediately. It's fucking pathetic. Fucking pathetic. You know, part God of damn the, it. the I mean, you just said that there. Like, what you're describing is a conspiracy. Like, you can just acknowledge that. It's, it's fine. That conspiracy. The worst part is she pretends to be gay so she can yell homophobe when you call her out. I'm convinced she has no real political opinions and just. What is a Mott and Bailey again? A Mott and Bailey is a, a rhetorical technique. Uh, it is a a 
a fallacious uh, rhetorical technique in which you initially present your argument as a uh, as a uh, as like a like a like a sort of a, like an extreme position, and then you retreat to the uh, more defendable position. So in this case, she puts forward the uh, the easily defensible position. Uh, that she can retreat to easily and then immediately follows it up by saying, oh, there's pedophile, con pedophile conspiracy. And of course, uh, it's not a perfect, uh, 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 you know, it's not a perfect overlap here, but it's obviously, a, it's, it's being set up in the exact same way. The idea is if you say, wait a second, hold on a minute, your conspiracy wasn't about, you, you, you weren't just saying that the fashion industry is weird, you were saying that the fashion industry was full of pedophiles and that this specific photo shoot was a pedophile photo shoot. And she could just go, no, I was saying, I was saying that the fashion industry was weird. Clickbait? Yeah. I mean, there's other names that you can use, but Mott and Bailey fits here. Let's continue. Says slash believes whatever sounds good to her. Isn't, isn't that what an opinion is? Begging people to finally realize she was literally- Well, no, because if you have real political convictions, sometimes those lead you to outcomes Marinara. which aren't like good, to, like don't immediately feel intuitively good. Like, sometimes they might lead you to hard truths that you have to acknowledge. That's, that might be a bit of a self-report there. The idea that- It is a self-report. Hold on, do I have my- Oh no. Oh no, my thing isn't working. Oh, hold on. Yay! There we go. Alright, we fixed it, everybody! Never mind. All right, we got it. We got it. We fixed it. We fixed Religious it. Just right wing. She was a conservative, no matter how many lefties try to say otherwise. There's a term coined by Lindsay Ellis that I think fits Shu. She's a diet Nazi. <laughs> Shu on head is a right wing propagandist. She is likely paid to be. You know, the fake laughter there just really doesn't work. Do you see what I mean about Shu's style being fucking lame? So either directly or indirectly. I fucking hate Shu. She's not a leftist. She's a fascist who wants health care. Yeah, it's a soy Does laugh. Does look like a fascist to you? <laughs> She needs to be kicked Thank you. out of the left like yesterday. She is a fascist. If you are denying it at this point, you are just a simp. She on head is a right-wing paid propagandist infiltrating leftist spaces. She's a calculated and insincere plant, and she needs to be excommunicated. Things like this is just her. She's literally just... I know I'm not supposed to be reacting to the video, and I'm supposed to react to Vosh, but this right here, God, it's so pathetic. This is just critical. There's nothing here that is like... Like, no one's threatening her death. They're saying that they don't think she belongs in the left because they don't trust her. It's just so stupid. We need to boot you from the left. She isn't a leftist. At this point, we just have to not let you exist on the left anymore. Inevitably, she is going to leave the left. Can we point out how dated Shu's content feels? Yes, we motherfucking can. Shu's content feels dated as shit. It's like, it's like React content from 10 years ago and then also aged it with an aging ray. It's just like, I don't even know, like how are people, do people, apparently people still click this shit. Stuck in 2016, I don't know. Like this video feels worse than 2016. I'm trying to think of other stuff that came out in 2016. It's boomer content, yeah. I mean, again, we all know that the right does not have uh, any 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 sense of standards. The, the 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 right will watch Steven Crowder. The Steven Crowder show is physically painful to watch, but right wingers have such bad taste that they literally don't care. They will watch anything that panders to their their uh, personal biases. They're so they're such fragile snowflakes that they will literally sit through a pain a, a actively painful co comedy show just to make sure that they're like uh their biases are being massaged yeah yeah left and it will not be surprising so first of all if i was going to leave the left over left-wing people being mean to me i would have left the left like eight years ago. I know it's hard for these people to understand because their extent of politics is quite literally Discord servers and Reddit communities. You cannot be kicked out of opinions. Like, I can call myself a right-winger right now, but I would be the shittiest right-winger ever. Pro um, I do, I do want to say, though, that um, she is objectively correct on this one point. Um, 
this obsession with whether or not somebody is in or out of the left is infantile, and it betrays people's obsession with social spaces. You cannot be admitted to or removed from a political ideology. No That's one has any control over that. You can consider her- I largely agree with Vosh here. However, I will make one distinction, which is that um, you can be functionally excommunicated from a political movement if enough people don't trust you anymore. Because after all, political movements are social in nature. Human, all movements are social in nature. And if a movement is such that everyone, every individual person that makes up that movement or that is associated with that space basically distrusts you, you can functionally, uh, it can become absurd to consider your, yourself a part of that. Yeah, so I do generally agree that it's it's kind of a stupid metric. So I think Vosh is largely correct here in that it's a stupid thing to worry about, like whether some whether you consider somebody left or right or whatever is not that major of a thing. I think that people will naturally comment comment on it, but it doesn't actually say all that much because People consider themselves all kinds of things. For example, you're going to see in just a second that Shu on Head calls herself a socialist, which is laughable, um, absolutely laughable, uh, uh, if you're trying to be serious about that thing. But because anybody can identify, lab like label themselves as whatever political type they want, I mean, come on, we have people like fucking Jimmy Dore who try to claim that they're left wing that they're lefties, and that's a fucking absurd, but what are you gonna do? They can keep claiming that until the cows come home. It's better to just point out how they're wrong and how they're malicious and how they're bad, as opposed to focusing on their association with the label. This is part of the reason why when people ask me what I consider myself, I, I usually say I, tend, I have a tendency towards anarchist philosophy, but I don't really do labels. And the reason for that is because I think political labels are mostly useless and meaningless. You guys have heard me say that many, many times. I do think there are labels that are more useful than others, but political labels are especially unhelpful. Let's put it that way. All right, let's do this. For what you want, but the idea of like, when is she gonna leave the left? The term leave the left refers to a very specific and cringy kind of like coming out video for conservatives. It doesn't refer to like, the actual process of crossing a line. There is no line, it can't possibly exist. Um, but a lot of people are obsessed with that. This is one of the reasons why my greatest triggers, my fucking, oh, I hate it when people do this. People get mad at me for admitting Shu into the left, which is insane for so many different reasons. One of which being I don't have that power, second of which being I'm the most controversial person on the entirety of the online left, and therefore I have no idea what my, what my- By the way, this is true, just so you know. The idea that Vosh can admit anyone into the left is so patently absurd. Anyone who's followed Vosh's entire career, anybody who's followed Vosh's career at all would know that Vosh is one of the most controversial figures on the left. Uh, it is like, it, it's like a crapshoot. If you drop his name, there's like a 50% chance that you'll get somebody going, wow, I love Vosh's stuff. And then you'll get a 50% chance uh, of of just getting blocked immediately because you uh, supported a uh, reactionary pedophile Nazi apologist horse fucker like it is one of the most one of the most it, it's such an absurd thing to claim that Vosh like uh like a like a loud shoe into the left that is it's silly uh you could say that he allowed Shu into his audience, which is large, but into the greater left, Vosh is like most people left. Oh, there's a lot of lefties who would say that Vosh is not a leftist. It's, it's pretty silly. Some of you will remember a particular debate that I had a long time ago where I, all that I did was say, I understand why you're critical of Vosh, but I don't agree with your criticism. And it resulted in an entire clique of people completely disowning me for saying that. That was my argument. My argument was, I understand why you're critical of Vosh, but I don't agree with you. And I think your criticisms uh, go so far as to be almost laughable. And I got completely disowned by an entire clique of leftists. It was ridiculous. Yeah, anyway, let's continue, I guess.
Let's continue. My word on this would... I, I did, yeah, okay. Um, what they actually seem to mean is, like, they're mad at me for getting along with her? I genuinely don't know what the criticism actually is supposed to mean. Focus on criticizing the ideas, not people's imaginary participation in some kind of, like, walled-off section of online political discourse. Oh, the left thing. Um, there's a lot of cannibalism on the left. I've said this a hundred times, I'll say it a hundred times more. The left, there's a lot of infighting on the left, and that's a good thing. That's natural. Lefties uh, have principles. And part of the reason why lefties have a harder time uniting, quote unquote, not always very true, because we do unite on a lot of things, but at least publicly, is because C criticism and disagreement is normalized among the left because the right is all about religious dogma. They're all about political dogma. They're all about falling in line with the with the leader. That's why they all drop behind Donald Trump. That's why they all became MAGA freaks, even the ones who were, um, even like Ben Shapiro, who initially did not like Trump, and now he does, and now he doesn't. And yeah, the left is not... Uh, <laughs> You know, you want to know what a what a good uh, a good a good little pop culture reference of this is. Uh, there's a scene in a Star Wars movie called Rogue One. You ever seen Rogue One? There's a scene in Rogue One where uh, uh, all the Rebel Alliance is all together and they're all talking in the command in the command chamber, and Mon Mothma is like, "Should we go do this attack on the Empire? Let's have a vote." And all of the rebels are like voting, and some of them are voting against it, and some of them are voting for it. And they're like, "Well, we didn't get we didn't get everybody to agree, so we're not going to do the attack." And then a bunch of the rebels go and do the attack anyway, and they're like, "And I'm like, it's in the name. They're the Rebel Alliance. You, they're rebellious. They don't they don't just follow rules just because they do what they believe in. That's the whole reason why they're the rebels." And that goes the same for the left. The left is a bunch of people who, the, the reason they're the left, the reason they diverge is because they have principles, because they're disagreeing on things. They don't just fall in line because of a belief in pure power. The belief in hierarchical power is characteristic of the right. Yeah. Atheist Mando says, I personally think that Vosh has bought into some Bolshevik ideals on statism and hasn't really been connected to the anarchist title when prescribing his ideals. Uh, I think that's, I don't, hmm. Uh, I don't know, I don't know enough about like which, what that, what that exactly means with regard to buying into Bolshevik ideals. Uh, however, I can understand why people have critiques for Vosh when he uses the term anarchist. Um, but I also think that part of that is just because of a because of a, a, a difference in interest. Vosh is not like a super theory head, which means there's going to be some areas that I think he diverges from other people who share the label. And also, to my knowledge, Vosh doesn't use the anarchist label anymore. I think he uses libertarian socialist. Uh, I, I think, and that and that information is as of last night when I popped in for an interview he was doing with a college student, and he said when asked directly what he identifies with as far as a political label, he said libertarian socialist, which is a different position than anarchism. But again, like I said before, labels, they're meh. Labels are, uh, there's tons of people. You guys remember when that, that fucking liberal considered, uh, that, that fucking liberal, uh, what was their name? Uh, I think their name was Bimbo Politics at the time. That person, remember when that person def uh, uh, identified themselves as an anarchist reformist, which is one of the most ridiculous, uh, this is a total stun lock. Point is, labels aren't that important. Let's continue. Probably on account of the whole, I don't know, socialism thing. The whole being a socialist might get in the way, but more important. You're not a so shoe. You're not a so shoe. You're a social democrat, you liberal. Like, I don't know what about me calling shit like this out makes me not left wing. It genuinely feels like some massive psyop. Like I want workers' rights and for people to have their basic necessities met. I didn't sign up for this weird ass shit. I okay. Remember what I said about there being a difference between one's political beliefs and the outcomes of those political beliefs? I'll give you another example in another historical situation that we're probably not that familiar with so that I can break up the uh, mold a little bit, okay? Uh, Nazi Germany, okay? Now, 
as you all know, um, there are a lot of wealthy capitalist bankers out there who do lots of bad stuff, aren't there? Oh, we lefties sure do know it. It's true. Oh boy, do we hate our wealthy capitalist bankers. Now, if you can imagine such a thing, I think it might actually be a little bit irresponsible if one was a popular, publicly powerful leftist in, say, 1933 Germany to put long screeds out there on how the German people are being exploited by the wealthy elite and bankers, how the German worker is being exploited by the, um, by the, uh, the, the robber baron, the plutocrat, and then immediately put your hands in the air and go, whoop, uh, I'm not looking at the comments, uh, I'm not responsible for anything anyone says, goodbye. And then when, I don't know, Jews go up to you and they're like, hey, Shu, um, what the f And you, you look at them and you're like, what, I can't, what, you have a problem with me calling out big banks, you know? Yeah, this is a really good point on, this is a really good point by Vosh here. Um, this is the reason why, by the way, uh, hold on, do we have, do we still have the command? Did it work? Oh no, the command doesn't work. We used to have a, um, a command here, uh, for those who don't know, it is against the rules in our chat to ironically use the echoes. Um, and part of the, like, you know, the, the little echo posting, and part of the reason why that's the case is because I don't want even ironic, I don't even want people to have the opportunity to misunderstand people making ironic jokes. It's another reason why I actively avoid saying things like they, and why I'm very careful with my words when I'm talking about specific incidents. I don't just talk about elites. I don't make signals to globalists. I don't make, uh, I don't say they or anything like that because I don't even want there to be a chance that people uh, take my words and use them, uh, uh, use them to support hateful ideologies. You, as a public, as a public political figure, you have to be careful about this shit. It is imperative that you do, otherwise your platform will be misused. Now, obviously, it would be ridiculous to hold people to a never ending standard where their words could be twisted or misinterpreted or whatever. But I think it's important when there are, are things like um, a rise in anti Semitism, a rise in anti LGBTQ sentiment, that you are incredibly careful with your word choice. Yeah. You have to be clear about it. They're called parentheses. Yeah, but uh, the, the, the echo posting. Yeah, they're called parentheses. Yeah, the, the, obviously, but th thank you. But yeah, they're called parentheses, but people call it echo posting when you put the three parentheses like that um, because it's a dog whistle. Yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, even though... Uh, uh, oh, here's a great example of this. Did you know that a whole bunch of not anti-Semitic uh, anarchists at one point rallied against globalism? And when they were saying globalism, now anarchists uh, anarchists no longer do this. Very few anarchists use the term globalism specifically because of what I'm talking about right now. But at one point, some time ago, in fact, one of the biggest uh, modern anarchist uprisings in the United States um, was specifically a protest against globalization. And what they were talking about was the fact that basically mega corporations like Amazon, mega corporations like PepsiCo, mega corporations like Nestle, were take were deliberately impoverishing uh, 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 communities in order to basically take advantage of the ability to move jobs overseas to, to countries where there are no labor laws so they could go to China and they could um, get extremely cheap labor and with that comes a an, an intentional impoverishment of the labor market in the country that they originated from. And there was a big push by anarchists to push against this, and they stopped. Anarchists as a whole have stopped using that term specifically because the right turned it into a dog whistle. Yep. You bring about. And I have to hold you to those standards because we all do. We already hold it. Amish invest inventor says, is critiquing Vosh an instant ban in YouTube chat? No. No. Not even close. Did, did you miss the earlier part 
where we talked about the fact that I have had like numerous public disagreements with Vosh. Anyway, whatever. Let's continue. Each other to these standards. We already do that. I mean, I can bring this back to the most simple possible example to explain how psychotic this would be, okay? Imagine that um, imagine that you uh, have a roommate and a friend. They're the same person. You're friends with... Shut the fuck up, Nuts. Nuts says this chat is very cringe about Vosh. You're safe here. Shut the fuck up, you bitch. With the roommate. And you enter the kitchen while they're cooking. And, uh, you know, they're, they're making like something, they're pulling something out of the oven and you, uh, you walk in and you say, oh, hi friend. But, uh, because you turn the corner too sharply, right. As they're getting up with the thing they got out of the oven, you. Brutus Magnuson. Have you heard of Jess and Zena? They're your type of people. Yeah. Um, Jess and Zena, I've had a few minor disagreements with Jess and Zena, but overall, I think their content is, uh, is, is really good. Thank you. You end up hitting them in the shoulder, causing them to drop. Um, I don't know, uh, boiling hot, like, lasagna. Uh, yeah, lasagna. Um, they shatter the glass, it hits their foot, 400 degree lasagna gets everywhere, broken glass all over their foot, uh, third degree burns, uh, dinner is ruined, everything is f okay? Now, obviously, you gotta go to the hospital for this, that's very, that's gonna hurt, you know? And they're in the hospital, um, you know, and, and you follow along, whatever, and they're, they're there, you know, their foot's got bandages, and they're like, um, Oh, okay, okay, now I remember what he's saying about this. Okay, okay, okay. I was a little confused for a second because I forgot what was going on with the lasagna. Okay, Don't you okay, have okay. something you want to say? And you're like, what? And they're like, you, you hit me. You hit my shoulder. You made this happen. And you're like, I waved my arm to say hi to you. I didn't mean to knock the lasagna. And they're like, okay, I know you didn't mean to, but like... And you're like, what did I do? You have a problem? With me waving hi to you? Should I not wave hi at you in the future? Like, what, what, do you have an issue with that? Should I stop doing that? That what, is that what you want from me? Do you think I'm making a joke? That's exactly what's happening here. With no yeah. exaggeration. This is literally a one-to-one -one comparison. Yeah. I mean, there's no lasagnas, but yeah, this is basically what's going on. Yep. There's actually no difference. The, the only distinction here is that uh, the behavior she was engaging in is abstracted because it's so much bigger. It, it's, 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 it's more widespread, it's harder to immediately quantify, but it is the exact same logic. Now, interpersonally, you would think the person, that, that guy who, who hit your shoulder, you would think they're kind of a psycho, the way they're like reframing your upsetness with the consequences of their behavior as like an attack on them. That's like really psychotic behavior, interpersonally. Here, I guess it's just standard politics, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to call it out. I'm just so tired of like trying to prove to these people that I'm left wing. I'm just tired of being like, no, you don't understand. I voted for Bernie in 2016 and in 2020. I believe this and I believe that. I'm tired. I'm too old for this shit. I am exhausted. Do you think there might be something you're doing that constantly sows doubt to this effect? True. See, that's what I was talking about. Vosh touches on exactly what I was talking about before. You can't. You can't truly be kicked out of the left. There's no way to actually do that. However, you can piss off enough people that literally no one else in that movement will associate with you, which is where Shu is at right now. Yep. Sunny Joe with the incredibly generous $10. Merry Itmas to you. Thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. I mean, like, Leaving aside the enabling of the far-right moral panic and the constantly, constantly fraternizing with far-right people, that photo with Blake Masters framing his, like, insane policy um, as, as like, single-income-pilled oh, yeah. or whatever, I... Eh. These people just want me to be some, like, progressive little shit lib, rising from the ashes of, like, the anti-SJW world. They want me on my hands and knees groveling and apologizing for making, like, stupid level one baby edgy jokes about attack helicopters. No. That's not what's happening here. They're not mad at you for making you attack this helicopter one? jokes in 2015. They're mad at you because- You mean that picture? This is, the, this is the photoshopped version. Her original one was just this picture with them at the convention. And then she tweeted, 
based and single income pilled. Just so you know, Blake Masters is a fucking right wing psychopath. He's a guy who literally believes that like when he, when she says based and one income pilled, what he says is that women belong in the kitchen. And Shu is like, yeah, based. Literally just projecting her fucking fetishes all over the entire world. As a month ago, less than a month ago, a, a existing far-right moral panic that everyone knows exists, including you, that poses a real threat to the lives of millions of people, was emboldened and empowered by something that you accidentally did. I don't think Shu posted the Balenciaga shit with the intention of enabling the far-right. Personally, I think that's a ridiculous accusation. I don't believe that at all. I think Shu did something that if given the opportunity, I would have done the same, and she just took no accountability after the fact, no matter how it went, you know? Um, it's not like I don't- Yeah, like zero accountability. In fact, all that she has done to this moment, still, days after Vosh did this, this reaction, has done has taken no responsibility and keep in mind when she did this shit with pride she issued a very very weak apology which she has since deleted so shu knows shu's been called on this before these exact arguments have been articulated to shu and shu has responded to them indicating not only has she seen them and understood them, but but uh, but but in you know internalized them enough to make a a, a weak ass apology, and then later sneakily delete the apology. Strange. Don't say that ultra wealthy people are pedophiles. I do. I say that. I don't disagree with her on that. I do think the Balenciaga shit is weird. The initial behavior on her part, the posting the Balenciaga stuff, I don't think that's wrong. It led to a, a bad outcome, yes, but the initial action, the initial intent, the, the drive to do that, I don't think those things are wrong, and I'm not criticizing her for it. I'm criticizing her for everything that has happened since then, not helicopter jokes. I mean, she can't make that criticism of me because I obviously don't have an issue with edgy helicopter jokes. It's also funny, I... I, a person who is going to appear in this video in just a few minutes, never criticized her for edgy jokes. Never. I didn't criticize her for fucking edgy jokes. No, none of her major critics criticized her for edgy jokes. They criticized her for blatant fear-mongering, for blatant, uh, blatantly igniting moral panics, and for ignoring the fact that her community is a festering fucking pustule of far-right insanity. I vomit slurs when given the chance. Five years ago. They want me saying we need to destigmatize pedophilia or want me sipping for the- Chu, I would really appreciate it if you would not frame the left's position on you as wanting you to destigmatize pedophilia. It'd be very cool if that was not the characterization of the left that you made, i.e., further emboldening the far right perspective on like framing. Who said that? I'll tell you. I'll tell you who said that. This was an argument between Shu and Hunter Avalone. Uh, a little, a little. Now, this is going to be interesting. Actually, you know what? We'll just let Vosh talk about it. I'm not going to... I'll comment after. A while ago. I don't remember all the details, but the basic gist is this, okay? So I'm going to skip past all of the, the wheedling and all the explanation. I'm just going to say this very factually, okay? If you want to protect kids, you want pedos to go to therapy. Simple as. If you disagree with that, it's because you are either pro-pedophilia or yourselves a pedophile. We all Correct. know that actual pedophiles, like those lolly shits on Twitter, love calling other people pedos because, you know, if the finger's pointed away from you, it's not pointed at you. If you want to stop children from being harmed, you want pedos to go to therapy. Some people... Yes, and in fact, every... Again, I laid out all this shit on my other stream, so if you want to see all the actual factual, all the citations, you want to see all the details where you can go read more, you got to watch my other shoe stream, the, the reaction, which is called... Uh, shoe on head fans won't watch this video. Uh, you should go watch that one because I lay it all out. Uh, a world in which people who have 
uh, pedophilic attractions go to a therapist and get help so that they do not hurt people, so that they can live a life that doesn't involve them victimizing other people, that is a world in which less children are hurt. That is just a fact. Every single organization agrees with what Vosh is saying here. It is, and not only that, it's extremely simple to understand why that's the case. But see, conservatives will tell you the opposite, and the reason for that is because their ideology is all locked up into all kinds of other things. Therapists, the right doesn't need therapists. You should be praying to God. You shouldn't be getting help from worldly sources. And not every right-winger, by the way, is a Christian, but a lot of them pull their politics from Christian theology, from Christian politics, and a lot of them are are perfectly fine to stand alongside Christians and believe in the same ultimate uh, beliefs that a Christian does. People have said, and I think there is some truth to this, that the hyper-punitive uh, hyper attitude that people have online where they're screaming, kill all pedophiles, kill all pedophiles, kill all pedophiles. Well, you know, again, uh, it's inspired by good intentions might lead to an attitude where it discourages pedos from going to therapy and therefore increases the number of children harmed. I don't Correct. know how much data there is on this specifically, but I do think whatever outcomes leads to uh, pedophiles going to therapy is the best one. Uh, you know, like whatever leads to that outcome is the one that harms the least children objectively. I'm not arguing on this. That is a fact. If you disagree, it's because you want to rape children or want to watch other people rape children. Could be either, you know? Um, Fucking... This right here is probably the most based part of the entire video. Probably. Because this is just a fact. And this is the actual, this type of advocacy is the type of advocacy that is factually proven to improve the situation in the world. Because we, what if you act, again, if you actually care about children not being harmed, you should support whatever saves them from harm. So, Hunter made the points that I just made. I don't know if he made them in the same way. I don't know how eloquently he made them. I don't know if he framed them in between a bunch of insults against Shu. I assume he did because he really doesn't like Shu. I think that is what Shu is referring to here. It might have been other things in line with that. I have, I want to be clear here, seen in my entire life very, very few instances of people on the left actually enabling pedophilia. I know that plenty of far-right websites like 8chan are literal dens of child pornography, or at least were. I know that a lot of far-right people uh, in politics seem to have weird associations with uh, pedophiles or with pedophile-adjacent politics. I know they seem to be rather keen on pedophilia uh, in a lot of weird ways. I know that overwhelmingly the lollycon accounts on Twitter are far-right, uh, I, I, every time I see this crop up in any systemic fashion, you know, uh, it seems to be right adjacent. I also know that the right is currently embroiled in a campaign to prevent child sex education uh, from being uh, offered in any schools across the country, which would dramatically increase children's vulnerability to... Uh, additionally, uh, uh, conservatives are um, unquestioningly devoted to the, uh, what would you call, the hegemonic power of the father and of the church a.k.a. the two biggest threats to children. The two biggest threats to children are by far the home and the church. The school runs third, still prominent. If you want to mitigate these factors, you need to promote uh, Me Too kind of stuff, like uh, believe the, uh, uh, you know, believe victims kind of stuff. You know, investigate, take it seriously. Um, you want child sex education so that victims of abuse know what's happening to them, know that it's abuse, understand how to describe that abuse when they talk to authority figures. Uh, you know, stuff like... Once again, all of the seven hells bless you, Vosh, for this. This right here is so fucking based. It's so fucking based. It's literally like... Oh, oh, it, yes. As Witch Knight Melody says, proper sex ed for all ages protects children from predators. So I'm gonna talk about this for just a second to build off of what Vosh is saying here. Uh, one of the reasons why uh, uh, children are so vulnerable um, is not just because they're physically not strong, it's because they often don't know what's happening to them until it's too late. 
um, children don't know that they're being victimized always. They might feel bad about it, but they don't know what's happening. They don't have the words often. So part of the reason why comprehensive sex education for kids is so valuable is because it gives children the literal language building blocks that they need to describe if something bad has happened to them. Um, if if you don't know how to explain something that happened to you, you might not even know that it was anything wrong. You might, in fact, you the person who victimized you might tell you that you're wrong for feeling bad. And if you're a kid, you may not have a way to argue back with that. You may not have a way to contradict that, even if you feel terrible. So it's incredibly important that children understand things. Matter of factly, uh, uh, this is like, Giving children the tools and the language to do this protects them because not only can they avoid getting into the situation in the first place, but if it does happen to them, they can immediately speak about it. They can immediately talk to people about it so that no one else is victimized. Yeah, exactly. You can't always you can't always prevent all harm before it happens. But what you can do is you can make sure that people can respond to it, that kids have a way to defend themselves, that kids have a way to ask for help. Hilljoy says, one of the issues I constantly have with libs, libs and the right is that they assume that children are unable to achieve complex thought, and that is part of the problem. It is it is there are a lot of people in our society who genuinely believe that children are basically objects and not just small people who are growing. Um, and uh, that's a fucked up way, but, but unfortunately, it's unfortunately common in our society. Uh, I, I, Curie, I, 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 Curie, I, Curie says, in 1984, the book, didn't the party remove words from the language so people didn't have the words to talk or even think about their oppression? Yes, that was the re that was the purpose of Newspeak. The purpose of Newspeak was to simplify language down such that you wouldn't have complex language to describe your uh, the things that are happening to you, so that it's actually impossible uh, or was or it was incredibly difficult for the people in that society to even talk about issues because they simply did not have a vocabulary to express themselves properly. Ikiri. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. We got to keep going. Let's keep let's keep yeah. going. Uh, gender imbalances also contribute significantly to predation because a lot of the ways in which young boys and girls are preyed upon align with gender stereotypes. The idea that uh, boys are always want sex or that girls exist to provide sex, which are fairly common, like, I, I guess, like, root uh, mythologies about gendered behavior. Like, they're like, they're like er stereotypes, if you know what I mean. These are things that the right basically promote. Um, and it's not a coincidence, by the way, that anytime you see a news story where it's like banging 27 year old teacher has sex with 12 year old male student 18 times in one week or whatever, because the news media never calls that rape, um, that there are a bunch of guys in their mid 30s with uh, receding hairlines and sunglasses in their cars for their, for their, you know, uh, Twitter avatars going like, dude, where was she when I was young? You know, those people did not vote for Bernie. Die. Now, am I saying that there's a direct connection between conservatism and pedophilia? Yes, I am saying that. So, Shu, cut this shit out. The CIA. You want to know the most shocking, uh, the most shocking pedophilia conspiracy in the history of the fucking world? You got to look at at the Catholic Church, and you got to look at the uh, the Southern Baptist Church. Those those are the closest examples of of mass conspiracies, and the reason why they exist is because priests are put in a position of trust. They are put in a position where it is considered sacrosanct to question their actions. It is because they support a worldview by which children do not know what is happening to them and have no, uh, have nothing to compare their experience to. You think the Catholic Church is a super progressive organization? You think the Southern Baptist Church and the Methodists are a super progressive organization? They're not. They're definitively conservative. They are staunchly conservative.
Hey, or whatever the f these people are up to nowadays. And it's like, no, not gonna happen. Sorry. What's so funny is a lot of these content creators do agree with me, but they won't say so in public. Like they DM me and they're like, oh, you're so right. Instead of just doing it publicly because they fear their own audiences. It's literally so sad. It's like an abusive relationship. This does happen and it has happened to me from other people, but she's wrong on this really one. Really sorry to so hear that, I hope Cass. that she's wrong when she says this. I hope she's over-exaggerating. But I just want to go back to the more important, less personal aspect of this whole thing, and that is the connection between Echo and LGBT. So of course there are- Okay. Okay, let's see where it goes. A lot of people no. on the right wing who are comparing the two. They have been doing this since the 1950s. The pedo smear has been thrown at gay people for decades. There's always been people on the right who will compare all the things I talk about, like the map. Self-loathing egomaniac says, Shoes Tradcath boyfriend showed up in Vosh's chat to say that drag was grooming during Pride Month. I literally just responded and said, bro, you're a Catholic. Yeah, isn't it fucking ironic? They believe, on a, list, literally, cat, trad cath, uh, right wing freaks, they look the other way when the church does it because deep down inside, they don't care. They simultaneously, they do the same exact thing that Holocaust deniers do. Unironically, they do the exact same mental gymnastics. It didn't happen, but if it did happen, it's not a big deal. That's the literal mentality that these people follow apps and stuff to gay people like but it's very clear from my content if you've watched my content which i really don't think a lot of these people who are mad at me have done it's very clear from my content that i've always he just responded by saying no one excuses it which is bullshit the church itself has engaged in decades of cover-up they don't they cover it up because they say we'll take care of it internally but then they don't take care of it internally that is why i said it's the closest thing to a a a a, 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 a evil conspiracy that you're going to find on the entire planet. It's because there's a structure designed to ensure that everything stays inside. But when people, uh, when, when, when serial abusers are in positions of high power, they protect each other. Isn't the Jehovah's Witnesses org fucking taking billions of dollars in damages to keep their priests undercover? Oh yeah, don't even get me started on Jehovah's Witnesses. Holy fuck. Don't even get me started. There's a literal documentary about that shit. He's pushed back on this. But what is new to me is now liberals coming out and saying I can't talk about this stuff and that talking about it is somehow inherently anti-gay. Which when you think about it is really, really bad. She okay, so she goes right back into the far right framing here. Okay. So we have we have 20 seconds of, hey, I've always pushed back on the idea that queer people are pedophiles, but also liberals can't even talk about pedophilia because of all the gay people. Okay. Shu has never been a leftist. She's a right wing reactionary trad wife who has an unhealthy obsession with making false equivalences between LGBTQ people and pedophiles. So first of all, let's be very clear here. I have been doing the opposite of this my entire career. This has been one of my focuses on this channel for years. And do you know what one of the core messages of a lot of those videos were? They are now trying to squeeze themselves into the LGBT community. And do not be mistaken, the LGBT community ain't having that shit. You cannot sit with the LGBT community. You can't sit with us! And for the people who go, must slippery- Oh, right. My lovely imps, the time has come for me to admit a time that I missed. This right here in my original video, I misunderstood what she was saying and I misrepresented what Shu said. However, the parts after that were not incorrect. Uh, at this point, Shu is trying to make the argument that, uh, that there are pedophiles trying to sneak their way into the LGBT movement and that Shu uh, was, she was claiming that LGBT people were not having it. I misunderstood what she was saying. However, if you watch her more recent com content, this is where it gets super, super interesting. If you watch her more recent content on this, she will say, well, the, uh, the, the pedos are trying to get in with the LGBTQ, but people like, there are these people, these, these, these queer people, she does this to me in this video, who are trying to help them and cover for them. They're being useful idiots. And her last like three uh, times commenting on this has been that argument and not the argument she's making in this old one. That said, I still think that her framing and her approach is not um, accurate or helpful. Um, the idea that like pedophiles are trying to infiltrate the LGBTQ movement 
is there's there's no, there has never been any acceptance for that ever. There has never been any acceptance um, among any major chunk of the LGBTQ movement. The idea that this is like a a thing that's happening and they're having success is not true. And uh, I just wanted to make sure that I corrected myself from my previous video. Uh, what she does now though, and you can actually, again, of course, you're gonna see it in this literal video that we're reviewing right now. But uh, what she does now is she'll say things like, oh, this person is protecting them. They're trying to get in and the good gays are pushing them out, but there's these people who happen to disagree with me on something that I'm gonna label as protecting them. It's a very manipulative and, and uh, sneaky, approach, but I wanted to just make sure that I owned up to my mistake because I did make a mistake. Uh, I, I did misunderstand what she was saying in my initial video. So there you go. Let's continue. Slope, you're fueling the delusions that they did actually successfully break their way into the community. They're so I want to be clear here, and a lot of people in chat don't seem to get this, but when I opened this video by saying that she was legitimately progressive, I meant it, and this is not being my opinion on this is not changing. She has always been consistent in this position. Um, again, but it's not about what you believe, is it? It's about the outcomes of your behavior. And everyone who criticizes her on other grounds, you're missing the point. You're still missing the point, guys. This is why I am where I am, and this is why all of you are 24-7 sucking my cock and donating to me. Thank you. The whole point of this criticism is that it's not about her positions. It's about her reflexive inability to take responsibility for the outcomes of what she does, her constant palling around with the far right and apparent unwillingness to hardcore go after them outside of like vague denunciations. Uh, Christopher in chat asks, is Shu a Nazbol? Well, in this video, she describes herself as a socialist and she is a openly avowed nationalist. She's very, very l loud nationalist. So... And the fact that she will always spend most of her energy targeting the people who are critiquing her the most, which means that because the right knows that she's a phenomenal... Yes, yeah, as Spyro Gal says, she records the entire video in front of an American flag. What do we call a national socialist? Hmm. ...on board for them in a lot of instances. Um, she will always be arguing with the left, criticizing the left, um, uh, uh, framing the left's attacks against her as some kind of attempt to silence her free speech or, or some, some puritanical, you know, tender queer, woke scold effort to crack down on her and fit her in a box or whatever, you know. The insane expectation that uh, she not contribute to a far-right moral panic. But these aren't about her positions. They're about her behaviors. This is one of the reasons why you guys need to be careful when you make these criticisms. It's not just about me and my irritation. It's that there are a lot of shoe fans out there whose positions here are reinforced by your inaccurate criticisms. When I understand what Vosh is getting at here, but let me just say something real quick about shoe fans. Um, I have been dealing with shoe fans, an endless deluge of shoe fans for the last uh, fucking two weeks, three weeks, dealing with this shit. And uh, the vast majority of shoe, of shoe fans do not give a flying fuck. They are literally oinking and eating garbage from the trough. Now there have been I believe three or four people who said that they were shoe fans that came and watched my video and said that they were very, uh, that they were moved and and uh, they were convinced by my case. Four or five out of hundreds of comments from shoe fans, some of which literally said, I will not watch this video, you, you, you know, and then insert crime here. And I will say, by the way, uh, high progressive, high progressive says based four or five shoe fans. I explicitly took time to thank those fans because I genuinely think that they deserve if they've regardless of what brought you to this point, if they're willing to introspect, I want to make sure that they got seen for that. So every shoe fan that I saw who admitted that they were a shoe fan and also admitted that they watched my video, I interacted with them and I said, thank you for doing that. 
um, because I genuinely think that's a good thing. Unfortunately, the vast majority of the shoe fans I've been engaging with are totally, totally uh, lost in the sauce. Let's put it that way. Antifa, Antifa uh, Pyro, that's great to hear. And thanks for being here. Seriously, I mean it. That is 100% genuine. Uh, I was obviously being very, uh, v being very provocative with the title. Um, and those of you who were proving my title wrong are based. Yeah. You might have noticed that about a third of this video by runtime is people making attacks on her positions rather than her behavior. There's a reason she chose those comments. It's because those are the ones that she not only thinks look the worst when framed in the video, those are the ones that are wrong. And her audience knows they're wrong. And because of that, when her audience sees this behavior, uh, they think that it is all just hysteria, that it's attacking her positions, which she has receipts to defend herself against. But I'm attacking her behavior, and I suggest you all do the same. You're latching on a movement. That I, I do think that Vosh has a point here. I think he has a he has a point with the fact that like um because because you can never know what's in somebody's head. So you're always fighting an uphill battle when you're trying to prove what what what's where you're trying to make an argument that claims what someone's beliefs are. In fact, uh when Vosh talked about his conversation with um Count Dankula. That's who it was, Count Dankula. When Vosh self-critiqued his, his segment with Count Dankula, that was one of the mistakes he made, uh, that he claimed he made, which was that he was basically trying to argue what was inside of Count Dankula's head, which is an, it, it's an, it's an impossible thing. You can never know. You can make a compelling case, but it can't be the core argument because, obviously, you don't know what's in someone's head. Isn't Count Dankula a Nazi or at least very far right? Well, I w my interpretation of that is that he is, and I could make an argument for that, but it would be very hard for me to prove what's in his head. You just kind of have to say, this is my opinion. You might not be in your heart of hearts a Nazi, but the things that you do are having that outcome. You see how that's a better argument than trying to spend all the time proving that somebody is actually a Nazi? Yeah, so it's one of those things. Mother Mirror set. Merry Impmas, everybody. Gonna be missing the stream, so here's a dono for you, Demon Mama. Remember to love each other. Trans rights and trans thriving. Indeed, Merry Impmas and trans rights and trans thriving. Thank you very much. Hopefully you'll be able to catch the VOD. Let's continue. That is currently, finally, seeing acceptance, which makes them snakes. There's a literally nothing more dangerous about Plain Jane Doe says, I watch Shoes videos, but I don't think I would qualify as a fan of any streamer, really. Just kind of casually passing through. Valid. Valid. Thanks for being here. Any other sexual attraction when you think about it. You hear that, guys? There is no difference between an adult consensually having sex with another adult and an adult having sex with a child. Amazing! We learned Clipped. so much on this channel. But right now, since gays and transgender people have already- Holy f Is that MOS Yi? Holy shit! Oh my god, what a blast from the past. Also, notice, I don't know if Vosh- I can't remember if Vosh brings this up. But I'm gonna bring it up now, and if he does, then whatever. Um, but uh, but Amos Yi was a right winger, like an avowed right winger. He hung around with and was defended by right wingers. And Shu just doesn't even mention that Amos Yi was the one pushing the pedophilia shit. She just doesn't even mention. She just is like, yeah, Amos Yi. This is uh, this was um, Carl Benjamin's best friend. Gotten much of their rights all throughout the world. I think it's time for to have their turn. Oh, oh, shut up! Shut up! This right here is what triggers my timbers. Isn't he in jail now? Yes. Gay consenting adults can do whatever they want with other gay consenting adults. A pedophile's sexuality, children aren't a gender, so it's not a sexuality, but like, I, like I've said before, cannot go through with their sick fetish without harming anybody. Speaking as a gay man, I believe we should include the P. To do otherwise is to betray the principles that give us our rights. For the last f***ing time. You can't sit with us! My main point in a lot of those videos was, you can't sit with us. Nearly a decade of content. That is true. Though I will point out, Shu, as long as we're being particular about this, that... And hey, I've watched a lot of your videos. Not all of them. Um, 
No, I actually think Vosh is correct in this portion. Uh, there are some there are there's some ways that I would structure the argument differently, but I think that Vosh is generally correct here in saying that uh, it's not useful or rhetorically effective to try and prove what's in someone's head. If you're going to build a case against somebody, you should do it based on the outcomes of their actions. You should do it based on more tangible and provable things. But a lot of them. And um, I do think you could put a lot more effort into putting forward more systemic solutions to child sexual abuse than just attacking whichever group of people online is trying to promote pedophilia that day. Because that's where you're going to find the big schism with the right. The right likes to talk about pedophiles the same way that murderers in prison do. You ever wonder why uh, child abusers get put in separate wards in prison? Because they get beaten up or killed in the main ward. Do you know why? Because if you're in prison, a lot of these scum, and there are a lot of scum in prison, a lot of f***ed up people, okay? They're not all f***ing people who smoked one joint. There are a lot of f***ed up people in there who have murdered, uh, who have f***ed, but they think, you know, at least there's one group of people I'm not as bad as. And that's child abusers. Oh, and don't get me wrong. And, and Vosh is correct on this point as well about the fact that the reason why, the reason why conservatives uh, obsess over uh, pedophiles and Satanists and things like that is because they serve as a, a big bad. They serve as a bad that's so bad that no one would, no one would disagree with them. You know what I mean? Uh, it's it, He's 100% right on this point. A lot of the people in prison, not for child abuse, still did child abuse. But hey, at least there's one group they can feel greater than, you know, like one bar they haven't crossed down to. It promotes a sense of moral superiority. Now, you might notice that the promotion of that moral superiority doesn't do anything to protect children. It's purely a mechanism used by horrible people to think, oh, well, I can't be that bad. At least there's someone below me. The far right, they love this shit. They love talking about pedophilia because uh, it serves as a nice, like, uh, uh, morally intuitive palette along which they can paint any moral panic they want. It's very easy. It's very intuitive. Um, but does the right ever concern itself with any behavior that would actually lower the amount of child sexual abuse? No. Quite the opposite. In fact, often they take every possible step to systemically worsen it. These are the people who don't believe victims of sexual abuse. These are the people uh, who um, uh, uh, who let like who don't mind police letting kids build up and never actually get tested. Uh, these are people who uh, don't mind like the the patriarchy at the home, the idea that the father reigns supreme, or uh, you know the the supremacy of the church. Authoritarian ideologies are just naturally more inclined to pedophilia because pedophilia as a behavior is authoritarian, obviously because it's an adult and a child. That is a very, very, very one-sided power imbalance. Um, if, if, you are, if, if you actually want to help children, you got to layer this shit in. And you know, Shu, if you want to see who actually cares about pedophilia, talk about Me Too. Talk about child sex education alongside you talking about Twitter pedos. You know who's going to be mad at you for that? It's going to be the conservatives. Yes, it will. Yes, it fucking will. Vosh is so fucking on point with this particular with this particular moment. He's so fucking right. If you, you guys know how fucking snowflakey the right is, they would freak the fuck out if Shu ever. Did. I mean, why do you think that Shu's entire video here c just s conspicuously, even when fucking Amos Yi is on the screen, uh, that she conspicuously avoids even mentioning the far right? The, the, the manipulation is unbelievable because if she criticized the right, they'd lose their fucking minds and they would immediately call her a pedophile defender. Vosh is so on point here. They're all up with you on the virtue signal, but the moment you get down there and actually propose any policy solutions, you're going to start seeing people accuse you of being woke or of being with them. I'm not saying that you're refraining from doing this up to this point for the most part. I know she's mentioned some stuff from time to time systemically, but not like a full paradigm. Actually, Novocaine, that's a really good idea. I should, I'm going to put it on my idea list right now, actually.
I think it would be a good idea to go over the Jehovah's Witness crap. But I'm, I'm not saying you're refraining from doing so as evidence of like a malicious unwillingness to alienate your right-wing audience. This is more sociology-oriented, like, you know, systemic analysis stuff. And I understand that that doesn't, you know, that's not the same kind of content as like, look at these crazy pedos on Twitter. I get that it's different, but I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying if this is a priority for you, of me going, this is really bad. The LGBT community isn't defending this. Only for a and yeah, we to crossed one k likes. Fuck yeah. Go stop right there, Hitler. Shu never seems to go. I'm often saying this. After right wing shit, I wonder why that is. Okay, I only make maybe like what five videos a year. It shouldn't be that hard to go onto my page and scroll and just see this video, which is about exactly that. Like it's right there. You don't even have to scroll. It's just they do. By the way. Um, female predators and their horny simps, I actually think is a good video, and I would encourage you guys to wa watch it. Of course, it's not as good as my videos. Nothing is. But, um, it is entirely about the phenomena of, like, like, you know, 28-year-old female teacher student, uh, horny guys in comments freak out. You know, like, yeah, no, I think that was a good video. It's right there. Like, I made my prostasia video about a year ago. Remember my prostasia video where I exposed some child protection organization? What if I posted that video today? Would I be bombarded with these same people and called a Nazi and a reactionary and whatever? Because the only people that were doing that last year was the organization itself. The pedo organization was calling me alt-right for exposing them. That it's worth noting again that she is framing the left's behavior as taking issue with her accusing wealthy corporate people of being pedophiles. Shoo, leftists love calling wealthy, glamour, bourgeois, designer brand affiliated, uh, 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 you know, uh, leaders, pedophiles. They love that shit. That's not the issue here. You know that. You, all of the comments that you've shown in this video have been people accusing you of being right wing or enabling the right wing. Not for that, but for what happened after, which you are very weird to not address, you know, to not point out. I don't know anything about the Prostasia shit. I, I don't know anything about I covered the Prostasia thing. I have a video about the Prostasia thing in which my takeaway, after doing an incredible amount of research, we did a whole drama mama on it, in fact, where I did all my research and got all my receipts in a row and uh my takeaway was that it is definitely an imperfect organization but that shuan head's claims were not correct and that shuan head jumped the gun that uh shuan head did not have the evidence necessary to make the allegations that she made and that she probably hurt the chances of that organization actually improving because she jumped the gun and engaged in such bad faith if you go and watch my video you will see us go through every single allegation that Shu made and also investigate the organization itself. Um, I don't think the organization is good. I didn't come away with the uh, takeaway that the organization was like a great organization. In fact, I think it has some pretty, uh, some pretty uh, reasonable, uh, or, or, or there are some very reasonable critiques that are brought against Prostasia. Um, however, uh, uh, Shu on head alleged that they were running like a pedophile chat with no evidence whatsoever. And in fact, when you look any deeper, that's actually just just blatantly false. So yeah, if you really, if you wanna know what that whole situation is, go look up the drama mama about prostasia. Um, because, and of course, at the time, Shu was doing the exact same thing that she does now, which is framing everyone who disagrees with her as a, uh, as a pedophile defender or whatever. Um, when in truth, the reason she got mad at Prostasia and the reason she went so hard against Prostasia, this is, this is where it gets really scummy. She wasn't just wrong, she was lying. Uh, she had a personal, she had a personal beef with one of the members of Prostasia. And of course, Prostasia is an organization with numerous members. And one of the people, a guy, I think his name is Noah Berlatsky, um, Shu has like a long history of beefing with this guy, like, m like just going back and forth. And I don't like the guy at all. This was not me defending that guy at all. Uh, but it's very clear that Shu on head went after his organization or the organization he is partially involved with because of her personal beef with him and not because of any factual evidence.
Yeah. So that's a, that was a lot to explain it, but there you go. I figured I would tap in and help Vosh here. Oh. The drama there. Then why didn't they with Balenciaga? You mean Balenciaga, the organization with no tweet? Uncle Gumball says, Dima Mama needs to keep going until midnight. I don't know if I can make it till midnight. However, I do have a lot more content to react to after this. After this, we got to react to the JK Rowling shit. We still have to go through the JK Rowling stuff. We haven't even gotten to that yet. Yeah, which you all are gonna, you all gotta stick around for that because that shit's crazy. It's that deleted everything off Instagram. What were they supposed to do? What do you mean? Again, like I said, this is a bullshit whataboutism where, oh, I may have done a bad thing, but what about oh, this shit, other awesome institution that did a bad thing? Shu was the person who uh, kicked off the, the Twitter, you know, uh, uh, the, the, the far right Twitter moral panic shit. She was the person in a position to address and denounce it in that Twitter nasty. thread. Uh, this video has been framed very dishonestly. Nothing about, oh, well, why didn't Shu... August D asks, does anyone know wh why or where Shu came up with the Shu on head moniker? It's a, uh, it's a old 4chan reference. Um, on 4chan, there used to be a meme uh, that uh, it's, oh God, it's so hard to explain. Basically, the idea was that when new people came to the website, uh, there was like a fake, it was a, pr a fake hazing ritual uh, where they would say, all right, in order to verify, you need to post a picture with a shoe on your head and the date, the date and time and your, and your, uh, your post number. And obviously only a fool would do that. So when people did it, they would make fun of you. It, it's very, very stupid. And that's where it comes from. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's if you were a girl. Sorry. Yeah. I forgot about that part. If you're a girl, take a picture with a shoe on your head. To prove it. It's fucking stupid. Yeah, no problem. It's an ancient meme, but yeah, that's where it came from. Protest by sending a letter to Balenciaga after Shu had already made it a far-right moral panic. No, this doesn't mean anything, okay? It's just a way of deflecting. Don't deflect. That's you! That's you right now. It's a pattern from Shu that she had for years. Even though she didn't say gay groomer out loud, it can be seen as a dog whistle. Shu may not have said anything about LGBTQ plus people out loud, but we can hear the dog whistle from miles away. Shu knows exactly what she's doing. 31 year old knows exactly what she's doing. That's the thing. I, I don't know, Doe, Do, I know there's a whole thing here. I gotta, I gotta, I, I can't dip my toe in a pool. I gotta jump into a pool. I gotta know. Not mention gay and trans people. Doe moment. Let's continue. We know that she is thinking it, and so does her audience. It's called a dog whistle. She hides behind technically not saying anything explicit. Stop falling for her dog whistling tactic. Just because she didn't say gay doesn't mean that it's not what she's implying. The sheer amount of people who still don't know that Shoe on Head is a dog whistle. Her name is a dog whistle. It always was. It's so funny to me that you can literally breathe and these people will find a way to make it a dog whistle, but a child could be holding a teddy bear in bondage gear in a fashion ad, and they call you a crazy conspiracy theorist for pointing it out. And they love to do this gaslighting shit, right? Here's- here they're calling you a crazy conspiracy theorist, not for not for you pointing out the fact that that photo exists, but because of what you implied was going on. Not just implied, what you claimed repeatedly was going. Oh my god, I can't do this. I can't do this. I have to let Vosh do it. Oh Here's my god. Here's another uh, point that I think is interesting. You know, she's cobbled together a couple dozen screenshots of lefties saying stuff she finds disagreeable. Some of which I find disagreeable, but some of which I think are on point. Um, but I notice in terms of delusional behavior online in response to her tweets, we are not seeing a compilation of the literal thousands of high profile far right accounts that immediately made a link to this and the groomer drag queen queer thing. I mean, if we're talking about, you know, anything outside of Shu's personal experiences, you know, like the world outside of her and her life and her head and, you know, what's actually going on out here that affects people, you know, things that matter. Um, we might note that uh, delusional behavior is a product of those tweets. It's on high, but it's not all coming from the left. In fact, I would say that a tiny fraction of it is. But that's... Hilljoy says, I mean, you did explain that Shu on Head is a 4chan meme, so it is kind of about as dog whistly as the milk shit and the okay hand shit. No, uh, I don't 100% agree with that. The reason being is that the Shu on Head thing 
the the shoe the shoe on head meme came from the period of 4chan before 4chan had completely been uh turned into an alt like an alt right hellhole. Uh, in the old days, actually, in the earliest days of 4chan, 4chan used to actually basically just be like South Park tier irreverent. They they were really there was a lot of like gross and fucked up humor, and there were a lot of fucked up people. But it was it was much more politically neutral. There were both uh, righties and lefties on there, and it was it was valued for its chaos. In fact. Uh, in early 4chan, there was actually a lot of trans people on 4chan because trans people couldn't really post anywhere else on the internet without getting uh, weird Christians jumping down their throat. And so they would go to the hellhole of 4chan because you could be trans there and you would be still treated poorly, but not as poorly. Um, then when 4chan added the slash poll board, the politically incorrect board, um, shit started to get really bad because it became a, a focal point for Nazis. And that was when the, like the right wing surge came in after that, the, the like, okay hands and the milk thing that was all after the rise of, after the right had basically completely taken over 4chan, but 4chan wasn't always like that. Yeah. Uh, you guys know poll. It's just one forum board on 4chan. Yes, that's true. Um, but but it's complicated. So 4chan is a forum with many different uh, boards on it. And uh, not all of the boards went bad at the same time. However, uh, poll got so out of hand. It was It's called slash poll because that's the name of the board. It stands for politically incorrect. I did I just say that? I might have just said that. I apologize if I repeated myself. Um, but uh, that board got way out of hand. And as a result, because it became so toxic, people stopped going to the site entirely, slowly and surely. And so the other board slowly got taken over by right-wingers until basically all of 4chan was far right. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I think I just... Yeah, containment. It was... <laughs> People in chat are bringing up the fact that it was originally a containment board. Anyway, yeah. There were so many containment boards that just didn't work. Uh, let's continue though. Let's let's not get too far off on this. It's, we're, we're, we're delusional, you know, because some people think shoe on head is a dog whistle, which it's not, it's a reference to an ancient 4chan meme, but that's not a dog whistle. Um, Leanne Scott says, I'm learning so much, Demon Mama. Well. You know, I, I haven't said this as frequently, but one of my goals has always been every stream, I want to make sure that everyone who tunes into my stream, one, learns something new every day, and two, laughs at least once. <laughs> hopefully more than that. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully more than that. But what about the people with power? What about the people who matter? What about the politicians? What are they saying? Are politicians saying shoe on head is a dog whistle? Probably not. Are politicians saying uh, this is just one more component of how they want to subvert and corrupt our children? Yeah. I mean, Alex Jones brought it up with, with Kanye West, you know? I mean, this got, this, this got blown out to the highest possible, just short of Biden coming out and addressing it. I don't know a higher level of, 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 of social engagement. They yeah, try to make you feel crazy really for far. thinking something like most normal people would think is weird is weird. Literal soup brain. Leather isn't innately related to BDSM. What's wrong with a child seeing BDSM gear? The child does not know it's sexual. What harm comes from this? Who gives a shit, dude? It's a kid holding a teddy bear. How traumatizing. People love to misunderstand fashion. It's so tiring. <laughs> it's not pedophilia. It's fashion, mom. Look it up. It's God, the fake laughter. Oh, God. On this listen. It's really getting to me. I've heard this video like fucking nine times now because of me reviewing, watching my own video, making sure I didn't get things wrong, watching Vosh, watching it now. That fucking fake laughter is driving me fucking nuts. Putting a leather harness on a dog, BDSM too. This child is not being mutilated. It is- Hey, there's me! Just holding a bear that happens to oh. have a leather strap on it. Petco.com! Oh no! They're selling pedophile wear! I'm sorry, you can't fool a degenerate. That is a BDSM harness. Maybe Shoe on Head sees a piece of leather next to a child and starts getting a little, you know, riled up. Maybe it's a little bit of projection on Shoe on Head. Why are- it's very strange that DM's video is being intercut here. The rest of this had everything censored, like every tweet shown. Zan's tweet, everything. I don't know why... 
why the clip chimping is happening from here. That seems very strange. On Ed's part. Oh, you think this looks weird? Well, you must be a pedophile yourself. Wow. Okay, just just to be perfectly clear, okay? I think those Balenciaga photos were sussy. However, no, it's not pedophilic to have a kid pose in a photo and they're holding a bear that has a leather harness. You do no good to children at all. You do literally nothing to help anyone with this, like, ridiculous, fear-based, like, moral panic version of looking for... It is sussy, but there is a line between, like, sussy and pedophilia. Go back and watch a Cartoon Network show from the 90s, and you're going to find some episodes that are a little sussy. That's not the same as them being promotions of pedophilia. That's, that's the point of sussy. The term sussy, it means suspicious, like... And it's kind of weird. I wonder, you know, eh, you know, that's not the same. It's you that keep that in mind. If we run down this road where it's like anything that's sussy, like it's like the f Overton window, anything that's sussy instantly becomes the furthest promotion of, um, of the ideology that you think it's sussy with, then Shu, you would be a Nazi. You've spent this whole video arguing that contributing to a far right moral panic doesn't make you far right. So trust me, you're, you're, this whole video is you saying, listen, su it's, sussy doesn't mean I'm far right. So you can't then go like, okay, well, because Demon Mama is pointing out that it's, it's sussy, but not pedophilia. That means that Demon Mama is implicitly enabling pedophilia. Uh thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Fucking thank you. Um, which she's absolutely not, at least not in those clips. Maybe the rest of the video from which this was cut was her seek hiling and promoting ped pedophilia, but I, I don't, yeah, that's, that would be in the other clips. Got him. This shit went viral on like normie Twitter and Facebook and TikTok. There were like. What? Zoomer girls on TikTok like, oh my God, this shit crazy. For real, for real, this shit not bussin'. And you're over here pretending it's perfectly fine and not weird and only Nazis and pedophiles would have a problem with this. Okay. See, the nuance in this is being destroyed. Is it okay? So, notice how the aforementioned TikTok girl... It's not just nuance, it's that it's that Shu has to destroy all context. Shu doesn't just have to destroy the nuance, Shu also has to destroy context. That's why she she drops my video in out of nowhere, uh, uh, as if that's representative of the entire argument I was making. When in truth, I made a incredibly detailed uh, response to her video that addresses the, the factual claims that she got wrong. Literal clip chimping. Was saying that it was sussy. I don't, I don't know whether Demon Mama said sussy. I think Demon Mama is just pointing out that like, it's not like a giant branded stamp saying this is the pedophilia. It, it, again, the part that I was even reacting to was pointing out that that she is reacting only to her vibes about the about the photo, not that that not that she's actually trying to protect the child. That she blurred the image, the face of a child, a child that was not harmed. There was no child abuse in any of these photos at all. Like outside of, like I said before, outside of the general problems with uh with child labor, which yes. Having a child model for something is a form of child labor. It's just in America, a socially acceptable form of child labor. Um, although I will point out the fact that there's an incredible amount of laws uh, restricting using children in movies and films and television and whatever. But yeah. She literally clipped out the thing you immediately said after, which was, boy, wouldn't it be bad if people accused her of shit without evidence? Yeah. Yeah, anyway, let's continue. And I, I really want it to be noted here that no child's life has ever been improved. Oh, sorry, sorry. I, I just said we were going to watch, but Brutus Magnuson says, Dark Forces, the boomer shooter has reached Demon Mama. The boomer shooter has been with Demon Mama for a very long time. I just... I don't do as many video game streamers streams as other people. In fact, I recommended Dark Forces to Vosh because he's been on a boomer shooter kick and he didn't know about it. Dark Forces is like one of the most underappreciated boomer shooters. It's a fucking poggers game. Fucking great game. All right, now we're going to continue. There we go. No child has ever been protected from sexual abuse with hyper fastidious scrutinization of this stuff. 
and like leading moral panics against it. I think generally the best way to handle stuff like Balenciaga is to like all like literally I think the most moral thing that you can do with the Balenciaga situation is for the entire world to do this at Balenciaga. No far right moral panic, no like insane this means that the QAnon hey, is real Master, good actually. To see you. I I this is what I want. I think this is literally like the morally correct way to handle it. I like just cuz that's what sussy means. Yeah, you go Hey, Balenciaga. And if you, if you want to, like, force them to make a corporate apology or whatever, f*** it, do it. I love corporate apologies, you know? Uh, however, a far-right moral panic happened. It's, it's still happening. Uh, and, and, and ignoring that and pretending that this is just some, like, lefties defending Balenciaga shit is, is highly irresponsible. Just reject the evidence of your eyes and ears. Balenciaga better be paying you people good. Ah, uh, that line is so ironic. Reject the evidence of your eyes and ears, as Shoe on Head has literally blatantly lied. There's there's a point in this video where Shoe on Head shows a picture and lies about the picture that is on the screen. There's actually at least two separate moments in this video where Shoe ha says something directly contradictory to the evidence that's on the screen. The the irony of this fucking bitch. Because the, the papers of the C see that's the shit that I mean, Shu. The papers of the CP case were more than sussy. This is a bit dishonest regard. No, no, no. I'm talking about the kids with the um the teddy bears. The CP or the 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 CP court document on the desk was mega sussy or super sus in my opinion. I think that goes from sus to super sus. Um, uh, it, it, that's where it goes. I think so. You know. Obviously, this is an area where Vosh and I disagree slightly. He thinks it's more suspicious than I do. I do not think it's suspicious. I think that there needs to be evidence uh, before anything like that is claimed. I understand why people would think that's weird, but to me, it is not. there is not enough evidence to say that it's anything other than a coincidence, especially because there are six other pieces of paper or so, five or six other pieces of paper that are visible, and nobody cared because they didn't say anything sus it's just it's it, it just doesn't work out for me but it's okay we can disagree on this yes a sus squared if you if you will it's very strange sus plus i like okay, that that's one. fair thanks for clarifying okay gotcha yeah sus squared yeah if they're not that's even more pathetic they should at least throw you like one of those three thousand dollar high-heeled crocs or whatever the f like the brand itself even admitted it was weird yet you're over here Run in defense for them for free. Even more annoying than the guests. I really think that Demon Mama is just more concerned with the way people are taking it to like an insane. Like what Demon Mama is trying to do there is not defend Balenciaga. Demon Mama doesn't care about Balenciaga. What Demon True, I explicitly said in my original video about this, I went on an entire tear about how I don't give a fucking shit about Balenciaga and how I actually fucking hate most luxury brands, but that I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not going to fucking like excuse lies because uh, it's a corporation that's being lied about because it's a corporation that's being used to launch a massive conspiracy. Like that's just intellectually lazy. Yeah. And I appreciate that he got my position correct here. Demon Mama cares about is us reaching like a satanic panic level of paranoia in this country from the far right, mm. where anytime they don't like Bless you, any Vosh. institution or group of people, they can immediately find something pedophilic adjacent about them by way of making literally everything pedophilic. Like the way the far right will take a look at a drag show and go like, Look at this. There are children in the audience. And you look at the video and it's a person wearing twice as much clothing as I or Shu am right now. Just like He's so he's he's so on point with this. Thank you. Oh my god. It's so oh my god. It feels like it's like a it's like a sanity pill. I feel like hearing this again and 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 sitting here with you all knowing and hearing this together is like, it's like the most like, oh my god, thank god. I feel like I've been existing in the crazy zone for fucking a month. It, he's right. That is what I care about. I do care about the fact that uh, that conservatives are whipping this country into a position where anything that that conservatives feel weird about, which is everything, conservatives. Do you guys? I grew up Christian. Christian. 
in my, oh my God, in my church, th they would freak out about the, the office being morally reprehensible. The, the fucking office. At, at my church, people would take offense to the office. I'm not kidding you. You guys, do you know how hell cult pop culture was during the satanic panic? With like psychotic Christians uh, who happen to work for a news organization acting as though fucking D&D &D books are literally mind raping your children. Yes, I'm very concerned with us getting to a point where basically everybody in America behaves like a fucking Puritan and we're constantly doing uh, witch hunts. And this is that is he, he's just nailed my position perfectly, which I deeply appreciate, which I fucking deeply appreciate doing a little dance than leaving like literally literally 50 times more clothed than what yeah, lil, lil, lil lil lily says i'm an ex fundy too i'm all too familiar with that particular brand of craziness yep fought fought night says yeah in my church we were told that mtv was satanic thank you puerto rican v v uh v musician MTG literally fear-mongered about vibrators being sold in stores. Wait, did you guys, you guys know that, right? You guys know that in some states, it's still technically illegal to sell vibrators? That that in, in certain states in the United States, vibrators have to be sold as personal therapeutic massagers and they have to be sold in a pharmacy. They can't, there's no like, like you're not allowed to sell them. Like that's actually still the case in certain places in America, no joke. I'm not kidding you. That is actually true. This lady is saying Walmart is grooming. Ch yeah, here we go. Look at this. Walmart, many of your customers in my district are reaching out to me about sex toys being sold in your Dalton store. They're extremely upset and absolutely horrified that sex toys are being sold openly right next to children's toothbrushes. This is grooming. No, it fucking isn't. No, it fucking isn't. A, a, a item sex existing is not grooming children. It is not like by this logic, you are grooming your children by having sex with your wife in the same house that your children also exist in. That is literally the logic on display. It is so... So again, all of this is to point out the fact that yes, Vosh is spot on with my position, which is that we are seeing puritanical moral panics all over the place. And that is what I am concerned with. I am concerned with us being serious when allegations of sexual abuse are, are, are thrown forward. Yeah. Anyway, let's continue. You can see at the beach. And the problem is if you cede that ground to them, if you cede that- Gayfesh says, I wasn't allowed to watch Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles because they allow they followed an Eastern philosophy. Yeah, that's the type of shit Christians get up to. Once they get to a level of cultural dominance, they literally do that shit. That ground of hyper paranoia, you're still enabling the far right moral panic. And again, none of this has anything to do with protecting children. Oh, okay, 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 okay. No, okay, well, I'll tell this story later. Because Let's continue. it's not. The far right is using this as a way of continuing their attack on queer people. Um, and uh, for a lot of people, this is just like a speculative, like like an interesting, wacky thing that's happening. Um, you know, there's obviously a lot of like normy intrigue and how, how, how goofy this all is. Um, yeah. But it's not about protecting children. And I don't think there's anything wrong with Demon Mama pointing out that we're, we're like reaching pretty ludicrous levels of paranoia, you know? Yes, we are. Thank you. Thank you. Like, like I'm trying. I'm trying to think of like. Okay, I'm. I'm just gonna share this little story because I've read up on it recently because of what I've been playing video game wise. Doom. Okay. Now the original Doom came out. Hey, I brought up Doom. This 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 particular example, I think that Vosh is extremely extremely on point. I I want you all to pay close attention to this portion. I think in 1993, uh, the original Doom was like basically the first modern first person shooter. Um, it was revolutionary for its time, and in my opinion, still a very good game. Now, 
Keep in mind that throughout the 1980s, we were experiencing a level of satanic panic where there was legitimately, this is not a joke, this was not like a made-up thing in media, people aren't exaggerating when they say this, suburban white moms who felt that if you played hair metal rock and roll backwards on like cassette or records, that you would get messages from Satan or that like heavy metal bands would encode satanic messaging into the song if played backwards. Okay, this is gonna be a deep cut. Some of my long-term fans will remember the time. Uh, actually, it's only gonna be my mods. My mods will remember the time long, long ago uh, I did a mod event where we watched a a a, a uh, abridged version of a Christian film called "They Sold Their Souls for Rock and Roll." I watched the entire series "They Sold Their Souls for Rock and Roll" when I was a kid. It was showed to us at church. It is one of the most deranged and hilarious things that you can possibly imagine, and there are copies available available of it still online. Now. Oh my God, oh my God, it's so ridiculous. They, they, unironically, they believe that rock and roll was invented by a, a, by a black musician, which it was invented by a black musician, but they believe it was invented by a black musician who literally went to a crossroads in the middle of nowhere and sold his soul to the devil to invent a new type of music. I'm not kidding you, that is their, that was what we were literally taught. And it actually, uh, there was a, 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 a portion of this series that was, um, they sold their souls for rock and roll, that was talking about Halloween. Um, and it got to the point that for a couple of years of my life, we were not allowed to celebrate Halloween anymore because they believed that it was unironically true that every Halloween, virgins, virgin Christians were kidnapped and sacrificed. I am not making up a single tiny bit of that. That is, that, that is my literal lived life experience. And many members of the church that I went to also participated in this. The, they sold their souls for rock and roll literally meant that most of the church would not allow their kids to listen to modern rock music. And another part of that series, uh, the, 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 another part of that series, that same person who did that was massive moral panic about Halloween that led to me just not getting to celebrate Halloween with my friends for years. The crossroads are blues lore. Yeah, I know. It's like it's meant to be tongue in cheek. It's meant to be like a a, a myth or a legend. Um, but they believe that it was actually they believe that it was literally true. It's actually demented. So I just wanted to give a little bit more like more recent. This was in the 2000s. OK, this was not even during the satanic panic. This was in the 2000s. OK, I just wanted to give some some solid backup to what Vosh is saying here because he's really on point. This led to discourse in Congress. Yep. No, that's not a joke. The satanic panic. Was psychotic. And you're right. Hey, President Sunday, welcome. Thanks for being here. And Merry Impmas. Merry Impmas, Mr. President. Iron Maiden released a song called Number of the Beast. Now imagine a shoe on head back then, okay? You can't deny it's sussy, right? Like, you know those satanic types are all into pedophilia. Then Iron Maiden releases a song called Number of the Beast. Like Balenciaga. They're doing a wink, wink, nudge, nudge at the audience. Now, I think there is a critical difference here. The critical difference being that even if you were unironically worshipping Satan, I think that's fine, I guess, if you want. Um, whereas if Balenciaga is unironically promoting pedophilia, that is... Bearbash Johnson, good to see you, and congratulations. You now have a creator tag. Enjoy your nice new colored name, Bearbash Johnson. It's good to see you. Absolutely not. Okay. Um, but in terms of the paranoia, it motivates the same kind of behavior. See, when Doom came out, this was around the time that people in Congress were talking about passing laws to ban violence in video games, right? 
what was his name? Jack Thompson. They were talking like about Mortal Kombat was too violent because what was his name? Sub Zero had a finisher where you'd rip your head out and the spine would dangle. Um, and meanwhile, and Doom comes out, and Doom is a game which you think Metroplex. Christian conservatives would like it because it's literally about killing demons in hell, you know. But Bosch just said you would think Christians would like it because it's about killing demons in hell. Fun fact. Actually, I am not kidding you. There was a sermon that I attended in which my pastor uh, d explained why it's actually bad. And the reason is because uh, Doom was, was unchristian because it taught children that you can defeat demons by physical means. When that is not true, you can only defeat demons, according to Christians, with the power of God. I'm not kidding you. Once again, I know that sounds crazy. I am not making that up. I am not even, I, I am not creative enough to come up with that on the spot. That is a literal sermon that I sat through. It's funny that Vosh brings that up, but that is the actual line. You can go look that up. If you went and looked at, uh, I, I, I bet, I would be willing to bet that if you went and looked up Christian sermons about, uh, about games like Doom, right now on YouTube, you would be able to find another pastor making that exact same argue. I'm not kidding you is a big mamaism. Well, to be fair, I joke a lot. So sometimes I have to go, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And then I'll be right back. Enjoy. For some reason they didn't. They thought this was deeply satanic. Now, there is a very strong cultural uh, association in the American Christian far right between Satanism, pedophilia, homosexuality, and transgenderism. A promotion of any of these things is seen as an adjacent position to the rest of them. This is a really, really common pattern when it comes to how these moral panics develop. That's why when Balenciaga is accused with like pedophilia shit, immediately the far right jumps in to tie it to Satanism and queer people, gay and trans people. Um, that association is politically advantageous to them because it's really easy to motivate these zealous far-right religious groups if you're connecting things they don't like already to Satan. And a lot of them already think that being trans means that you've been infested by a demon. There are a lot of religious fundamentalists out there. Um, the, look, the point that I'm getting at here is that what Demon Mama was doing there, what it's important that we all do, is not bite the f uh, is not bite the f bullet. Don't give in. Do not let the far right elevate you to a level of paranoia where you are always willing to take the worst interpretation, the least charitable interpretation of everything that happens. Don't let don't let like every bit of media you come across instantly signal in your mind a threat of some kind of grand conspiracy because look the real shit that f***s over the world isn't a conspiracy the accumulation of capital in the hands of a smaller and smaller group of people that's not a conspiracy that's not a bug that's a feature okay the political system's corruption lobbying this isn't you don't have to be an expert to figure this out you know do conspiracies happen yes should we pursue like understanding them to the best of our abilities yes but not off of like, oh, sure, the far right's doing a moral panic, but like, you know, somebody's got to hold Balenciaga to account. Nothing is going to happen here, okay? And so many more people's lives could be saved with more responsible behavior. And frankly, a lot of people are going to get hurt if you're in I'm a back. mind state where you see Doom, I'm back. where you see a Iron Maiden album, and your first thought is like, oh, well, you know, maybe it's not that, but like, whew, that's pretty bad, isn't it, huh? Well, I hmm. did, of course I watched my somebody else is like, dude, I think, I think Number of the Beast is just a song. I think they were just being edgy. And you're like, wow, you're defending Iron Maiden? Whoa, whoa, cool, wait, great, so you're fine with Satanism? It's just a very reflexive and reactionary, like, tendency. Yep. Again, I want to indicate that I'm not comparing uh, the accusations of satanic worship to accusations of pedophilia in terms of the severity of those behaviors if they actually did take place, only in the mentality that people have. Because keep in mind, to a religious conservative, worshiping Satan and raping children actually is about on the same level. And they sure act like it. So... Uh, this is a really, this whole section is a really, 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 really good part, is an extremely good section for Vosh. Uh, when he talks about the fact that, like, they equate, um, pedophilia, murder, 
Satanism, it's true. It's all a big, vague evil. Um, it's all, uh, and it's weird too, because as we mentioned earlier, secular, secular, quote unquote, right-wingers also get on board with this stuff. Um, they will adopt a lot of the talking points that the Christians popularize, even if they sometimes drop some of the religious trappings, the arguments are the same. There is some evil force out there that's so heinous and evil, that's sacrificing children, that's, uh, uh, you know, I mean, think about, think about how QAnon gra grabbed onto that adrenochrome thing, you know? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's wild. Um, and yeah, they equate it all because to them, it's all about creating a evil force that they can fight against, an evil force that justifies picking up arms and fighting. And um, the reason why they're never specific is because, well, if you're specific, then that means people will ask questions as to what they're fighting about. But if you're fighting against the ultimate satanic evil, a satanic child murdering, child raping, blah, 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 well, nobody needs to ask any questions because it's unquestionably evil, right? And yes, the far right did in fact make an effort to call Balenciaga satanic. Uh, they did so with like a Taylor Swift blood-coated image uh, done for a promotional bit. Um, they did it. I remember seeing, um, a, yeah, a woman did it with whether or not Balenciaga means Baal is king. Oh my, yes. This was, this was retweeted by Jordan Peterson's daughter. Oh my God. I hope, oh, does he, I can't I remember if he shows Jordan this. I think this was Jordan Peterson's daughter who said this. <laughs> Wait, I couldn't remember if he actually brought it up. Okay. So yes, I am a pre-watcher on this video, but I didn't know he, I didn't know he brought it up that quickly. I couldn't remember him. I can't remember every detail about this. Luxury brand Balenciaga has been the focus of outraging conspiracy theories. Please show um, the tweet. Please show the tweet. Uh, the, the Please show the tweet. Yeah. Please show the tweet. Some connect the dots to Balenciaga to Baal, an ancient Canaanite god of, or Canaanite god of fertility. A widely viewed Instagram post made an attempt to be the Republican candidate to represent Tennessee's 5th Congressional District. Claimed the following. Do Google Translate from Latin to English. I did it myself. The depths of evil surrounding the Balenciaga story just get deeper and darker at every turn. Starbuck, that's his real name, wrote on Instagram. B. Careful. Here it is. Hold on, I grabbed it. I grabbed it for enhancement purposes. Look at this. This is so fucking amazing. Michaela Peterson isn't, is this a coincidence or is this insane? So she has it set Latin to English, but you'll notice, you'll notice that Google automatically translated from Sepeti, which is uh, Sepeti is a language that is spoken in a northeastern province of South Africa. It is spoken by about 4.7 million people in the world total, most of which is South Africa. So she put it in Latin to English, Bail Enciaga. And then it auto trans because it didn't recognize any of this as Latin because none of this is Latin. If you learned Latin, I took three years of Latin in high school. I remember quite a lot of Latin. None of this is Latin. This is translated, automatically translated from Sepeti. But no one, no one in her following that was mass retweeting this thing noticed that. So hilariously stupid. But I'm not, but... I, I wish, oh God, I wish I was exaggerating. There's, this is, again, I, I once again appreciate that Vosh was able to correctly analyze my position. This right here is the reason why I'm opposed to mass conspiracy theory and, um, and, and rampant moral panics. All of this puritanism, it leads people to be actually insane. It leads them to be incredibly stupid. Just, oh my God. Let's continue. You change nothing with this Balenciaga shit. The only actual outcome you can have in the world is enabling an ideology that does lead to the harm of more children. Slating has to be the whataboutism. I see whataboutism all the time when I make content. When I talk about police brutality, what about violence against police officers? When I talk about men being cringe, what about women being cringe? When I talk about women being cringe, what about men being cringe? You can always
it's so I I know that this is a really minor point, but it's still hilarious to me that she accused me of a whataboutism and then did a whataboutism about whataboutisms. Always tell when someone doesn't really have a point or they are low key defending the thing you're talking about. Lucas B20 says, what is a bail? Bail is a, uh, uh, bail is a, a, uh, Babylonian, I believe, maybe Akkadian, a Mesopotamian. That's a better word to use. Uh, bail is a Mesopotamian god of fart fertility, of farts. No, of fertility, fertility. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. My fucking brain. It is a, uh, it is a, a fucking god of fertility. Uh, and Christians are obsessed with Baal because in the Old Testament, uh, th there are Baal worshipers who are represented as bad. Obviously, that makes sense because Baal worshipers would not have been accepted by, by the people, by the Jewish people, by the Hebrew people in the Old Testament. But and so they, it's, it's, it's brain worms. It's Christian brain worms. If you translate Baal and Siaga without an additional A, instead of Baal and Siaga, Google returns play the ball. Incredible. Fucking incredible. But yeah. Yeah, Baal was at the time considered a rival god to uh, Yahweh. I know some people will be mad that I say Yahweh. I apologize if I offend you. Let's continue. About when they do this, what about, what about, what about, what about shit? And every time you want to talk about weirdo shit involving children, there's like 12 mother that crawl out of a rock like notice how they never talk about child beauty contests all this political theater from you yet not one mention of banning child here's her beauty pageants all this outrage but nothing about child beauty pageants hmm oh yeah you're talking about this bad thing what about this other bad thing in this case i don't actually think this is what aboutism shu has been pretty vocal about being like an anti-pedophile youtuber great thing to be by the way nice job with that um but the ways in which you conduct your behavior in that line do matter, especially if it's something you have like a recurring engagement with. And again, uh, Shu has called out, uh, at the very least, if not the child beauty pageants, behavior adjacent to it. I think the underlying question from these people are, why the f*** is it that you keep finding ways to pursue your anti-pedophilia, um, like, conspiracism that embolden the far right? Or maybe not keep finding, but in this instance, certainly are. It's more like, how have you, you have to carve a jigsaw puzzle piece to fit it in like this. Like, how do you attack a multi-billion dollar corporation with a conspiracy that ultra-wealthy people are pedophiles in a way that somehow manages to fully fit within a far-right conspiracy that is ongoing and currently one of the main focuses of the entire political, this isn't niche, you know? Like, like the, it's literally the entire f***ing foundation of current political discourse is trans drag queen groomer discourse pedophile whatever degeneracy the, the whole thing the day after the shooting at the club done by a guy motivated by the ideology of the people who would then go on to like and retweet your post how can you not know It's this wasn't exactly out of left field. Again, I don't think posting it initially was inherently bad, but like this, the, the Twitter thing on its own. I might have watched this video and taken an entirely different side of things. I didn't know if this video was going to be more like apologetic or I don't even care about apologies. I don't want apologies. What I want is like, hey, followers of mine. Hey, OK, so some lefties were mad at me. Do you want to see how like 80 billion Nazis want you dead because you're bisexual. Um, hey, does everyone want to see how like my totally innocent post about like wealthy pedophiles ended True, up getting joy. turned into a far right moral panic? Do you want to see? But that's not what this video is about. That's what the, that's what the world is about. That's what's happening in the world. But this video is about Shu's specific grievances, which for some reason happen to be with powerless people online who are upset with her for enabling Nazis and not with the Nazis herself or themselves. Yeah, interesting. I don't think she was a Nazi. <laughs> Beauty pageants. Hmm. Oh yeah, you're talking about this bad thing. What about this other bad thing? What is it? The all lives matter. A f 
Ilya, multiple things can be bad at once, but it's not 2005. We're not middle-aged mothers from the South. Nobody is out here defending child beauty pageants. This is so weird because Shu has talked about- True, but there's also nobody out there attacking them, at least not from the right. That's the point that that person was making. It's, there aren't people out there actively defending. I mean, I'm sure there are some, but that's not like an active media thing. It's more that the right, for some reason, is only interested in accusing, like, events or institutions of being pedophilic if they're queer. Um, like, entirely. Like, that is literally the only time it comes up. The only time they accuse teachers of being groomers is when uh, they have blue hair. Literally. Like, guys, how that works, there are huh? tens, hundreds of thousands of teachers in America and a lot of students. A lot of students, children, are preyed on by teachers. Does the right have a moral panic every time a straight adult teacher has a relationship? Remember, remember Republican Representative Jim Jordan? Remember when Republican Representative Jim Jordan literally covered up a, uh, a pedophilia scandal in the school that he was involved in? Remember that? You guys remember that? Oh, wouldn't that be, wouldn't it be a shame if I had all these endless articles about Representative Jim Jordan, Republican from Congress, extremely popular Republican uh, politician who uh, covered up the Ohio State wrestling, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, uh, a sexual abuse and pedophilia scandal at, uh, at Ohio State. Literal, literal grooming. Yeah, remember Matt Gates? Remember Matt Gates, who is extremely credibly accused of uh, sex trafficking minors? Remember Donald Trump, who was literally in literally in the little black book of Shoe on Head's favorite Jeffrey Epstein? Yeah, he's fucking, you know. Oh, though, yeah. Let's not even start about Roy Moore. Ship with a student? No, they don't pay any mind to that. They don't care. This doesn't get brought up in the media circuit. They get angry when libs of TikTok posts a video of a 30-year-old blue-haired kindergarten teacher who says that she thinks- Oh yeah, remember the conservatives with Josh Duggar? Children should be able to express themselves in class. Literally. That's the issue here. It's not about what they defend, it's what they're curiously quiet about and what they attack about kink and BDSM in her videos before. She's a hypocrite. I could be wearing a full BDSM harness right now. I could be wearing a full gimp suit, but it would not matter because my content is not made for children. I am an adult. Well, kids watch your content. Kids watch both of our, literally like thousands and thousands of people under 18 watch both of our videos. We're on YouTube. That's an unavoidable component of being on YouTube, I think who makes content for adults. You either have a room temperature IQ or you're coping. She was Catholic, but never calls out the pedophilia of the Catholic church. Has June ever talked about pedophilia in the church? I can't find the box. Thank it. you very people much. People don't watch my content. Hell, I even had a joke about it in my prosthesia video. It's literally tax exempted. It is a tax exempted pedophile club. So it's a church. Also, hold on. Wow. You, no, no, Remember no, cuties? Just... Remember when cuties came out? Cuties. I remember. That was discourse. Which, much like the Balenciaga thing, had nothing to do with LGBT people. And like a dozen articles came out from liberal journalists about how like everyone criticizing it is alt-right. Cuties. Remember how she did a giant section on whataboutisms and now she's just doing a ton of whataboutisms instead of actually addressing the criticism? No, I... No, I don't remember that. I remember everyone condemning cuties except for like a couple of people I don't, was there a huge wave of left-leaning people who came out to defend it you might have seen some film critics defending it but most film critics are going to be liberals because media critique and media production and journalism and art critique in general are predominantly occupied by liberals because conservatives are incapable of art critique i don't think there was like any broad political defense of cuties from the left, or even a minor one. Sneeko and Mr. Girl? Yeah, there you go. The oh. vanguards of the left. Bosh got it. The extraordinary Netflix debut that became the target of a right-wing campaign. The controversy surrounding it seems to be propaganda fueled by...
QAnon types an anti-Semite. 366 retweets and quote tweets and comments. 81 likes. Audiences hate it because there's a moral panic right-wing campaign. Literally zero likes on this one. Very interesting how Shu remembers this as liberal journalists. Uh, did Sneeko really defend? Um, did Sneeko really defend Cuties? He said it was his favorite film. Because Sneeko, before he got banned... Xander Hall, it's great to see you. Thanks for coming by. Zan, you got a lot of fans in this chat, buddy. Thank you for being here tonight. Good to see you. Hope you're doing well. I heard there was a tragedy on your Minecraft server. I'm very sorry to hear about that. And had like more than half a million YouTube subs, which would probably make him more prominent than anyone else who liked or defended it. Is, is Sneeko going to come up? Are we going to get a video clip of a conservative? Yeah, I actually, I actually think it like Sneeko might have been by pure numbers one of the biggest, one of the largest cuties defenders, and Sneeko is definitively openly right wing, supporting cuties, or is it going to be zero like random tweets that could be from anyone? Targeting it. Wrong. Leftists like Shu on Head and Vosh are critical of the film. That's me! That's me! By the way, just so we're clear, this is the person that she has beef with. Noah Berlatsky, the person that she's showing right here. See? She blocked out his name. But you can go look it up, just if you don't believe me. This is Noah Berlatsky. This is the person that Shu has been beefing with for literal years. Noah Berlatsky, I don't like him. I don't. I think he's kind of a weird guy. I think he's an. Unco I, I think that he makes some very weird statements that make me suspect suspect certain aspects of Noah Berlatsky. However, Shu on Head has been beefing with this guy for years, and she literally did her entire Prostasia video. Uh, she said it was to, to protect children, but it was really just to, to try and make Noah Berlatsky look bad. And again, if you don't believe me, just go watch my drama mama on it, in which we react to Shu on Head's allegations, which fixated on Noah Berlatsky. Yep. Once again, I don't like Noah Berlatsky, but I can I, I, I know I know it when I see it. I know a beef when I see one. Targeting it. Wrong. Leftists like Shu on Head and Vosh are critical of the film. That's me! That's me! Ashmar says, Noah Berlatsky is literally the first person who ever blocked me on Twitter and I have no idea why. Weird. Me! Shu on Head is a notorious alt-right asshole. Also, you just tagged two aggressive horrible accounts. Please delete that tweet. You're putting people on the thread at risk. And was Okay, that's pretty funny. I appreciate that. Cutie's not basically beauty pageant shit. It had nothing to do with gay people. And once again, we were calling it out. And where were you? Calling us f***ing Nazis. It doesn't- No, no, no. Shoo. Shoo. Shut the f*** up, bitch. Stop with this. Stop with this narrativizing. What is this insistence on framing it like the left is constantly trying to keep you from- Stop. S stop doing that. Why? Why? Why do this? You know this is a disingenuous. If Sneeko really. Here's the Sneeko video on Cuties. I wanted to get canceled. It's, uh, this is the Cuties video. is my new favorite film from Sneeko Reuploads after his channel got. Hey, taken there down. you go. There Once we go. Again, this I did pre watch this, but as you can see, I forgot. Uh, <laughs> I forgot a number of small parts of this two hour long video. So now we get to enjoy it. Uh, and now you get to enjoy me uh, sharing some of the same things that I forgot that Vosh already talks about. Amazing. Scott, okay. Hey, if you want some good material for who is- Oh, I know. And the people who've just come in now, I already said I pre-watched it at the very beginning. I pre-watched days ago because this is this whole issue has been incredibly stressful for me. So obviously, I was gonna watch on my own time Vosh reacting to the video that fucking slandered me to thousands and thousands and thousands of people. Just defending cuties. You've got a tweet with zero likes, and here is a convenient re-upload from a YouTube account 
of a Nazi, he's friends with Nick Fuentes, who got banned from YouTube. Uh, and, and, and he... Hey, it's all good, Xander Hall. I know you've been dealing with it, too. I know you've been do dealing with it a fuckload. I was, in fact, we were talking about how deranged the comments have been on your video. Yeah, it was so blatant. It was very obvious what she was doing. And, well, to a certain degree, it succeeded. But, uh, we fight even when our enemies disgustingly attack us. Liked it. Stop framing this. Like the liberal, this is what you're doing, Shu. You're doing the far right moral panic. You might say, oh, you know, I don't think gay people and pedophiles are aligned. But then you say, yeah, but the liberals keep getting really angry at me whenever I call out pedophilia. It's very strange. And you're then doing the thing on all the right leaning people are just like, uh, they, they take away from that. They're just like, oh, Shu's so nice to those degenerates. Well, pff, even she sees it, right? You are doing the exact same thing. It is indistinguishable from somebody doing the like, um, oh yeah, you know, I don't think that black people are inherently inferior, but you know, like, isn't it crazy how the liberal media freaks out whenever you bring up race and IQ differences? You're doing the same thing. You're doing the thing. You might not be doing it deliberately disingenuously, but the outcome is identical. Yeah, Sneeko had like a million subs too. Wasn't just Sneeko, Matt Bender. Oh yeah, Matt Binder did defend this as well. Yeah, throw Matt Binder in there as well. Binder? No, Binder. That was right. Sneeko and Binder, allies. I just want to see them next to each other. Ho By the way, when it comes to cuties, I will say that there were very, very, very few people who were defending cuties. There were some people who uh, de who defended the poster for cuties. Now, I know this is ancient history, so a lot of people don't remember this, um, but... The conservative freakout about cuties happened before the movie actually came out. They were reacting to a very provocative uh, Netflix poster. Um, and some people were like, hey, you haven't seen the movie yet. You don't know what this movie's about. A provocative poster does not necessarily in and of itself mean that the movie is like pro pedophilia. And actually, as far as I understand it, the movie itself, while being incredibly, uh, let's say, it pushes a lot of boundaries. It has depictions uh, of, of children uh, that I would say push very close to the line of being genuinely, um, sexualizing and i think that's very fucked up and i think that is something that is worthy of criticizing however i i will say as far as i know i have not seen the movie the movie was intended to be a critique of child modeling and the 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 pageant industry i believe i think it's pageants and uh so some of the people who defended the movie who defended the movie were actually not defending the movie and were simply pushing back on people reacting to the poster in and of itself uh i think that there is a lot of very valid critique for cuties um however i as far as i know it is a movie that intends perhaps fails but intends to be critical of those industries it was a twerking dance crew. Oh, sorry, sorry, a dance crew. I don't know why I said pageant, dance crew. It was a critique that was showed at Cannes. It was supposed to be critical of the sexualization of children in the industry. So yeah, there's a lot of issues with the movie. Um, and as it turns out, some subjects you can intend to make a movie that is critical, and you can fail at succeeding at that. Femboy Low Poly says, the movie was about how American society is too sexual, but they fucking botched it horribly. Yeah. Cuties was, uh, Sophie says, Cuties was produced and directed by a Senegalese French immigrant. It was meant to be a commentary on the sexualization of young girls and the ultra-conservative Sen Sen Senegalese Muslim view of women's sexuality that can sometimes further push young girls into more exploitative industries. Interesting. Again, not a movie I was interested in watching. Not a, I have not seen the movie, uh, but uh, 
again, there is a, by the, it should be noted that there is a difference between making a movie that intends to be critical and doesn't do a good job at it and making a movie that is supportive of child porn. You understand that there's a like major difference between those things? Like even in delivery of the thing? Anyway. I don't even know why we're talking about this. My brain is turning to jelly. Let's continue. Holy shit, these accounts are from, or these tweets are from 2020? Oh my god, it was all so long. And by the way, inevitably people are going to claim that I'm defending the movie. I don't give a fucking shit about the movie. If it gets banned off of Netflix, I don't fucking care. I do not give a shit. I have not seen the movie. I don't care about it. I have no stake in the game. I'm just pointing out that there is a, that, that the truth matters. It actually does the truth actually does matter like people's vibes are one thing but the truth is a different thing like fuck netflix netflix just so we're clear 100 percent clear go didn't matt walsh defend cuties too we can probably assume that matt walsh has jerked off to cuties probably not a good idea to call her a bitch while the community has a sexism problem don't you woke scold me thana But sure, fine. The community does get really weird about her. So if he says Netflix 100% fucked up with the poster, yeah, the, posters, the poster was, as I understand it, was Netflix's decision. The original poster uh, uh, for the original version of the film was different. This is me recalling from the past, but fuck Netflix. It's that easy. No, ch no, chat, Samson, you can ban the other people doing it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's gay or straight. It doesn't matter if it's a giant corporation or a Netflix movie. They will find a way to call me alt-right for talking about this shit. The absolute urgency and ease at which these people jump on the most optically disastrous swords is both horrifying and incredible to me. The term map went from something on Tumblr that I talked about oh, seven years ago again. to now real hired academics using the term. Um, stigma against map. Okay, let me, let me, let me try to put this forward. There's a really good, um, there's a really good, um, Big Joel video on this, on, on Shu. Okay, let me, let me, how do I- Oh my god, the Big Joel, I recently rewatched the Big Joel video on Shu on Head. It is so fucking good. I forgot how good Big Joel's video about Shu on Head is. Not only is it not, like, uh, not only is it not, like, combative, uh, it, 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 it attempts to address the problem without being too judgmental, uh, but it, it's just structured incredibly well. It's such a fucking good video. Anyway, let's continue. I put this in a way that like is really clear. I love clear, Big Joel too. One people of my who favorite video essays. Misinterpret me. Don't get it. Okay. I know that lots of people in my community, uh, knowing my history of beefing with video essayists, uh, I love video essayists. I fucking love video essays. I am like a video essay super fan, which makes me sad that so many video essayists just definitively hate. I don't know. I don't know. They hate me by proxy. I don't know. Anyway, let's continue. Cuties. Cuties, I haven't seen it, okay? I've heard other people describe it. As I understand it, Cuties has some very, like, explicit depictions of, like, young girls dancing in, like, a, like a creepy way, framing-wise. Like, not just the movie says, oh, yeah, in the other room, there are some little girls dancing real weird, like, you know. Am I a debate streamer? I stream... And I do debates. I don't know if I would consider myself a debate streamer anymore, but I did just do a whole bunch of debates for charity, so I'm still kind of do that shit. But more, more like they they show it for like a long, like a long time. Made me sick when I saw the clips. See, last wish sixteen chat pedophile saw the clips. They agree. We're over it. So here's the thing, so okay? Cruel. Who made cuties? Was it a secret Epstein two? Was it Epstein two point oh? No, actually, it was a, um, it was, uh, it, it seems like it was a lady who was trying to use the, um, <clears throat> the, the explicit depiction of that content as a way of artistically framing how bad and destructive it can be. Felix Forrester says, what did Joel do? Nothing. Joel is a treasure. I absolutely love everything about Big Joel's content, and I think Big, Big Joel and Little Joel are just poggers. Like, uh, the exploitation shit. 
Yeah, French. French people are built different. And by different, I mean worse. Um, French African woman. Um, yeah, okay, whatever. The point is, apparently, that there, there was like some kind of artistic message there. So, here's the thing. I don't actually think that Cuties, at least on that level, I don't think I have any reason to believe that Cuties was made with the explicit intent of promoting pedophilia. That's often not how the world works. Like, there's a lot of stuff in media that's pretty sexist, but I don't think the people who make it are explicitly trying to promote sexism, right? Like, there's a lot of stuff in media that's kind of racist. Like, go back and watch, I don't know, um, Rush Hour 2 or whatever, you know? Is there some racist shit in there? Go and watch some Bond films, especially the earlier ones, you know? I don't think the explicit purpose of the filmmakers was to make, to promote racism, you know? I just think it was a swing and a miss. I think it was a big L. I think it was big sussy. I think it was mega, um, uh, you know, the rock boom. <laughs> I remember laughing at this part the first time through the, the fucking. I used to have the vine boom noise on my sound effect, soundboard. Vine noise, you know, raised eyebrow. And I think that sometimes that the discourse around that can be really revealing about the people who are actually bad. You know what I mean? Like Mr. Girl, you know, like uh... Phantom Fox, welcome and thank you. Thank you very much. We're happy to have you as a part of this community. Thank you for being here and Merry Impmas. Uh, people like that. So cool name. The content itself. You can hate it, you can dislike it. I think that's fine. From what I've heard, the content of Cuties is disgusting. There was an effort made, but that doesn't mean it worked, you know? That doesn't mean it played out. But I usually think stuff like this is most interesting in the reactions that it prompts from people, right? So, for instance, some people on social media are like, uh, mm, yeah, I love Cuties because I like it. That's gonna get clear. They, they say they like Cuties, because they like looking at the girls dancing or whatever. That's a big mega sussy vine boom, the rock eyebrow raise, big boom vine sussy, right? Uh, you can get them for that, you know? Do Play the clip, the SWAT team busting in, you know? What, what's the song they play? That one? We got him, boys. Boom! Um, what's the song they play when they do that? Um, what, 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 you know the you clip when, when the, the SWAT team busts in? What, what? I thought I had it all together. Yeah, that, yeah, that one in. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that one. Right. Okay, do that. Great. Um, and there are people who are going to defend cuties. Uh, on its artistic Maybe merits. I'm yours I don't by think Breakbot. That makes there you them go. Thank you. Maybe they have a point in the sense they can say, like, okay, well, I agree that's bad, but there's some other stuff. Maybe they have a different perspective. The point that I'm trying to get at here is like, it comes down to the moral panic thing, where oftentimes you're actually enabling the worst people when you jump in on the easiest moral explanation for any feeling that you have. Ooh, it's kind of like how panics. a lot of people criticize me for jumping to call everyone a Nazi. Now, when I do that, I'm right to, and the people who, criti who criticize me are wrong. But if we imagined for a moment that they weren't wrong, that they actually had a point, which they don't, you could make a d fair argument that if I called literally everyone who disagreed with me, everyone, a Nazi no matter what, and I just laid that out there with no like explanation or contextualization, I might actually be making it a lot harder to find out who is actually a Nazi, right? Because I'm kind of cheapening the term a little bit to the point where I'm not giving it any, like, meaning. I'm, I'm sort of, like, removing from it any actual descriptive power. You know what I mean? Much in the same way, I worry about the way discourse like this gets handled. Uh, for, or, or to put it another way, Matt Bender defended cuties. Do I think Matt Bender is a pedophile? Like, I don't know, Mr. Girl? No. Because I'm willing to be more charitable than that. And I don't think it... Also, Mr. Girl has a lot of other issues besides liking cuties. Um, Mr. Girl has a song called I'm a Pedophile. Mr. Girl has gone on extensively about his own pedophilic ways. Yeah. 
helps anyone to pretend that that's like the reasonable thing to jump to. Um, and Shu's insistence on not just jumping to that, but more like Shu's framing of people being nuanced as meaning they're the farthest like into the wrong that they can be is a fundamental a fundamental fundamentally oh god i've been talking for too long fundamentally reactionary tendency and do you yep, know why i know is. that because shu has spent the entire video critiquing other people for doing this dozens and dozens of messages where her central criticism is they're misframing what she says and what she believes by taking some behavior that she's engaged in, assigning meaning to it, and going way off the road with it. If she wants to call the people of Balenciaga pedos, I legit don't care if can go for it. I did the same. If she wants to imply that Demon Mama is defending pedophiles, I think that's pretty fucked up. I think that's f***ed up, and I think it's morally wrong. You've already got a video here. Thank you, and you are correct. I agree. It is fucking morally wrong to accuse me of that fucking shit, because it is the least true thing that has ever, ever been issued, uttered about me. Thank you, Bosh. do appreciate that a lot. That does literally nothing to address or rebuke the far right framing. You have one person here who's shown in their entirety, and it's Demon Mama, a trans woman, and then you accuse them of holding water for Balenciaga and like essentially promoting or defending pedophilia. All right, let's finish the video. Demon Mama doesn't deserve this shit. No, Demon Mama doesn't deserve this shit. Uh, look, I, I guess the the only thing I'll say if if Shu do, like Thank you. wants to fundamentally reject the like the concept of consequences like like fully it's just my behavior and my intention with nothing else um then she has no business talking about politics in any context and what's more if she's if she's willing to jump to like oh yeah zan's criticizing me though his name at least was censored uh as a bad faith attack he was my friend but now he's defending balenciaga defending pedos demon mom is defending pedos you know um if, if you're going to do that, then you really can't complain about people calling you a Nazi because you're engaging in like more frivolous, bad faith accusation throwing Literally than they true. ever could with their far yep. more incisive and thoughtful criticisms of your behavior than you can muster of them. Ago to now Thank you. I do appreciate that. I would never ask uh, Vosh to come to my defense. He's not obligated to ever do that. But nonetheless... I do appreciate that he was willing to call this out because I think it's, like he said, I don't think I deserve this. I think it was completely unjust. I think her behavior towards me was insane and unhinged. If she wanted to have a fucking beef with me, if she wanted to say I was a bitch and an asshole and, and whatever and angry and blah, 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 that would have been one thing. But her shit was to accuse me of something that is blatantly false and also fucking dangerous to sling at somebody. By the way, if you agree with me and with Vosh that I didn't deserve that shit, you should press the subscribe button right now. Because I can assure you, not only do I not deserve that bullshit accusation, but uh, I actually make some pretty fucking good stuff. I actually take a lot of time to create my content, put a lot of research and thought into it, and have some pretty goddamn based takes that you could probably learn from when I'm not busy uh, dealing with an overwhelming barrage of absolute libelous bullshit. So I'd love to have you be one of my imps. I'd love to have you give me your chance, or give me a chance, give me your chance, give me a chance. So, you know, smack that, uh, smack that like button, smack that subscribe button. We'd love to see you come back. Seriously. And yeah, huge thanks to Vosh on this one. Hey. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, can I have a Diet Coke? That'd be grand. Thank you so much. I love you. I just got some tortellini. All right, let's finish listening to this video while I eat some tortellini.
Gabbeth says, hi, Demon Mama. I'm glad you're going through Vosh's response. It was great. Much love. Can't, or love you. Can't sub again because I already am. Hey, no worries. You're all good. Never have to apologize for not subbing, okay? Just you being here is more than enough. Thank you so much. It is based of Vosh. Uh, Matt, Matt, Matty Tiahu, Matty Tiahu, Matty T, Matty Tiahu. Thank you so very much. Deeply, deeply appreciate that. Um, we got to finish this video because we still have another video to do after this. That's right. I'm serving you a absolute metric fuckload of content tonight. Let's continue. Real hired academics using the term. Um, stigma against maps is a problem in part because it makes maps think that they're monsters. Um, that's really problematic in terms of map well-being. Um, it's really hard to cope when you think you're a terrible person uh, because good. you have attractions that you can't change. And I'm a licensed professional counselor and sex therapist in Erie, Pennsylvania. And today I want to talk about minor attracted persons. Most folks are making incorrect assumptions about them without actually knowing much about them. And those assumptions create harm for an already marginalized population. Notice the familiar language they're using. They are co-opting progressive language. And I want the community, I want people in general, to get ahead of this. But no, apparently MAP is just a right-wing psyop and I'm just a reactionary and blah blah Wait. The MAP thing is a right-wing psyop. You even said that in one of your earlier videos. It literally is. There have literally been like 4chan posts that were highly popularized where they talked about co-opting progressive language as a way of using MAP as like a pseudo-progressive synonym. You sa you've said that. You've said in your... Hold on, let me see if I can... Uh... It's a part of this. Operation Pride Fall, 4chan's attempt to bring down Pride 2020. Alt-right homophobes have detailed psyops, uh, have detailed psyops plans that they hope will convince brands to cut ties with the LGBTQ community. Yeah, it's like well documented. The maps thing, the maps thing was a, was one of the Pride Fall psyops. Yeah, today, uh, Nathan Drake says, holy crap, Demon Mom is streaming so late. Yeah, today I, I started later because um, we were out getting stuff for the Christmas tree. We were still, we were doing a ton of work, so I'm streaming a bit later today to make up for all that. Yeah, Renophilia says, to just get ahead of something I know that Blood on Hand fans will say, when Demon Mama was joking about Shu, it was very clear jest, blatantly absurd, and Shu deceptively clipped me to exclude the context of it being farcical. Yeah, I literally said, wouldn't it be a shame if I was to do something like this and then I just did the thing? The entire reason was to call out, was to literally illustrate what she was doing to everyone else. Yeah, they don't give a shit. Let's continue videos hasn't she wait hasn't she literally said that hasn't she said this that 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 it that it's a 4chan psyop i mean there might there might be some people who aren't from 4chan who bite in on the language and i agree wait. that they have the potential at 5 d 2 d Derek says, Demon Mama, tell people to subscribe again. I currently have 1K viewers, and we are less than 300 away from 20K. Look, I made a gamble with my team that I would be able to get us to 20K before January 1st. If you were to help me with that, I will reward you with some of the most fun content that you have ever experienced in your entire life. So if you want to have a absolutely banger 2023, smack that motherfucking subscribe button because... I would love to win the bet. I know there's a possibility I will lose. 20K is a, uh, that was a bold goal, seeing as how just two months ago, uh, less than two months ago, we were at like 17.5. We've gained so many followers. It's, it's so many subs, it's unbelievable. So if you wanna help me uh, and also get a nice reward in the form of incredibly entertaining and educational content, smack that motherfucking button. I know I've been, you know, saying it a bit, but this has been a long stream, so, you know, got to do it. ...to do a lot of harm, but I, I don't know if what the message here even contradicts what Shu has said. Blah, blah, blah. I feel like the crazy scientist in the beginning of a disaster movie that nobody believes, and then it's like too late. And what's upsetting to me... Shu. 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 
you are not helping children with this. Focus on systemic critique as a way of supplementing your conspiracy callouts, which I don't think are inherently bad. Also, please do not pretend that you're getting ahead of the map thing as a way of protecting the queer community, of getting ahead of things, when you are participating in and now playing cover for with this video uh, a far right moral panic. This is you are this is not about protecting kids and it's not about protecting queer people. It's about being the cool conspiracy anti like psyop girl. There's nothing wrong with being that chick, but that is what you know like it's that that is the primary motivation for your behavior. That's something that should be noted here is that uh shoe on head deliberately deliberately during pride retweeted psyop shit shoe on head deliberately retweeted propaganda that was originally propagated by stormfront about pride and i know that she knows this because she has been corrected on it in previous pride events the specific propaganda that she pushed is is years old and yet she still pushes it and i i bet she'll do it next year too not wrong i'm not criticizing that but like there's that's you you can't pretend this is about protecting queer people as a socialist, what's upsetting to me is the progressive movement, or whatever this is, I don't even know what this is, in the near future is going to wind up at the least ignoring and at the most defending some real disgusting shit in the near future in fear of giving the right ammo. See, th this is the moral panic. This like, is, in, yep. in name, this is it. Yep. This is the content is of the moral panic. This is, this is like the... High Progressive says, I do think the conspiracy posting is inherently bad too. Yeah, the conspiracy posting, the, the part of the thing that's wrong with conspiracy posting is that it, it encourages people to be uh, into a state of paranoia and it is inherently anti-intellectual. It encourages people to just follow the threads, just do go a little deeper, dig a little deeper. What truths will you uncover? I mean, like, this same shit has it's not like conspiracy posting is new do you guys remember all the fucking garbage that was spawned out of the 9 11 truthers shit how much heinous crap was spawned from 9 11 truthers it conspiracy conspiracy brain encourages people to turn off their actual rational faculties and engage in highly emotional motivated reasoning Yep. And and it's not good. It's not fucking good. Self-loathing egomaniac says 90% of the conspiracy dorks that I knew became either tankies or Nazis. It's weird how that goes. There's a there's a thing that I've shown on this stream many times. Um it's called the um the conspiracy pyramid. And uh, it's based off of research that was done by a couple of writers that real that that uh, identified that the more the, the the deeper you get into the conspiracy rabbit holes, the more likely you are to believe other uh, uh, extreme conspiracies. So people who go like super super hardcore into QAnon also tend to be uh, tend to buy into blood libel. They also tend to buy into uh, flat earth. They also tend to buy. It just you you get so deep in that you can't get back out, and it it puts you in a mental state where you stop asking rational questions, where you stop caring about the truth at all, and instead you are only searching for things that verify. Uh, your preconceived notions of what the world is. Yep, exactly. High progressive says makes you turn your critical thinking and nuance detectors completely off. Yep. Gabba says actually good news. Sub to my soon to be from my soon to be YouTube channel. Thought I already was. Turns out I wasn't. Hell yeah, thank you. If oh oh yeah, I forgot I have a short on this. You know what? Let's watch the short on it. Hey, I forgot I have a short on this. Thank you. It's called the conspiracy chart. You have things that actually happen. CoIntel Pro, Mockingbird. 
big tobacco lied about cancer. Then you have, we have questions about JFK assassination, Area 51, UFOs, Princess Diana, you have questions. Then you start leaving reality, where here you have crop circles, Greta Thunberg being a time tra traveler, Bigfoot, alien abductions, aliens building Stonehenge, dangerous to yourself and others is 5G, global warming, soy boys, uh, chemtrails. You get into hollow earth, flat earth, Elders of Zion, Deep State, QAnon is a big one. Once you're in here, this is a level of detach detachment from reality that people usually will float in between and all of these, even when they're c contradictory. And this is the anti-Semitic point of no return. Hell yeah. Thanks, past me, and thank you, Alora, for both editing that and for reminding me that that was one of the shorts that we had on our channel. What a, what a, what a poggers video I did, past me. Thank you. And thank you again, Alora. Deeply appreciate that. This is like the, you know, as a leftist, I just think, uh, you know, I just think we have a real problem with not, not acknowledging the fact that... What, one more thing before we continue the video. High Progressive says, the thing is, you can talk about conspiracy theories without actually being conspiratorial. It can be super interesting to analyze, but that's not what people are usually talking about. Yeah, in fact, a great example of this. I've brought this example up before. There is an episode... Um, there was an episode of Chapo Trap House with a really, really cool uh, trans uh, uh, tr trans public figure, I don't know, semi-public figure uh, by the name of Haley Glyphs. And they actually, it, it talks about conspiracy theories and how uh, like UFO conspiracy theories are actually like super, super interesting, but, the, but it's a fantastic episode. I'm trying to remember, let me see, hold on. Let me see if I can look it up. So I can give you guys something to go check out because it is actually good and it does responsibly talk about conspiracy theories. Yes, it's this video right here. It's called The Grape Taking the Gray Pill, uh, featuring Haley Glyphs. Here you go. I'm gonna post it in chat. If anybody, if this sounds like your your uh, cup of tea, it's a really good episode. It's right there. It's called Taking the Gray Pill, and uh, it's about like grays as in aliens. A uh, fantastic episode goes into this on depth and talks about specific conspiracy theories while challenging the conspiratorial aspects. So yeah, there it is if you want it. Uh, boop, boop. There we go. Let's continue. That actually all these drag shows are pedophilia. You know, it's you're you're you are doing it, but you're doing it from like the Dave Rubin thing, where it's like, ah, yes, as an envoy of the of the liberal left, I'm here to say we do have some real problems. In a way, it's almost more damaging than if you were explicitly and fully ideologically far right. Because if you were, they would be seen as criticisms from the outside. But now they can point at you and say, ah, look, see, even a lefty like Shu sees that they're enabling pedophilia. And your evidence for that accusation is people getting mad at you for enabling the moral panic to begin with and accusing them of defending Balenciaga because they had a f***ing teddy bear in a harness suit in a controversy that is not going to lead to the protection of a single child. There are right-wing people who are constantly calling everything and anything to do with pedophilia, like gay shit, LGBT shit. Yes, I get it. I have a bi flag in the background of some of my videos and I get comments like, nice groomer Good flag. Night, Nathan. Like, I get it. But how long should we not say anything in fear of giving them ammo? Because this was probably the most clear cut example of something weird and gross, completely unrelated to gay people. And these people still did damage control for it. If anything, they did damage control for the far right people who immediately made it about gay people. Yep. You did. You Thank didn't you, Vosh. Put the Thank Balenciaga you. tweet out, and then immediately a bunch of lefties responded to your tweet. They responded to the far right jumping on it. The one that you are very, very, very deliberately not acknowledging or describing the extent of whatever, give the right ammo. It's the way you acted so quickly to defend this shit. And yes, by implying I can't talk about it or I'm uh, committing scholastic terrorism or whatever the f the new buzzword is, that is defending this. This shit that anyone with eyes can see is creepy. I have been talking about this stuff all of my career and I have a great track record. I was talking about maps years ago and now there's hired academics using the term. I warned about Amos Yee who said I was too mean to pet 
files, and he was arrested for having CP. I exposed Prostasia, then they shut down their forum so young maps could no longer enter it. I helped get the word out about this Balenciaga thing, and even the brand itself had to admit it was creepy and is now doing an investigation into it. I don't care if you yourself don't want to talk about this stuff. I don't care. You do you, I will do me. But all I ask is that you stay out of my way when I am doing me. And just know that I am not sorry, I did nothing wrong, and I will do it again. Goodbye. Hello, everyone. This is a disgusting video. Nah, it's 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 genuinely disgusting. I I can I can only regard it with malice. This entire video is framed as a from the left enabling of the moral panic that she was accused of enabling to begin with. Okay, let me sum this all up. At the end of the day, if you are a public figure, you are responsible for the outcomes of your behavior. Everyone acknowledges this. Anyone who disagrees is psychotic. I'm going to stop like playing nice with this. Okay, Shu. If you believe that you should only be held accountable for the intentions of your behavior, you're a child. And frankly, you shouldn't even be online. Um, in real life, with real people, when we talk, Based. act, behave in any way, we are accountable not just for our intentions, but for what we do. If we intend something, but do something else, this might not always mean we're in the wrong, but we do need to acknowledge it. This video fails to even acknowledge the central premise. The fundamental thing that people are criticizing you for, the fact that this country is currently wrestling with the potential of an undemocratic future that I know you are aware of the potential of because I am friends with you and I have spoken to you, you are aware of the fact that we are currently experiencing the most vitriolic wave of anti-queer legislation and sentimentality yet seen in our lifetimes, and for some reason, in spite of all of this, you cannot even muster an acknowledgement of what people are actually mad at you for. The pretense that they are angry with you for going after Balenciaga is dishonesty on your part. It is a lie, and you know it is a it lie, is. and you are yep. lying deliberately, even if you pretend not to. You know why they're mad. It is not because of what you said, it is because of what it led to, and your subsequent behavior. One of the reasons I've been so hesitant to criticize you for this is because I had difficulty really getting angry with you for the initial tweets, you do a lot of objectionable shit. I don't know why Shu is so insistent on palling around with far-right people. Uh, I mean, I don't like to criticize people for their personal choices, but at the very least, she definitely has a habit of fraternizing with them. Taking photos with Blake Masters. There are a lot of people in the far-right who she seems to find, you know, funny little playthings, good people to have around, you know, wacky, interesting. Well, they feel the same way about you, Shu. And in the same way... That you used to be friends with Lauren Southern and Blair White until suddenly you very much were not because it was no longer politically expedient for them to associate with you. The far right now considers you useful. Because you are. Because not only will you post something that enables their moral panic. Again, we all make mistakes. Spitting. But you will then go to reaffirm their Spitting. moral panic in what is, let's be clear, a video that exists to do nothing other than defend your ego and further stigmatize the left. To frame them as defenders of Balenciaga, as unwilling to call out pedophilia. It's so curious how all of your condemnations seem to just weirdly avoid making the right angry, especially when their eyes are on you. I have no idea what kept you from acknowledging the far-right uh, reaction to the tweets of pretending that people like Zan were themselves making up the association with queer people, as though there wasn't, you know, people with tens of thousands of likes in your replies directly making that connotation. Uh, I don't know why you would do that outside of dishonesty. I don't know what else would motivate that. I have no idea why you would take a look at all of this and genuinely believe, fully believe that with your power, your, your priority here was going after the people who are on, on the target lists of the people who were affirmatively responding to your tweets. I don't know yeah. why you didn't reply to those tweets with something else saying like, why are the far right so agitated about this? These are far, these are like billionaires. You should like, hey, tax them more, Lamau. I have no idea why you spent this entire video constructing a narrative in which you are the victim of some kind of protracted left effort to silence pedophiles as though the left has not been calling people like Matt Walsh a pedophile more loudly than they have ever said anything about anything. Like, you really think the left has an issue with going after pedophiles? Do you seriously, genuinely believe that's a thing that's happening? I don't know why you would frame the whole cuties thing as though like a bunch of liberals came out to defend it, but somehow ignore like a hundreds of thousands of sub YouTuber Sneeko. I actually do. I actually do. I'm t I can't believe I've been ignoring it. It's because you're f***ing lazy.
It's because you get your info from the people you spend time with, and you spend time with the people who don't criticize you. And the far Bravo. right is smart enough to bite, smart enough to bite their tongue and wait, and the left will criticize you day to day for your mistakes. So when you hear about anything, you hear the right perspective on it. You know, you might go out and do subsequent research afterwards, but that initial bias is always laid. It always informs everything forthcoming. So when you think of cuties, you think, oh, that thing a bunch of liberal media people defended. Is that an actual, like, real bias association there? Well, maybe not, but it's what you heard, right? I think a lot of left-leaning people who watch Shu don't really understand. They don't, they don't really know how these, these processes function. But I want to make it clear. There is nothing impressive, progressive, bold, or anti-establishment about leaning on conspiracism, rolling the dice in the wind, and like not caring where they end up. Nothing about any of the videos that she's done on pedophilia are radical or revolutionary. Show them to any politician, any pundit, and you'll have people nodding along. Yeah, pedophilia is bad. Yeah, great, very bold, phenomenal. A statement so uncontroversial and unambiguously agreeable that you could get every prison inmate except the ones in a separate ward to agree with it, phenomenal. If you want to do something subversive, if you want to challenge power, maybe question yourself, like question, why are so many politicians who ostensibly disagree with every policy you have so chummy with you? You know, why are pundits who for some reason, uh, you know, despite disagreeing with you on every matter you seem to think defines your character and content, they seem to really like associating with you. People who you know are Machiavellian and self-interested when it comes to the people they associate with from prior experience. If you really want to lean in this direction, maybe you should look to the actual ways in which these systems of abuse are perpetrated. Because, you know, there was a lot of sexual abuse in the death camps. And I gotta say, the way things are going right now, uh, Donald Trump calling to suspend the Constitution, the forthcoming legal conservative constitutional theory being one of ignoring the Constitution and promoting dictatorship, uh, you know, Marjorie Taylor Greene, a preeminently popular politician, in spite of being universally negative in every imaginable way, saying that if she had done January 6th, she would have done it with guns and she would have won. You know, if you really want to prevent children from being abused, Yikes. maybe you should care a little bit more about whether or not the shit you say uh, is going to lead uh, to the emboldening of people who would have built those camps or will in the future if given the chance. This is a real problem, and I know she knows it exists. I have no idea. I just, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I've got it. Second revelation. They're my shoe. Two shoes. How fitting. I've had a hard time criticizing shoe for a while in spite of a lot of objectionable behavior because I get along with her. So how can I criticize her for doing that with the entire far right? If she blocks me over this, then that's her prerogative. <laughs> I'm still happy to be friendly with her in I private. I forgot about that but line. man, oh. Jesus Christ. At this point, public association is just opening my own socials up to uh, DMs from the kind of people who would put me to death. Freedom. So, uh, Reddit was right. I guess you really don't mess with the Reddit nation? No. My subreddit was entirely wrong and insufferable. I hate all of them. I despise okay. them. Okay, they I gotta wrong. pause for a second here. Vosh's subreddit? I know some of you are probably on there, but as, like, a whole, Vosh's subreddit is fucking insufferable. Also, they hate my guts. Which is really weird, because I feel like the like I I feel like despite my multiple conflicts with Vosh, Vosh's community chat quite likes me. Every time I show up in chat, they're pretty welcoming, and I and people ask me questions and hang out with me and are pretty chill. That subreddit fucking hates me. Vosh's subreddit is full of DGGers. Okay, that explains it. Okay, that explains it. Then never mind. I have my answer. That explains it. Uh, I am always right. I was right here. And the reason why I'm right now and they're wrong is because I'm built different. Thank you, Pence of Scarlet. Built the same. I'm quite never, proud ever, of my never, hair. Ever, 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 never, never gonna change. It's always gonna be like this. Follow-up uh, questions, chat, go. This video was malice. I, I, I don't know frothing fucking, from the lip. Fucking true! This video was malice. And it was malice that was directed mostly at myself and then a couple of other people like Zan. She takes to her camera 
and puts the shoe on her head. Forget the far-right moral panic. You know, there are powerless queer people upset with my complicity in their behavior. It'll never be the end. They'll complain until you burn the bridge. Bending the knee to those people will never end respectfully. Oh, that's fine. People who have a problem with who I'm... Levi Matthew says, what's a DDGer? Long story. There is a large community uh, uh, called DGG uh, that does not like me. Uh, they really, really, really do not like me. As in, uh, they have hounded, they have like hounded me and heckled me and spread absolute abject lies. I have had like three mana, three, I think? Three, yeah, three manifestos, manifestos, like, you know, Elliot Rogers style manifestos written about me um, from that community. They are the most toxic, one of the most toxic communities on the entire internet, and they very much don't like me. There you go. Friends with can all die. I genuinely don't care about you people. You're psychotic, parasocial. Uh, I don't know why you're vying for my dick, because you'll never get it. Uh, you will never taste my load. I don't know what is wrong with you people. I uphold my responsibility as a public figure uh, time and time again. I am more committed, more consistent, more principled than anyone else in the That's correct, space. Kitty. There are so many bread tubers and left tubers who hold their shit in and keep quiet about mutual controversies because they know that they operate best, make the most money as a shared unit. I am the best. I have burnt every bridge, and I will choose to keep the ones... Uh, what's the opposite of burnt? Not intact? I will choose to keep those intact that I want. If anyone has a problem with that, uh, that's on them. There is no bridge. You all realize that, right? The bridge doesn't exist. What you imagine the bridge to be, the bridge is just public association. You, you yeah. construct the bridge from your mind. You have no idea who I'm friends with from behind the scenes. I might be... Unbent. Unburnt. Unbroken. The adamantium bridge. Friends with destiny for you all. For all you know, I'm not, but I could be, and you wouldn't know it. My best friend, Mr. Girl. You know, you have no, you have no idea. Donald Trump, get the bridges. You have no idea. Covert bridges. Yes, too. Yeah, only vermin would know. I They'll actually that quite love grave. Dorn. Excuse me. Vash, I usually like Shu, but she's talking like she's about to join the Gays Against Groomers group. It, her rhetoric is identical to their rhetoric. The Gays Against Groomers leader, that lady, is a Nazi. Like an actual yep. Nazi. Straight up. stuff that got unearthed about her. But all of it's the same. Yeah, they, As a gay, did you know, I'm just so frustrated by how the queer community refuses. They're so, uh, you know, groupthink. They refuse to call out the threat of grooming, you know? I think somebody needs to... Yeah, it's... Yeah. But I still think the anti-shoe moderates were caricatured despite our measured approach. The anti-shoe moderates were caricatured despite our measured approach, and the mods still banned my post. They should have banned you. You're, you'll be fine. Oof. Pack it in, folks. Pack it in. You'll all be fine. Can you imagine? Yeah. Listen, feel, listen do here's, get, here's how you got- people do, people do get very, very dramatic in chat. You guys have to remember, chatters, obviously, we streamers, well, I can't speak for every streamer, but I love my chat. I love my community so fucking much. Um, uh, however, you guys have to remember that for the most part, most of you are not the ones on the line here. Uh, that's something that I think Vosh's community could benefit from remembering, that it's his face, his life, literally every moment of his day that gets scrutinized. And chatters don't have to deal with any of that for the most part, with a few exceptions. Uh, just try to remember that sometimes. That at the end of the day, like you getting muted in a chat or whatever is basically nothing in the face of the fact that if if I misspeak or if Vosh misspeaks, we get torn to absolute shit for weeks. Even if we, and in fact, sometimes we get torn to shit for weeks literally over people lying about us, people literally making shit up. How to feel, okay? In no medium besides live streaming could your whinging ever have- and, Oh, and that's not me trying to be oh poor streamers. Obviously, there are a lot of benefits to being a public figure, especially in the income department. But you also have to realize that the cost is absolutely crazy, especially for people, uh, People like myself, and yes, even Vosh, who are constantly under the scrutiny of the least charitable and some of the most unhinged people on the planet. It's a, 
yeah, it's nice to make a living and, and you know, in Vosh's case, a very, very comfortable living. Uh, I'm not quite to Vosh's size yet, maybe someday. Um, uh, but 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 yeah, it's a the costs are pretty major for a lot of for a lot of us. Yeah, that's all. And yeah, you all are a very loving community. I'm just saying generally. Any outcome on the effect of a public figure who has hundreds of thousands of people watch them uh, 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 every week? You know, you go to anything else, radio, television. I'm a fucking wall, baby. Here in live streams, all you have to do is create an account and yell at me for a bit. Incredible. What power the audience has. Vosh, I hope this isn't another step towards leftist creators refusing to cooperate against the greater enemy. Oh, if only we were. If Shu does anything noteworthy or praiseworthy, I will praise it. And if she doesn't, I won't. That's always how I've operated. You, uh, to, to, as, a, as a testament to my, let's just say, Buddha-like moral discipline and consistency, did I not compliment Destiny doing the Georgia canvassing? I did, of course, point out that he only did it because, uh, you know, the phantom of a leftist that exists in his mind whispered into it that, uh, you know, he, he would be triggered if he did go canvas in Georgia, which is true and really did happen. Um, but legitimate praise to the actual act, you know. Even if he's just sort of being blown by the, uh, by, by the wind of spite, you know, if it leads him in a good direction, I think that's admirable and should be celebrated. And I dislike Destiny directly, probably more than literally anyone else online. Mostly because he's made such an effort to be a part of my life. It's a proximity thing. Yeah, what he's talking about, by the way, fucking same. Fucking same, man. Fucking same hat. Holy fucking shit. Yeah, then he said I should die. Yes. I praise Contra. Remember, yeah, yeah, same. Once again, same hat. Her videos, even though she was uh, kind of a bitch to me. Uh, I've praised Bad Empanada's old videos. He's insane. <laughs> Um, what about Hassan? I think Hassan and I are fine against each other. Do you think Destiny only did the canvassing thing out of spite? As is often the case when I make statements like invisible leftist ghost inside of his mind. Uh, no, he probably had other reasons for doing it. I do think spite's a strong general motivator, you know? Can't, can't really make a full, full assessment on any bit by bit. I'm sure he does some things that aren't spite-based. He brushes his teeth, I assume. <laughs> he's he's got like a little like a little cutout of a blue-haired lady with like a text box, and it's like I'd hate it if Destiny brushes his teeth. Destiny never brushes his teeth. <laughs> and he look. I didn't looks, see this part. He's like, okay, yeah. wait. I think I think I think I watched the VOD version of this because I do not remember this part. <laughs> I was, it was a stop real tell me that I should be dead again. We can't make him too mad. Remember, we're responsible for the consequence of our behavior, and I don't want to be responsible for his blood pressure spiking. He also had like a two-minute rant on how you only did the PV22 thing solely for viewers and to overtake him in viewers. It's true. The whole time I had those meetings with the PV22 people, I had my little cutout of destiny. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. It's really silly. He got me. Okay, stop, 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 stop. Come on. I've just we've just given him a month of content. There we go. Left. <laughs> Literally true though. Oh, I wish I wish it wasn't so true. But like the the it it's it's unironically true. If you if you oh my god, I I, I can't I can't mention it. I can't mention it. If I do, like I said, I've already done the damage has already been done by watching this segment at all. We just have to let go. All right. Wash, seriously, uh, I know you didn't have to do it for me and I didn't, you know, I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't ask you to do that, but I appreciate you coming. Uh, well, there's a clip. I appreciate you coming out. There's a clip. Uh, I appreciate you uh, being willing to call Shu on this bullshit. Because it was bullshit, it was malicious, it was disgustingly manipulative, and uh, it hurt. It hurt a lot, and it is hurting a lot. Uh, I have I have sort of resigned myself uh, to the fact that um, the fact that like people literally see me as a truly evil person. Uh, I have had two absolutely enormous communities online that have done uh, irreparable damage to my reputation. 
That is a very difficult thing for me to deal with, I will admit. Uh, I'm sure that both of these communities will take great pleasure in knowing that they have made my life harder. Uh, however, they have not succeeded in, uh, in ending my ascent. Uh, in fact, they have only hardened my resolve. Despite the fact that it is miserable and I would much rather not be dealing with this, uh, they have only succeeded in hardening my resolve to show the world how powerful demon type streamers, me being the first demon type streamers, uh, the first of the demon type streamers truly, truly are. Uh, you will not, you can't stop me. You won't stop me. Uh, I am a legend. Uh, and no matter how badly you fuck up my reputation, my actions, my community, uh, my content speaks for itself. I'm proud of my stuff. And, uh, and, uh, it just, what I'm trying to say is it does feel very nice to know that a couple of people, a couple of people who are larger than me were willing to step up and take Shu to task on this shit because it has, it has, uh, bothered me a lot, and it is motherfucking unjust. So. Yeah. Yeah.